This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, and fuck. Hello and welcome. I am not Ian Rappaport. My name is AJ Hawk. I'm sitting in here today for the Pat McAfee on the Pat McAfee Show. Boy, he has his nice little baby at home with his wife, Sam. Mr. Ohio! Okay, there we go, boys. We hit it. Here we go. Wednesday, May 10th. I am AJ Hawk for anyone tuning in right now that uh, is looking for Pat McAfee. He's still at home with his beautiful baby, Mackenzie, which is a public thing now, right? Yeah, you can say that, Pat? Public. Yeah. That's a public thing. Mr. Pac-Man Jones, my old teammate, one of my favorite teammates hey, ever Pat, right here. Pat. Sitting next to you. Appreciate you, Pat. We see Tone Diggs. Yeah. Did yeah. Ian remember your name, name yesterday man. or not? He what do you think? No idea who I am. I don't, but then he, you don't have a name tag though. He looked, he pointed in your direction and you said, you don't, you don't, sure you don't know Zito, our name. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Zito told him the first time and Zito's laughing right now, so I know. Oh, and his ears eat. I did that. <laughs> and then anytime that Tone he Diggs, Tone Diggs. sent it to me for a question, and maybe after that it was him, but it took him a few seconds. That's fine. I mean, he's got a lot of names in his head. He's big time. That's right. He is big time. He I appreciate Ian time. coming in here. It was great. He, yeah. he was awesome. Ian doesn't take himself too serious, which I think is awesome. Yes. Right? Yeah. I like, agree. Pac, have you had any interaction with Ian or much over the years until these last few days? Well, yeah, I have. Not like yesterday. Yesterday I had a chance to be around him for three hours. Um, he, was, he was a very interesting um, person, and we had a good show, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, not, it's probably not – if you think about it from an outsider, like it's probably not super easy to be somebody no. that lives in that like corporate world in the NFL world mm-hmm. to come in here and sit here with right. with you guys. He with gets the it. table staring directly at him in two days straight and handles it very well. Yeah, yeah he gets it. I, I thought he handled the world in the NFL world mm-hmm. to come in here and sit here with right. with you guys. He with gets the it. table staring directly at him in two days straight and handles it very well. Yeah, yeah he gets it. I, I thought he handled it great. And you know, maybe one time when Grand Hill was introduced, that <laughs> it, he might have you know not. Picked up the ball perfectly, but I think what, he, what did he do? What he did he do? Was was a, Grand Hill introduction. Well, well, we can run it back. Yeah, he yeah. didn't. He didn't. I'll watch re- it his, during his interview uh, when he brought him on. There was really no like you know pause for like applause, greet the guest kind of. So it was a very awkward. We were kind of yeah. just sitting here like. Oh, hey. Did they have that? Was on me. Oh. That was definitely on me. Evie, I don't want to well. put you on the spot. Were they trying to? Were you guys trying to rewatch that or something, Con? Oh yeah, I clipped it. <laughs> I, I watched it a couple <laughs> times yesterday. But uh, and, uh, again, Rap Sheet crushed it. He he did a fantastic yeah. job. Uh, I know you. Actually, you're pretty pissed because he wouldn't throw to you during Pelissero. So <laughs> yeah. I, I know you're probably a little upset about it. I felt for him for a second because I'm sitting there. So Pelissero was on for, what, 40 minutes maybe? Yeah, ish. Yeah. Yep, I don't least. know if I spoke or not during that. You did. And that's not Ian's fault. And I'm not going to butt in, but, like, he has all of you to think about, okay, who can? Who do I go to next? Boom, boom, boom. And then he sees me probably last on the screen. I didn't expect him to throw to me, but I also mm-hmm. thought it's going to be kind of weird for him if he's trying to figure out how – to get me, he's going to text me, what does he do? Because me and Pat obviously kind of look at each other and shake yeah. our heads and point and all that. And, and unless you shake someone off because you don't want to talk to them. Uh, yeah, bingo. Depending on what sport that I've only shaken yeah. a few off when, and that was due to time constraints. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we had to get out of okay. here. We had to get out of here. At the front of my brain, but I, you know, we got another show to worry That's about. Right. Yeah, we do. We do. And we know what we get to worry about. We get to worry about, we're what, about 24 hours away from the official yeah, uh, right. schedule release for the NFL. Ooh, the greatest yeah. day of the year, right, fellas? Come on, uh-huh. now, the greatest day of the year. The Super Bowl. But now, tries. we've already had multiple games leak, a lot of international games, right? Yeah. The Jags are playing two weeks in a row Bingo. in London. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're ahead of us. They leaked them because they're ahead of us because it's the time zone difference. That's why they leaked the international game. Are, you, you, are yeah. you serious? Yeah, that's the point. I think the whole schedule is actually already out in oh, Europe. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait till it travels over here in, what, 10, 12 hours? Yeah, just get like, it, right? it's like New Year's for Australia. We can't no. look it up right now? No. no, 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 no. Yeah. Mama Kelsey probably already got Unless it. Unless you have a VPN that can VPN gotta, into European internet. you got to follow Mama Kelsey on yeah. uh, Facebook. Get your yes. Facebook account going. I don't have a Facebook account. You don't? Yeah, I don't either. Funny. Why not? Hey, come on, guys. You Facebook guys is my era. I'm 39 years old. Pack, aren't you a Facebook era kid? Facebook was, I got a Facebook. I guess yeah. I do have a Facebook. I don't know if I can get into it is the question. I don't, I don't know the password. I use it, yeah. How do you find that? Who do I talk to? Zuckerberg. Zuck. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah. To I'm not you, taking on Zuck. That dude just won a silver and gold medal in well, one jiu-jitsu match. Well, that's what you do. You let Zuck submit you via arm bar, and then he will whispers, find your password He whispers yeah. the password in your ear while he's submitting you. Which one of these games that have leaked do you think is Zuck's favorite one, where he looks at and he circles, and he's like, oh, is it Germany? Oh, I don't know. Chiefs, Dolphins. Jets. Uh, who do we have on Christmas Day? Christmas Eagles, game. Giants. Christmas right. Day, Eagles. we have Giants at the Eagles. I like that game. Obviously, Black Friday, uh-huh. Dolphins yeah. at Jets, 3 p.m. So that's Amazon's first Black Friday game? Correct. That's right. First ever. 
I mean, that's going to be absolute fireworks. Hopefully, everybody's mm-hmm. healthy. And Do you think they're going to have well. like um, QR codes pop up on the screen to buy like life straws and stuff like that during yes. the game? They should I, life straws for because of the Jets quarterback is like a survivalist last like. Is he a survivalist? No, not a survivalist. I guess somebody herbal medicine. He um, maybe I don't know how he feels about the life straw because he's not a prepper. But I guess I just maybe I lumped him into. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have lumped those. Does all he have a? Yeah, you should. That's a spell uh, right there. Does he have a <laughs> panic room or a kill shelter or what's a kill shelter? <laughs> It's like a butcher. <laughs> it's like a butcher shop. Is, almost. Yeah. They, Can you quip his hot boy? <laughs> he didn't know what he's doing. There. I don't know to be or a like a fallout shelter is what I really meant. And it's kill it shelter. Is is where Bill kills all his people, right? Well, no, guys. no. I'm joking, Bill. We don't do that. We're past but that. Does, does he learn, potentially we have? Grow, we progress. Does he have Bill a fallout shelter? On. I don't know if he has a fallout shelter. I think he has plenty of properties he could find his way to if he needed to. Because I assume if you have an elevator that goes down to the beach, that elevator then can also sink back into the mountain into your fallout shelter. Well, I believe actually there is another one where like the beach separates and it just yeah. keeps going into the earth underneath the ocean. for it, And he's got a nice little bungalow down there that, you know, if things go south, Probably. that's where you go. I got the Pat, whole, We need to check this out. We need to visit this house. Down there too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like what? I said it's probably all black. That's probably when he, he get away from everybody. That's why he did the oh, darkness retreat to prepare himself. Yeah, it's probably where what's your favorite game on there, Ace? Woody was that. I mean, I'd have to say, sorry, Zeke's giving me some uh, direction in my ear. I was a move. I got to move a little bit. I'm oh, yeah, out you of the way. I'm, I guess I moved my stuff. I haven't been here in a while. When was the last time I hosted in person? Cool. Game day season. Yeah, probably. yeah, was it right? probably During yeah. football season. Yeah, yeah. it feels During good to be football. back. I was driving here today. Almost fell asleep. No, I wasn't. I didn't almost fall asleep, but I have a hard time concentrating on driving when I'm driving. Sure. Now, I feel like as I get older. Well, what are you play doing games. instead? How far you had to drive? To 240 yeah. it takes me about. 240? Yeah. At least, probably. What about you? Uh, so do you have to come through Cincinnati or not? Uh, no, I don't have to. Oh, no. It takes me about, on a good day, it takes me about an hour 30. See, that's a lot. Yeah, if that's Joe's that's driving, that's like 60 minutes. Yep. Joe. Most. Oh, was Joe the one that did I miss Joe? Which one? You did miss if Joe. Joe fucking driving, it probably would take me two hours. Well, I don't know. Joe about is not that. the fastest driver. Mm, big he, Joe, Big Joe came though. to the office a couple of times, was driving pack, and then he uh drove back to Nick's wedding in Pittsburgh and showed up to the wedding in a sweet Oh, had his sweet tux on, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> kind of sweat tux. No? Kind of yeah, sweat tux. Uh Nike sweatpants and uh just a run well, milled Nike sweatshirt. Was the mm-hmm. dress code on the invitation? Yeah, I believe it, it did uh, say yeah, black, black tie. It was black tie. Uh, uh-huh. I mean that's up to up but that's to debate, tech Joe. It's all su- subjective on what I feel is black tie, right? Yeah, and Which, Tech Joe's a billionaire, so it's just he has one outfit and it is sweats. And you can't do fucking anything about it. That's so true. It doesn't matter who's I getting married. It. I respect it, don't you? Yeah. No, absolutely. And Tech Joe's an absolute weapon. But back to the game. Yeah, what's your uh, favorite game? I mean, that's on it. No, you don't have to get it back on track. So I, I, I want to know. What's I'm not sure game? about my favorite game. I am very worried about the Bengals Chiefs New Year's Eve because isn't that college football playoff territory? Yeah. Are we not thinking about that? Are they moving the college football if, playoff? What day of the week is that? If Sunday is Sunday, Sunday, the, is Sunday the 31st? I have if no that's idea. Bengals Chiefs. Yes. Then I assume they will do the 30th that Saturday yeah, for right? uh, the college football playoff. It actually might not be because I'm pretty sure Christmas is on a Monday this year. It says Sunday, December 31st. Okay, so yeah. I'm right. So, so, I mean, so that's not the only game on then. Then yeah. the college football playoff has to move to Saturday. You'd assume. Or just, I mean, that would be their day. They wouldn't play on Sunday anyway. Sunday is football. Well, they could also do like 1 and, and 8 p.m. or, you know, 1 and 7.30, and that would be the game in the middle so that you'd no. still be able to watch all three games. Will all games be on Sunday still, or will they move? They will have to. I, was, I would think the they NFL. will move the football games. I wouldn't want to compete. I don't know. The college would move the football games, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of competing with – a primetime game with two of the highest profile NFL players. Okay, so players. this year, actually, 2024, um, the college football playoff semifinals are going to take place Monday, January 1st. Okay, we here go. we go. There we go. Don't so two games, uh, two games on Monday, like yeah. the game we did. Yeah. New Year's Day, back where it should be. Oh, okay. Yeah, that nice. makes more sense. So they'll play that Monday, and then when will the finals be? The following Monday. Following Monday. Yeah. Yep. Yep. They always kick off like 945 Eastern. Yeah. Yep. It's mm-hmm. awesome. It's always so. It rains cool. indoors if it's in L.A. Yep. So sweet. Right. But, hey, did Con Man, I don't know if you put this sheet together or it's Zeet. It's a group project. Or whatever right. here. But what is the, where is the deal about the Chiefs are playing the Dolphins in Germany, right? Yep. The yes. report this week was that the Bears may not play the Chiefs in Germany because the Chiefs don't want to play the Bears. Where is that They're come scared. from? What kind of rumors are that? Is that coming from? What corners of the, of like the internet? Yeah, this was a thing all week. This wasn't just like a run-of-the-mill thing today. Yeah, it's from... Peter King's football morning in America. Bingo. Okay. Yes. And he was 
kind of alleging, but that the Bears weren't going to play in Germany. This is what the t- tweet says. Bears playing in Germany this upcoming season against the Kansas City Chiefs won't happen because Casey has requested to the NFL that they don't want to play the Bears overseas. And people are assuming that is because Bears travel really well, right. so Kansas City wants them, you know, beer sales, ticket sales, all those things to actually – Come to them as a real home game, yeah. and uh, I, man, I, I'm not it, really it, sure. Come on, it's not that. What is it? Come it's, on, it's, don't Andy do Reid do not want to go all the way to fucking Germany and, and lose and play with his fucking second squad oh. against a subpar ass fucking bear team. <laughs> oh, see, that's I, a long. Wouldn't that be trip. a good resting time though? Rest oh all my your good God, guys, man. We, I know, <laughs> man. The, chi- the Chiefs can beat them right here. We, they don't have to go all the way to fucking Germany to beat the Bears. I see. I thought the Chiefs. Are already losing a home game, not at Arrowhead. That's which, what, I think which that's they, how it works. Gonna, you have to like the, one of the teams gets designated to be the home. Yeah, which the Chiefs yeah. are here. Which I thought okay. Arrowhead's going to be sold out no matter who they're playing. But I thought that they were a little worried that maybe Bears fans would travel really well, and maybe there'd be more Bears fans Aww. in Germany oh, yeah. than, than, than there would the, be Chiefs. Fans. Easy, the Kansas City Chiefs are sitting there worried about that. Maybe. I don't think I don't think they give a shit at all about. No. Local no. people no. traveling. I mean, we saw last year how high the demand was for people in Germany and in, in Europe to go to these games. Oh, yeah. Like the stadiums are going to be mostly comprised of people. Or it's like how many people they want to see the spectacle of what it is. Hey, NFL exactly. football. Mm-hmm. I, want to, I just want to be there and see it and take it in. Like we would probably want to go see Lionel Messi if he came over here from Bingo. Barcelona. Bingo. Well said. Yeah. But as a, player, Saudi Arabia. as a player, AJ, tell them how miserable this fucking trip is. Oh, see, Pac, this is the thing. I think the Packers went overseas oh, a year or two after I left, and the Bengals. No, went last year, year was the first time. Oh they my ever bad! Did the it. Bengals, I think, with the year after I left. Back. I heard that was not. You guys left on what a Thursday? Yeah. For a Sunday game. So can you tell us how that schedule was? Like from when you took off in Cincy till you landed until you played. Like what'd you do? So we left from Cincy, went to Chicago, got on a bigger plane, uh-huh. mm-hmm. went left from Chicago. Did straight. you were there a bunch of laydown seats? Like what? How? What was better? Only the starters had lay down oh, seats. That's I, a big deal. I thought they just got yeah, like awesome. fifty, like what, what team or, it, was right? a, it was a big ass plane, but you know the the a lot of guys didn't have the sleepers. Um, so you get over there, shit is early in the morning, so the time difference yeah. is a big so difference. You, you go practice right away. I know you go straight that. to the stadium. Okay. Yeah, it's like six thirty seven. We mm-hmm. we got there, went straight to some little soccer field that wasn't the main place. Had a little practice in front of all these people. The food was horrible. Whoa. For the Bengals. You don't I like mean, fish and chips? No. I, I they catered they had... the food. Oh, well, Even when we got time to go around, the food was not the same. I'm just saying, as some athletes are getting ready for a prime game, yeah. that this game might count if a motherfucker is going to the playoff or not. Sure. That matters. Yeah, but yeah. everything coming out about the Bengals, you guys are probably eating fish and poop, not fish and, <laughs> fish and chips. <laughs> I, I doubt that Mr. No, Brown is betting over backwards for food over in London. All right, then you get there. You have a practice the next day, some media thing, then you play, then you right back on the plane to get back over here. And then you lose, did you lose like eight hours coming back? Yeah. Is that what the, where'd you play? London? We played in London. That's that not Wembley? It's... Yeah, Wembley. Was it but cool? Was, it, it was, was the venue it was, cool? The venue was crazy. Okay. It was, it was, I mean, they sung whatever song they sung. God Save the Queen. The whole game. Can you? Well, it's no the king. I don't do it. You well, know? I don't. I it's, actually it's don't. It's the know king that. now. God Save the Queen. That just happened the Coronation Saturday, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You guys watch? You watch a little bit. Yeah, didn't you go? I was at the Derby, so honestly, I forgot about it. I would have. I watched a little bit of it. Come on now. I remember we watched when the one people got married, though. My yeah, wife, the royal wedding. It. Yeah, the royal wedding. In, like, wedding. middle of the night. Everyone Wake up at that. 5 a.m. Yeah, me and my buddy drank, like, three bottles of whatever, Crown or vodka, whatever what? was the time, and watched, stayed up till 5 and watched it. Nice. I can't do that. You stayed I'm up old. till five? I'm old now. Yeah, we stayed up and watched it. <laughs> oh, I figured you just wake up at you wake up at five every morning. Why don't yeah, you I just go like to bed? And wake up? I was like twenty three. Young young we were excited. Oh. I was like, Oh my gosh, it's such a big deal. Look at the No. But Pac, I'm sorry, we cut you off. You play the game, then you fly home. Then, fly, then fly what's right practice back. like? Fly right back. You get here like what is that? Sunday going into Monday. Yeah. Shit. Oh. We back at the stadium. They pushed it back, so we was back at the stadium by two o'clock. So <sighs> it was it was it was it wasn't a good trip for for me. So I, as far as a play, I mean, now no one wants to play two games over there. But for the Jags, at least you're yeah. over there for you're you're over there for two weeks. So maybe uh, you maybe it is better than just going for three days. Better, oh, yeah. Do they work. go? Yeah. Do they go Monday too? Is there any thought like there's no point to go Thursday to oh, Sunday? Yeah. Why wouldn't they just go Monday, get acclimated to the time, especially if they're playing the Falcons? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it's going to be each individual player will have their own opinion, but I. 
I don't know, man. I'm not good going anywhere past like four or five days. Like if we go on, if sure. there's a vacation or something, give me like four days is all I need. Even if I have to fly 15 hours, like I don't care. I just let me get back at some point. I think being gone two weeks, living out of your hotel room when you're re- preparing for two games yeah. that mean a lot. Yeah. Them hotel rooms in London are small too. Well, yeah. some teams do that now when they like, if like oh, the yeah. Chargers or something that will we'll have a game in Atlanta and then the next game they're playing the Commanders or something like that. They'll yeah. stay yeah. on the East yeah. Coast, right? Yeah. yeah, a lot of teams do that. When I, so I was on the Falcons for, Four weeks. Yep. Uh, the year they went to the Super Bowl, I went there on a Tuesday, signed, and they left on Friday to go to Denver, and then they were staying out there because we were playing Seattle next. So I was like, mm. all right, I was home, not playing on playing football and doing anything. I was working out and stuff. I was actually about to go work a game for FS1, and then all of a sudden I'm in Atlanta, I don't have anything with me, and they're like, hey, we're going on like a 10 day road trip after this. But geez, I've never done this, so I, I think I went to Kohl's and bought some clothes and a thing of yep. luggage, nice, had a couple things. But then we stayed in a hotel for eight nine days. It was yeah, it was pa- a lot. Patriots did that this year. I mean, when they had to play Arizona and then uh, the Raiders the next week, they just stayed out out west and then they practice at you know Arizona. It is good for your team, on like. It's like camp. In the yeah. moment, camp sucks and all that, but you do ha- come up with, like, lasting memories and lasting things, and you, your team does get closer because it's, you're all, it's all you have. Well, is so it nicer going to out? out? Like, is it more fun going out when you know, like, okay, it's not as if we have to play the Cardinals and then fly all the way home. Like, we get to play the Cardinals, have a day off, and then travel to uh, Vegas? Yeah, I don't We took I've, off right away when we flew. Yeah, I've never had that. We never like, NFL staying. don't do that. Normally, after they you play, you're players. out of there. They don't yeah. trust yeah. players to yeah. hang around at all, right. I don't think, which is probably smart. Yeah. Probably you get a lot of right. players on a football team. Well, like, Pac, you <laughs> went over there, like, because it, it was kind of like last year when, like, the practices in, in London, they seemed kind of Mickey Mouse because it seemed like it was just, it was like a media Well, that's because Russell Wilson was there. Well, that was a big part of it for sure. But Oh, wait, the high knees on the plane, right? Bingo. That's yeah. Bing. Yep. That, that was just last year. But, like, did you do that, Pac? You do a bunch of high knees up and down the. No, I never did. I never even wore my jersey have you worn your jersey before what do you mean like like not with shoulder camp. pads <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> i have not worn my jersey other than no i've never <laughs> worn my jersey outside yeah, you, you wear it to axel's last game yeah in should, the stands. I, every game that either i'm like assistant coaching or i'm there to support one of my kids yeah oh yeah i wear full uniform i wear mm-hmm. pants green bay too so it's real sticks out I, people are like man this guy he must love attention i got yellow gold pants That's green sweet. jersey yep. sometimes i bring my home yeah water people love that hair. Water bottle, yeah. I make someone else spray water in my mouth. Yep, they don't obviously. love when you yell from the sideline, like, fucking blitz, Axel! <laughs> like, that's what they have a problem with. To my five-year-old in a flag football game. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Um, that doesn't happen. I, I, okay. I heard. Now, this is, I saw it on the internet. Oh, no. Could be wrong. Uh, since the Colts are playing the Patriots in Germany, uh, and Andrew Luck has so much respect for the Rhine fire, he's actually going to come back and play one game that game. That's true. One game. I don't know if he could do that. Jim Mersey sees him back in that Colts uniform slinging that ball around. He's going to throw a billion dollars this way to try to get him to, to join the team again. I don't know because the only way is like 160 now. He does look like that. Yeah, and plus, Andrew does want to play in, in Germany. Patriots are 2-0 and o against Germans. Are so they? Anybody who wants to come Bill, there. Do you think Bill takes are doing a whole, a whole history lesson of where they're going? Because Bill is big on all that. Is, yeah. Do you so think he does that with Patriots Yeah, he's going all the way back Germany. to 1917. He's going to give kind of the layout of how, you know, the Great War at the time started. Okay. And okay. then once the second one came out and they referred to World War One, he'll go back, <laughs> go back through World War One. Then he'll move to the 30s where it gets fishy, as yeah. you know. You know, blonde, as blonde hair. Blue eyes, you get it. And then <laughs> World War II happened. He'll go through that entire thing. He might even stop in, you know, Vietnam or Kuwait in oh, between. No. And then he'll get to Angela Merkel and everything going on in Germany and kind of how they have built this spectacle in Frankfurt, I believe. Okay. Pac Man, did you ever want to play for Bill Belichick? He's one of the things I wish I got to experience what it was like to play for the Patriots when especially like in their prime with Tom there and what it was like to be on a Belichick led team. Bro, who wouldn't? Yeah, what is it? Is it just because like, it's like a mysterious? Brexit. Like we don't really know. Like they I don't know were... if you. I guess if you come from that winning pedigree or like winning or have anything with winning, with everything that he's done, you. That's the guy you've been like. Damn, I wish I could have played up under. Yeah, him like I just because guys that do, they're like, nah, man. Like, it, most people, yeah, they're like, nah. He's he's a lot different than you think. They're like, Bill's actually funny and like 
if you're a pro and you do things right, he's great. Like, yeah. He's awesome. Well, that's the thing. It is kind of 50-50. Like, I feel like we don't know, obviously, exactly what goes on in there. But since the Brady-Belichick split, like there was that guy, Cassius Marsh, who came out. And, oh. and he explained how they do the history lessons. And some people just don't want to fucking hear that. And that's not a knock on them. But like you have to be a certain type of player, obviously. And there are guys like Judon, Matthew Judon. He absolutely loves it. Yeah. And he has helped, you know, kind of bring guys in and wants to – explain that to people you gotta win though for them to continue to love it you have yeah. to win like, you have to win. Whatever, however they ran that team when you're winning you can get away with whatever you want as yeah. a coach and staff everything but like the second you stop winning like you know that like, issues will happen guys will start asking questions guys will start not being as uh they're not gonna be as willing to do the little things that you may other well, players may think are stupid do you, you know? think it'd be easier to play for him as a younger guy or as an older guy Ooh. It, de- uh, it depends. You, you know, if when, you're an older guy with a you, bunch and you're you, you're a great if you're player, stuck in your ways, yeah. Uh, yeah. And if you, yeah, that's I guess tough. he doesn't. Yeah, if you're an older guy, that man, that's good. But he Maybe. probably ain't gonna bring you if you don't fit the model. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I he think knows. the younger yeah. the younger guys have to be easier because like they you don't guys, know any other way. You guys mentioned too, yeah, and like the allure of Bill Belichick, like it probably means more. To well, them. it has that for older guys even too. True, so yeah, yeah, true. As a younger guy, I would say yeah because I okay because this is what you do. Like you don't know any different. You don't even know to. Think like there's other ways going about it. Like, yeah. Oh man, this is practice is pretty tough now. They're they're really riding me, but this is what we do. This it seems cool. like every player who leaves there or has stayed there forever, or a player who leaves there gets a contract somewhere else. Like they all enjoyed playing for Bill. At least they say so publicly. Like the only person who had success there and says they didn't like it seems to be Asante Samuel. Mm-hmm. He seems to be the only guy. What's his deal? Who hates it? He dropped a uh, interception against the Giants to ruin the perfect season, so I think he's still pissed. But uh, over, <laughs> he's pissed, or you are? Uh, he, he probably is. I think he is. I mean, probably a hell of a player, though. Man, Sante was that a hell of a player. Yeah. Had a lot of interceptions too. A lot yeah. of them. Like, I think he, he's probably he on the list of probably the most doing our era. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Yeah. Like always, he crushed it. I think he's, he's like the one vocal. Anti is he anti Bill in yes. Patriots way? Like, oh yeah, yeah. he anti Bill. I've he's seen very, him going back and yeah. forth with a couple people online, but yeah, he's very anti Bill. But I think that is almost jaded because there are a bunch of pricks similar to me who what? probably have tweeted at him oh like, "You son of a bitch, you ruined the." Pr-. Anytime that that clip gets thrown out of yeah. the David Tyree catch, he will get tagged underneath it. Like, remember when you could have had this game one for us, pal? Yeah. So I can kind of understand why he might hate Bill Belichick <laughs> and just New England in general. Uh, but, no, it does seem as though because of Bill, and you guys mentioned the winning, like he has the winning pedigree, but it's like that anywhere. Like for the coach, one thing, but we saw it with the Bills this year. Like the Bills won all these games, and then against the Bengals when things were going wrong, like that sideline was kind of up in arms. I mean, they had to stop Stephon Diggs from just kind of walking yeah. out, and that and that really is anywhere. Like if you – you have those expectations, and New England has had them for so long. And now these teams, Bills, the Packers have had them for so long. You know, the Chiefs, the Bengals have them now. Like, if you don't make it to the Super Bowl, and if you don't at least make it to the playoffs, then the whole season's a failure. It doesn't really matter. Tom Brady ruined that for everybody. Tom yeah. Brady and the yeah, Patriots, yeah. they are ruined, They ruined everybody's expectations. I say a lot. It's about, like, managing expectations yeah. when you're thinking about whatever your, who your favorite team is or whatever. Now we judge everybody off of, of Tom Brady and his seven Super Bowl rings. Right. Bill Belichick has what nine total? Uh, he has counting I assistant think, coach. I think, se- I think seven or eight. Yeah, I don't think with he got nine. But the problem yeah, with the Giants business mm-hmm. coordinator, Giants yeah. with Parcells. Okay. The yeah. problem also is that we're not really talking about Mahomes running now. He's never not been to an AFC championship. Every single year, he's been to the yeah, title game of the Super Bowl. So now, yeah, if he doesn't go, what's wrong with Mahomes? Is he, he's falling off the cliff. He's exactly. not the That's top the first dude thing anymore. They're gonna say, and he's what, like 27, 28? Yeah, 27. Nah. Did you I see think. that guy's weekend? He was Met Gala, Derby, <laughs> and that F1. F1. Down yeah. was d How do you have the time? Was he the big cat suit Schedule. at the Met Gala? Uh, I'm not sure if that was, that was him. Jared Leto. Yes. Oh, okay. There's a couple of cat suits. Doja, yeah, Doja like, Cat was in full cat character. Well, she yeah. is a cat. That's her name. Yeah, that was the theme of the... Is that uh, on a birth certificate? Right. Yes. Yeah, Doja is. Cat. Yeah. yeah. No yeah. middle name? No. Uh, Susie, That's I believe. Cool. Su- oh. Susie? Okay. I thought okay. it was Barb. Okay. That did you see coming. Patrick at uh, the Derby on Friday? Yeah, I did see him. There. Josh Allen was there. He's a giant. Mm-hmm. Dude, did you yeah, see him... Huge. Absolutely oh fucking punishing softballs. God. Is that his charity game, or that's probably the same one that we is, saw uh, played last Poyer's year? That is Poyer's charity game. 
Josh Allen should be a like he should be a professional intramural softball player. He, he yeah. should sub in for dudes for guys smashing like, mm-hmm. teams like my dad plays on with the dudes drink beer all game. His suit was awesome at the too. He had yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, he looked good. His hair, he's growing his hair out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like Do you see any of those fights at the Derby? I've seen a few kind of circulate. And no, I saw one dude had a real bloody. Real yeah, bloody. I wish I would have seen that one. That and the woman like at the end said, "I fucking hate you." Yeah. She, was she standing up for a guy? I think so. Good for her. I, yeah, good I couldn't woman. tell what that relationship was. Allegedly, she slept with both of them. I don't know. Okay, so that, that would make before, oh, you're, just, that, you're inferring that from watching. No, no, I said allegedly. I saw that somewhere on the oh. tour bus. <laughs> huh? On the tour bus? Who? What? On the tour bus? Oh, who's tour bus? Might who's have been tour on the bus? tour bus. bus? <laughs> was that before what? I think guy? it was in. The, I was gonna say was that before or after Jimmy Graham beat the shit out of you and you guys' box because oh, I know yeah. you were bumping your gums a little bit. <laughs> Wait, Jimmy beat me up. Yeah, yeah didn't yeah. he? Didn't you say yeah, that? Or no, he said he was a shitty pilot. I would never say that about Jimmy. Great pilot. Also, you said TC was better. I'm not going to show you these these clips, and Jimmy yeah, won't see this because Jimmy is he's a commercial either pilot. sailing around the world or flying around the world right now. Yeah. He's he's going to sail around the world like in a year by himself. He just he's training right now. But what? Rides, what a, you know, he's like a professional cyclist. He was riding his bike down in Miami yesterday or two days ago. I got pictures. Car turns left, hits him, takes him out. He says he did more damage to the car than the I car did to him. I don't doubt it. He has a calf. He has a slice on his calf that looked like he had worms growing out of it. It was so deep Ooh. and all the stuff in there you could see. And now he has tons of stitches and all that. How do you train Jeez. to sail around the world? Just like hold your breath for a while? or I think you hold your breath for a little bit. And then you go and he's on a boat and he has somebody like a captain that trains him and teaches him everything. Oh, and then he goes, and he, he goes on little short two, three day trips now. Like down to the Caribbean? Yeah, because he lives in Miami. Flies out of Miami. What helicopter. a nut job! How, how's he? Has he planned his route yet? Is he going? Is he going left or right? I think he's, he's going right. Ma- is he taking okay. Magellan? Which I know we both think he should go left, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but he's going right. No, now. you yeah. go down and you go through the Strait of Magellan, and then you're off. You're Will off. he go through the uh, the canal, Panama Canal? Where no, because that doesn't count. Stuck that ship. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, Cortez. That was the Suez was Canal. Was that the Suez that the guy it got was. stuck in? Yes. Oh yeah, you're talking about Evergreen. Yeah, the one that went. Don't be an asshole. Get your canals correct. You're right. How did I mess that one up? It's okay. It's 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 been a while. The Suez. It has been a while since I've been here. I always get my canals mixed up. Well, plus you're saying you think that we would. You know, go left. You're the one that leans hard right. I don't know. Oh, you took it a political <laughs> way, Con man. I say, I didn't, I, at first, I did not oh, take it that politics. way. You did. Oh, you geez. love politics. So I know Diggs. Diggs has had an eventful, big, I, eventful yeah. week. I yeah. Know. <laughs> you know me, big politics guy. You yeah, are. well, Diggs is king returned. Yeah, that's right. Who? Who is oh. it? And where did he return to? Uh, if you're talking about the coronation, yeah, the king has returned. Oh, that's right. Okay, Thanks. there is somebody that Tucker Carlson, right? He's going to Twitter. I'm more curious about how the motto is. Is this so he has a website? TuckerCarlson.com. His whole show is going to be on Twitter. He's the first guy doing this? No, uh, what's his name? Did it a while ago. Who? Tosh.0? Uh, uh, so broke. Oh, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. Well, Alex wasn't just, he had his, it was all to his website. It sounds like I believe, Tucker is strictly, my show is on Twitter. Yeah, I think uh, Elon replied to someone and said that like long form Twitter videos and like going live is coming back. And you can you subscribe to, to us and I he's going to so. get people to subscribe and pay money. So it's like a Twitter only fans. Well, Pretty much. Yeah. Twitter only fans. I mean, is that what we're doing? Kind is that of, what Twitter's trying to do now? They're monetizing videos too. And so like all his videos get, get millions. millions of hits. Yeah. And like that will make money for him. So as he's well. like the pioneer for that version to see if it works or not on Twitter. Pretty much, I, I guess. We'll see. Unprecedented. It, yeah, well, it's a tough model to follow because, you know, he, he gets a lot of numbers no matter what he's doing. You're right. Hey, can we go back for a second? Uh, Pat just hit us up and let us know that it's probably a little bit of breaking news that Jimmy Graham is going to sail around the world and just got hit by a car in Miami. So maybe if you could expand upon that a little bit, AJ. You kind of just glossed over smart. it real quick. Kind of Nick, I feel like I did expand upon it. I talked about the little worms I saw in the picture crawling out of his what leg. What bike does he drive? He rides his bike Ride. is probably $80,000. You know those bikes what? that are like super – he's like a professional does bike he wear one of the helmets? the gear. Does yes. he wear one of the helmets that yes. looks like a big uh, yes. dinosaur head? Yes, Has he to. does all of it. If Jimmy does, Jimmy doesn't like dip his toes in. Jimmy's all into my, he's a professional skydiver, all that stuff. What the hell? Yeah, he's gonna. What sail, else does he do? Is he most interesting man? Does he yeah. play the piano yeah. and violin? Probably does, but he um that's his new thing. Yeah, he flies. He has multiple planes. He flies float plane. He used to fly to practice in Seattle. He said, land there and then go to practice. He, he landed in the sound. Yeah, wherever their facility was, mm-hmm. he landed in the water there. And then um he flew a plane to the Derby. He flew himself there from Miami in this other plane he has. And then he does aerobatics. He flies a giant helicopter from Vietnam that he reconditioned. 
And what he told me he's gonna he was sending pictures a couple months ago. He's like, yeah, bro, it's my next. I'm gonna go sail around the world within a year. And I talked <laughs> to him he, about it at the derby. What's he sailing? Like a small boat? A big, yeah. What like kind? A, can we like look a, up this boat? Me, he like sent a me San the Francisco model. Grand Prix. He sent me the model. It's not that. Well, it's not huge, but it's uh, pretty big. Yeah, yeah look at Jimmy does, and he doesn't. He doesn't put a lot of stuff up. Oh yeah, he should. He wants me to go up with him. I'm like, bro, I'll this call is the inf infamous Simple Man video where it's got you know Skinner playing in the background. Is it really? Oh yeah. Oh my god. I tell you what, in terms of civilian pilots, it's fucking TC and it's Jimmy Graham right yeah, beneath. Him. Right there. I can't believe I've never asked him if he's met TC. Jimmy, Jimmy is like he's seen him in the skies. He's like the yeah, co actually you saw it in that right there. He's, he's like, like the right co-chairman of the Oshkosh, the um, the Oshkosh? huge uh, show that's on every single summer that goes up in uh, the air show that like ten thousand planes fly in for. Mm -hmm. There's he's like the co-chair of it now or something. So he's definitely met TC because TC actually founded that, didn't he? No, because yeah. those stakes aren't high. Travolta uh, used to go there to that. I don't know if TC goes to that or not. The Oshkosh Air Show. Oh yeah, because Travolta does have his own house Huge runway. Boat. Yeah. So what? What? What type of boat? Can we get back to the yeah. boat here? Uh, I don't know. But like I think like one of those, like you know, like the sailboats you see people on YouTube now. Because I was telling them, I was like, some of those people pop up on my YouTube algorithm, of, like families that sail around the world now. So with an the boat. Oh, so, like, so the boat has. They'll an have an engine, but he'll be sailing the majority. Like of the, the boat um, that got right. rescued in the perfect storm. You, Pac, that you sail? Are you big sailing guy? Yeah, he swam to practice every day. Land the boat, boom, swim to practice. Who? Jim. He did. Swim? Where? Swim to practice. Land the boat. Boom. Swim across. In New Orleans? In Seattle. Go to practice. In New Orleans? Where? No, nah, in Seattle. Oh, wow. Okay. In Seattle? Yeah. yeah. It's a little cold in the sound, but he yeah. he made it work. It's like, what? It's like a, like a cold tub, you know? People paid thirty grand to put a cold tub outside their garage now. Thirty yeah. thousand dollars. But are you serious, Bro, some of those cold tubs are freezing. No, no, I, okay, so like I mean, the really cold, expensive, I mean. I was say the colder it is, the more expensive. I was listening to this cross-conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of those, like, um... Some of those big time like cold plunge deals because they have a whole condenser and keep it cold. They were like twenty grand. So, does, does Wim have one? Wim just goes all natural. Yeah, he yeah. goes to Antarctica. Uh, so you're telling me, Jimmy Graham? You're telling me you can't get off this? I can't. I, 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 I'm, I'm a huge fan of Jimmy. So He's I'm a professional with... pilot, both on, on, in the air and with a helicopter. Yeah. Yes, he is sailing around the world. What? He will be next year. He says he yeah. will be. How do you get? Does he get a captain's license for and sailing? A professional I'm swimmer. Sure Connor, does. do you know? I don't. Yeah, honestly look. don't. That's what he does in Miami. He, all the time. He's in the Tour de France as well. Yeah, pretty he much. I mean, I don't know about now that he got taken out by this car. He got the. He. It was a Mercedes. He took the. Uh, the you know the emblem off the front hood knocked out he got he said he just it. do all it. these things flying sailing bike riding because he looks really cool in sunglasses maybe well it Might also be. doesn't hurt when you look at the guy who's over his uh, left shoulder there uh -huh. who has a massive gut you can see Jimmy's in great shape and he's just <laughs> dusting these guys this guy, yeah he has no idea you mean Max cycle right? yes I, I do I know he's rid uh, you know Drew Rosen old Ray 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 Lewis rides down there I know he's yeah. Jimmy really? has, has rode with him yeah Ray Lewis rides down there yeah. Miami, bro. What the hell is yeah, going you, on? Ray the, couldn't swim, but those colors don't bleed. You say Ray couldn't swim? No, nah, he tried. Nah. What do you that mean? That didn't work out good for him. But what happened? Ride a bike. What, what happened, happened when he swam? They say Jimmy said he couldn't swim. He sinks like a stone. <laughs> like Just Schlegel. too I got, strong. I got a buddy, like I got a buddy Anthony Who Schlegel. Is, who is he swim. driving NASCAR too? <laughs> oh my bad, I forgot. He does have like a hang rally oh car. Oh cars. God. Yeah, he does everything. I'm telling you, those are Lambo. He might be the most interesting man. Hangs out, you know, like he just. No wonder he got sick and tired of playing football. Yeah, a guy can do everything. I mean, why, why the hell would he still be catching passes if he can, you know, race with Dale Jr. and fly to D.C.? <laughs> yeah. What the I'm hell? I'm sure he's fine with me talking about his leg getting blasted open by that car. Hopefully that car gets in trouble. I think they took a left while he was going. They didn't, they didn't look or a left or a right on him. Is he on IR or is he good to go still riding? Oh, I think he said he'll be back on the bike today. Yeah. Uh, so just a quick four days off. It was kind of uh, soft. But not even four. I think honestly, like a day. I, he sent these pictures yesterday. Oh, this this happened after the derby. Oh yeah, this just happened yesterday or two days ago. He got Jeez hit. Jeez Louise. He's yeah. superhuman. Man, we have like a group him. a group text going and someone. Like, what happened, Jim? You got hit by a car? And then he. Oh yeah, man. Did he jump on a horse at the derby on. by any chance? Did he jump on a horse? Yeah. Did one of the jockeys just say, "Holy shit, I've seen you"? If fly, Jimmy got so on a horse, his legs might drag the ground. He's so yeah. tall. Help like it if he run. sat on top of a horse. Could help it run, though. Oh, like yeah. six legs. About that. Yep, like Fred Flintstone. Steps. Is his bike extra big? I, mean, I would imagine, That's, right? Yeah. Like J.J. Watt's clubs when we were oh, in Arizona. Gosh. at mm -hmm. the, uh, the They're taller than me. Closest to the pin. I was going to hit yeah. it, too. I, I, they were like, yeah, can I use your 7-iron, J.J.? All right. And then three minutes later, I'm about to hit. I look, and the, the thing is, like, above my nipples. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is a little bit tall for me, J.J. I'm pretty sure Pat... 
pretty sure Pat did use his iron. I think he almost said we went and used we both used an iron from another bag, but yeah, we almost Jeez. we both almost hit JJ's, which we probably would hit it right on the green. So is Jimmy Graham an alien? Are we, is he yeah, entering he the be, category? Because he's like a, he kind of he does his own thing, man. Lives by his own whatever he wants to marches do. to the beat of but his he's, own drum. But he's a really good, cool dude that's just chill and can hang out. Yeah, that's one guy I wish it would have worked out a little bit better with in the pack yeah. the Packers. I feel oh, like yeah. that could have been something special. Yeah, free play. I mean, college basketball. Yeah, so, and plus so if, if you would have known that while he was with the Packers, he was trying to. Yeah, I know. used to get pissed about him flying planes oh, yeah. and stuff like that, and yeah. now it's get like your playbook. That yeah, was tied. pretty yeah, much, yeah. pretty much. Yeah, I basically saying? said that almost verbatim. Hey, why don't we stop flying B fifty twos and <laughs> catch a couple touchdown passes? But now it's like you can't do both. Fuck it. Why? Sorry, why baby. would? Why wouldn't you be flying B fifty twos? Why wouldn't you? I mean, if you can, I, I wonder where Jimmy stops. I don't know if he's a scuba diver. That's like one of the only other things, right? That he could probably go after. Yeah, probably. I mean, look at this. Wow, this is Jimmy Graham hour. If Jimmy pal. used the internet, he would know about it. I don't know if he's going to even see any of this. He has a flip phone, you said, right? No, he's got a phone, but he. No easy buckets. He, he's if it's during the day, he's riding his bike or he's flying planes or jumping out of planes or now sailing around the world or practicing. Can to we sail call Jimmy right now? You can. You can try if you want. No, he's flying. Yeah, yeah. He's we should flying or You're sailing right. or. See, I'm gonna send you his his number. I don't think he he running in the car today. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Um, well, he's not doing the bike. I, I, when is he supposed to take off to sail? Has he, t- has he told you how, Has he told you how long it's supposed to take? Uh, like, a year. I think he's gonna do it. A, a full. Year. Year. Oh, so he's gonna make some. I think stops. he's gonna like make it. A th- oh yeah, I think he's going to. He wants to experience every port, every destination. Yep. Like that's what you do. That's a good way. To, that's retirement. We should sail to Germany with him for Pat's Colts. That seems like we got to be there. I mean, Zeke, I'm about to send you his number. Foxy, we'll Foxy unfortunately, Foxy, you can't are we cold calling him? Sail There's no Germany, ocean dude. next to Germany. We Fox. sail over there and then fly Foxy. to Germany. <laughs> well, if we're gonna do a whole like ground, air, travel, that type of thing, sea, then we got to drive somewhere. Planes, trains, and automobiles. There it is. <laughs> that's the thing. And boats. Hey, Z, you might have to send him and a boats. text to like warn him. Hey. Say I gave you a number, and then we'll try to get him on if he's if he's around. No, if you say it's Big Zach, he, he should just <laughs> he, <laughs> Zach, bro, up. open it up. Come on, man, answer the phone. Yeah, Pac Man, Pac Man spelling in <laughs> Big uh, Zach enunciation of the. I mean, you called Bill Bob a couple weeks ago. That's that was still is Big true. Big uh, Big Zach on the t- group text. Big Zach, right? Get to be there. Big Zach in the house. Big Zach yeah. In the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I just yeah. copy and pasted it when I came in. Today. Yeah, Big Zach opened it up worked. The gate. <laughs> I had to scroll back and see if Zeke. I think you might call him Zeke Z E K E. That's what I thought. Zeke. Yeah, yeah. Like I did Zeke do it first. Look at your guy's still not signed. Who? Yeah, Big Zeke. Zeke. We, oh, What's I know. What is? Ed, there's a lot of free agents. What's the out rush there. right now, though? No, no, yeah, no, no I there's know. There's no rush until, if you didn't. If you didn't until somebody gets hurt, maybe or. When, so when we, if he doesn't sign now, he'll probably sign. I think he'll sign before camp, camp right? Before August, camp, right before camp. Yeah, I oh, guess. Yeah. Oh, here's free agents. Yeah, These are guys. all the free agents yeah. here. Man, Jarvis Landry, Zeke Elliott, Yannick Ngakwe, Leonard Fournette. I mean, are any running backs signed other than a couple I thought that we had Mc, early? I thought McKinnon might have re-signed. He re-signed. He did. He just yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. What's Eckler's situation like? Uh, Tom Telesco actually came out today and he said, uh, "I am. There's been no change, and we are not letting him go." What happened with Landry? Did he just fall off the building? He, and uh, uh, New Orleans, Orleans yeah. right? He had a decent little year. Yeah, he was yeah. he was good. They just kind of stunk. They yeah, just kind of really good. flew under the radar. At is least Carl Wentz going to play quarterback ever again? You think? Yeah, where is he? He's nowhere. No, he's not. He's a free agent, just straight on the yeah. street free yeah. agent. Yep, Make that's surprising. Well, it's because has he proven that he can be a backup? No, but well, <sighs> he's proven that he can work his way to a backup, but. Can he Man. be a backup? Backups yeah. are getting paid right now. He's, he's got to be a good backup. Kareem Hunt's he's, still he out there. He wants paid, too, so someone probably doesn't want to yeah. pay him what he wants to be a backup, right? He, well, yeah, he probably want eight mil or something. Well, Heineke and Mike White got two years 16, yeah, so oh, he probably wants no. eight. Yeah, that's why he wouldn't. Right. Hasn't he made enough money? I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, isn't it for the love of the game? Yeah, yeah. Has, the does Warren, you ever see Warren Buffett just hanging out, just sitting still? And yeah, doing McDonald's. Everything? No, but Warren Buffett's good at his job, so like oh. it's, it's warranted Whoa. that he, you know, pew, makes pew, money. Pew, pew. Carson has been good at his job. Not recently. When? Maybe he has been. His rookie year, he has proven record of before making he some plays. Fucked up he, his yeah. knee. Yeah, yeah you're right. The injuries early have Eagle? hurt him bad for he, sure. Yeah, early Eagles people early. were big time loving the dude. Yeah, the Vikings take a flyer on him as a backup. You know, Vikings. Yeah, yeah why, not? why not? It they sounds don't. like they're not sold on Kirk Cousins. Maybe they bring in, you know, oh, Carl. Oh, is this Kirk I, I'm talking about year? Kirk, but Kirk is is in the cat. You can't put him in. 
Winston. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm saying no, no, well, no, Wentz, no. Is, Wentz is going to be the backup. No oh. question about it. He's not starting over no. Kirk. Is but. this Kirk's? Does Kirk have more years on his contract? Last one. Yeah, this is it. So really? they're, they didn't draft him. So now we really know nope. you weren't paying yesterday when Pelsar was on. They did yeah. draft one. Did, did Pelsar talk about <laughs> that yesterday? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. They drafted the I kid tell you, there's a lot of information given. I I may have missed some of that. Well, now when I was texting Jimmy Graham, I mean, we don't fault your fall. So the picture of your calf that almost fell off. That would have been sweet. Zeke, you ain't response? <laughs> Nothing Sorry. yet. Drinking water right into this mic. That's what the professionals do. Well, he's probably sailing. I mean, look, if this guy's going to travel Is he the around hospital the right now? He probably, I hope he doesn't get staff. That's what people get Jesus. first. Of, which I want to talk to Grant Hill about. He had a nasty staff infection. I don't know. I think he came back and played after it. But he's like does charity work to help people with staff or something. His was so nasty. Really? That you was a big thing in high school. Nasty no, staff? I've never had nasty staff. I've never been in a facility that... The Bucks had it right. Yeah, remember the, I remember when they sprayed out run. everything at the yeah when the Browns had it. Of course it they did. That. Yeah, that makes sense. I had, yeah, Ben Taylor. I had a buddy. He was um, like a five year vet when I came into Green Bay. Awesome dude. He was on the Browns when like staff was going. If you remember Le Charles Bentley, center from Ohio State, his career was shut down because he had staff so bad in his knee. He Jeez, had just signed there from playing. New Orleans, right? It was like yeah, a massive big. free agent deal, and he I don't did he even play a game for them? I don't think so. He was one of the first like that got staff, and the staff ran through their facility, and that's what changed a lot. Where we had so many, they spread stuff out, they wipe tables down every second now. They have signs everywhere because. You get bad staff. I'm sure we'd have to have a, a doctor really explain it. Staff, MRSA, whatever they yeah. call yeah, it. Mercer, yeah, MRSA. Where it can, like, eat away at your, your bone. Like, people get oh, yeah, people amputated. getting amputations. Yeah. 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 I think people have definitely had to I, – I know I've talked to athletes that have had, like, almost had to amputate things we, uh, because we, of it. We played a football team that had MRSA in the locker room that broke out. Ooh. They had to clean out a whole entire lockers and, like, legit had staff come in and oh, – staff. Uh, people F come in and clean everything out. Yeah, because yeah, of the pH is the staff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About not the STAFF. -F. Yes, yes, Correct. yeah. That had to come clean it out, right, Z? Yes, yeah. How quickly does stuff, not like staff, but if someone gets sick, like if there's an illness in the locker room, how real is it that everyone all of a sudden is sick? Yeah. It happens, like, Cincy? Or just go, yeah, yeah, like, I you mean, know what, how sometimes that the flu go around, you exactly. know, sniffles. Nine times out of ten, if one of us in that damn meeting room, I would say like the defensive back meeting room got it, two or three of us going to get sick. Yeah. It happens fast. Fuck I mean, that. you're sharing. But they everything. send you home though. Like they won't even have you at practice. If like if you got the flu, you got any kind of coughing. Hey man, go go home. And that's something guys just understand because yeah. you'd think it'd be like, oh, you know, I'm not fucking being soft. I got a cough. I got to yeah. be at practice. Depends on the bit. player. But yeah, there's definitely yeah, players. Some guys are like, oh yeah, of course <laughs> this guy's. That's the kind of guy where you know every once in a while there's players that will you know either execute this or try like some guys have gotten in a wreck on the way to the facility during yeah. camp not during the season but during like a big camp day of practice i i know there's guys that have ran their cars off a telephone pole and then they get a day out of practice didn't rich ornberger say he did that because he was already going to be late like his, oh, his, really? his first season with the patriots and he didn't want to piss bell check off so yeah, like, got, moves. Got got wreck, a, yeah got like a real car. car accident yeah I mean, the things you'll do for the game you love, huh? Oh Especially with Bill. If it's your first year and you're late to practice, I mean, you're cut. Right? Jonas, Jonas Gray scored four touchdowns against the Colts, was late to practice on Tuesday or Monday, and they cut his ass. Never played again. I mean, that is, it's crazy when you think about that, but that is why they were able to sustain for so long because, like, that sends a message to everybody. Oh, yeah. Like, you guys yeah. are wrecking their cars on purpose because they don't want to be late because they know it'll negatively affect – they may not be here next week. Yeah, and Pat has said this many times. Like, the the reason is because Tom was the one that he would abide by it. Yep. So the fact that we had him kind of doing the entire thing is the whole reason it worked because dudes like Randy Moss or Antonio Brown, they would come in and then, you know, no problems at all. And remember Randy when he was with Oakland, there was that story that he played with like a quarter of dope in his helmet yeah. one game. Yep. And then he comes to New England and he doesn't have a scratch on him. And he has and the he's like the most beloved teammate there was. Like, of there's that awesome time. video of him inviting Bill to the uh, the skating yeah, party. Halloween party. party. Halloween. Yep. Bill shows up in full character. Yeah, Lord, yeah, yeah. That was one of my favorite <laughs> things guy. I've seen. You know how Randy's his accent and everything. Bill, uh -huh. you know, guys, I don't, I he's like, yeah. remember that? I don't, they didn't, I don't know. We just wanted to let you know you're invited. Yeah. Whatever it <laughs> like, he's, Candy. Randy is such a likable dude. Randy's the best. I actually just saw something of Jason Williams. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. They went to, yeah, they went yeah. to high school together. Uh, one year, Randy won the like high school yeah, Mr. Yeah. Basketball Mr. Yeah. Basketball or but he but Randy won Mr. Basketball yeah and Jason Williams won Mr. Football in the state of West Virginia I'm pretty sure yeah, yeah. and he said he's the best athlete he's ever seen he kicked he punted he did everything yeah, talking about Jason Williams no no Randy Moss oh, kicked yeah. punted Jason Williams too I see that guy pop yeah. up I think he has some kids that are 
pretty good basketball. Yeah, he's ridiculous. Done, I think Pro- he is. Honestly, by far one of my favorite players to watch play. Oh yeah, time. white chocolate. Are you kidding me? There what? he is. Yep. Yep. This was it. That's in his office too. He probably made her hey, uh, bring a uh, bring my costume up to this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean they're just joshing around. He definitely went right back. He he probably kept his roller skates on after the party and Look at rode that right smile. back to the facility. Oh yeah, Bill about. tears up quads. You oh, know, yeah. People don't expect it, but he was like you know doing like the the splits going down. Like you know, Floyd Mayweather, yeah, yeah, right? That, like yeah. he and Floyd. Yep. Yeah, roll bounce. That and this is kind of the thing that no one. I feel like talks about is that he is like this behind the cameras because you are behind the scenes or whatever. Cause like you don't see, he will never ever you see like any personality from him that's real in front of the media or anything. And I, I mean, that's why I love him. I feel like that's yeah. why some people are kind of drawn to him because of how hilarious he is with the media. But it, it obviously from that Randy clip, you know, from the clips of him talking about your team celebrating and what that sends a message to other people like that is how he is. But we'll never find out about that because, you know, that's not what people want to talk about. They want to talk about how Brady and Bill hated each other, even though, that's not well, really true. Well, follow me fucking Foxborough. The moment I changed was when he had Nike doing the draft. The dog? Yeah. yeah. His dog was... <laughs> yeah. COVID draft. Was that 2020? That yeah. was the best yeah. draft COVID by far. Why? Bring those kids dressed up. Yep. In characters. Yeah. Uh, that was hilarious. Billy O'Brien Cliff fucking Kingsbury's almost house. blew a gasket because he didn't know if they were on the clock or who they were picking or whatever. There's that clip. There was a lot of... There was a lot Vikings of Vikings with the Jalen. It's amazing Rieger. that was as seamless yes. as it was, though. That the draft actually, like, I don't remember any big hiccups. That no, it wasn't. All, like, that was when Joe Burrow was. That was his yeah. draft because mm-hmm. he was at home. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because he, they won the Natty that January 2020. Yeah. yeah. So smoking the cigar. Yep. Yeah. You know, Joe, I, th- I read something. Joe said that's the first cigar he's smoked before. Yeah, when he was in the locker room, is that you think that? Is that it, no, right? I think that's a lie. He it was too, uh, the SEC championship. That's what I mean. In college, been buying game. them up lately. Dude. Whenever, uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. The college, I don't know. Plus, we got to see everyone's like draft room. The rumors. old GM who was at Gettleman's was terrible. Oh yeah, and, the and Giants, that's when just the Giants updated. They they put that was a awesome. Bunch of millions into their draft. That's when room. Cliff was at his house. Like yeah. there was just so much, so much cool internet stuff coming out of that draft. We should probably go back to that. <laughs> well, Tony, I want to I want to go there. You know, per se, I, I like going outside still. I oh no, no, I meant the draft, doing the draft. Oh, oh, oh you yeah, talking yeah. COVID? Yeah, I wasn't. Well, that's why I took it as. I'm no, sorry. you know what? I, I'm not putting. What? P- putting what? What? Nothing. What you could, telling you like to go and no matter what side anybody's on, like who's still arguing about COVID? Nobody. nobody. I okay, think. Okay, good. I, I actually, I think good. there might be, but nobody. Like, but I, I even think the actually Pat has said this too. Like he, the, he's had interactions, and I have too. Like there isn't any more like mask versus non-mask. Like people who still wear them, people are it's right. cool. Yeah, yeah it doesn't okay matter, other, which is awesome. And it they, be. It, yeah, and they're not mad at people who don't wear them. Like oh, it's yeah. just kind of a way of Everyone life. Everyone do now. their own thing, and, and it's cool. Go about your way as long as you're not Big you know you yelling in my face or telling me something. Like do yeah. that's that's great. So yeah. it should be. Completely yeah, respect right it. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, yeah. Back to normal. Everybody people love what people. They want. Mm-hmm. ELE. ELE. Will yeah, Ferrell yeah. said it best. Saying, As Jackie Moon. What ELE. ELE. What does it mean? Everybody love everybody, everybody. everybody. Come on. Yeah. What do you yeah. call those? Acronym? Uh, yeah. Sure. Acronym. Would it be? Yeah. Yeah. yeah ELE is an acronym. acronym. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like tomato, tomato. That's No, that's just that's just a word. Yeah. But uh, That's not even really a synonym. No. You know, that's it's not? How do you say it? Well, no, because it's How do you say it? Well, it's the same thing. Tomato. I say tomato. No, no you, you don't. don't. Yes, no, you don't. What do you say? Tomato? Yeah, he says tomato. Yeah. You, see it. you guys don't. Tomato. You wouldn't get it. Pack, we both live in Ohio. What's you ketchup made it. out of? Ketchup tomato. Made of tomatoes. A lot of them mashed Should up. You say bagel or, or bagel? Bagel. <laughs> okay. You're an asshole. <laughs> yeah, I like this. <laughs> I'm excited for you. You know what side I'm going to fall? Milk? No, I, I will not jump on that okay. train. I will not. I, 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 I want to punch those kids when I when I was a kid. <laughs> if I see a kid, he's calling, "Hey, where's the milk?" I'm sorry, bud. We're not. We can't. I'm not. Get out of my here. fucking house, here. Junior. I can't stay here. <laughs> sorry, bud. Yeah, you're right. What were you saying, Diggs? I'm sorry. I say that unfortunately. You but, say, uh, say milk. Yeah, go grab me the milk. Pillow. No, you just said it. You, just, you said it okay. Okay, then okay. Go grab me what? Pillow. What was the other thing? Milk. M- Okay, See, he sorry. did. He, yeah, I used little, to live with him. He used to drive me crazy. I'm like, it's milk. milk, dude. Milk. You say M A M E L K, don't you? Yeah. Uh, not purposely. Milk. No. Just how I was born and raised. AJ, do your kids drink milk? Oh, yeah. Whole milk. Okay. You have to. You yeah. force them to, right? Like, you make them, if they don't drink one before you get bed, big and they're strong. not allowed to go to bed. No, mm-hmm. I don't, but I do pump them up and tell them, geez, man, I can see you're already getting more jacked than you've drank that milk. You yeah. all, that, all that milk, right? Yeah. yeah. All that milk. I see, man, your shoulder capsules are already starting. I can see you're getting <laughs> oh, jacked, man. Shit. I tell them, I pump in. And then when they read the books, man, 
you know, like when you do push ups and stuff, like your muscles are jacked, your brain is getting so strong right now. Do you have the, it, man. Do you have the yeah. bottle of Hershey's syrup? So if they want like a nice little treat of like chocolate milk yep. before bed, uh, mm-hmm. it's actually in their bed. You're seeing the little giant. They wake up and you think it's, Dad, Dad, don't worry, it's not turds. It's just Hershey syrup <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, I'd rather oh, be nice. turds than all over here. Do you ever see the little giants? Yeah. yeah. Goat's milk on the hamstrings? Spike's dad, yeah. He used to rub his hamstrings. Yeah, Luke Fickle says that he always, he still will text me that about <laughs> better get some goat's milk for the hamstrings. Is that, <laughs> yeah, he is that what you do with your that. kids? No. Pac, you're going to have to coach against him In when what? June goes against fucking yeah. uh, Axel. How's that going to go? <laughs> I can't. You got a five year old, right? You got, yeah. I see him as fast as lightning. We're not, we're not competing with any of that. You, Axel's not running five? track. I, he, he'll be six in uh, a couple days. We might have to put them on the same team. Oh, okay? sure. I mean, Why they're both against we, each other. We're in the same sweet. state. Shit, bro. I, it, my and my youngest too. He's he's a head hunter. He's yeah. He, he's a little like he's, he's just, a wedge buster. He's just a Neanderthal. Like yeah. he's the youngest, so he's just crazy. That's the so. same thing with Junior. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's the problem is that that you know twenty thirty five state championship is going to be <laughs> quite a battle. Can you think about that, both of you guys on lacrosse a con? Man, I know you're a big lacrosse guy. All my oh kids yeah, are that's right. Lacrosse now. They it's they fun. love lacrosse. Yeah, it's, it's a fun. fun. It's fun. It's great. It's fun to watch. But come on, that's a dying sport, AJ. I, I don't doing? think it's dying, but I don't think it's going to. The TV watching aspect, I don't think it's is going to blow up eventually. You sure? Yeah. Because the PLL draft was on ESPN Plus last Boom. night. How about that? I missed yeah. it. Yeah, it was. I, I missed it, too. Paul Rabel's cousin. Did Paul Rabel announce every single pick. Did he go number one? Who? Who? Paul Rabel? Yeah. No, he is a retired PLL legend, my friend Tony. <laughs> yeah. He is the Wayne Gretzky I think my of sti- the PLL. I think the sticks we have say Rabel on it. What? Yeah, they, he has his own brand. He has his own. So uh, he's like, he's the cock of the walk when it comes to lacrosse? Yes, he is the guy that made the PLL. Lacrosse is. is the sport. Mm-hmm. That's the sport. Stick and ball. Uh, Any black. Air. Players in the sport. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right, one of the best players in PLL is Bach. That the kid from Boston? No, he's a kid from Duke. Duke, unbelievable. Do you know what it is? Like the stick and the little basket up top, and you fire the balls around. This is what I'm saying. I have no idea. This number. What's cool is that they can they can blast each other's stick, and they can they can check and knock each other down. Like do you, yeah, the you kid has a, a kid's running like this. There's three kids chopping as hard as they can at the stick to try to get the ball to fall out. They Why? got pro team in this. Yeah, that's there, what yeah, the PLL, that's PLL is. I guess. See, that's the problem. There's no. Like, it's just really getting like the PLL is exactly. just getting started now. They had like individual. They had two pro leagues, and then they finally were just like, all right, fuck it. If we want this thing to be successful, we got to join them together. Okay. And so that now they have the PLL, and now they have two or three rounds, I think, in the draft. And there's only like eight or ten teams right now. I don't know if I can add that. I got so much. He got so much shit. I don't know. No, Football, don't don't track, basketball. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. It's golf. very new, too. Oh, yeah, too. golfing. Yeah. No, you don't need. We only did That's it because. That's what Junie's doing. We like, wanted to a do, lot of travel. We're pushing away from baseball into lacrosse. Okay. Yeah. In my oh, that makes sense. So. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Yeah, we had to. We it, had to. It's Look incredibly oh. new to the Midwest. Oh. Yeah, my uh, my buddies, my my son's little buddy scored a behind the back goal this weekend. Really? Uh, Was it on Sports Center? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So, so this is the I believe this is the Canons, we'll the Boston Can. That that's one of the Thompson brothers right there. Unbelievable yeah. Native American. It's he went to it's Albany. Cool game, but like, do you see dog. it ever picking up on TV? No. Oh no way. It's lacrosse is either you're either all in and this is it, or you don't even know. About I will watch it, right? all of the college lacrosse tournament. Yes. Like I don't know really? why that I'll watch, college. but not the. PLS. I was watching, uh, Sunday, I think I was watching. Uh, we we're flipping around, and Virginia Notre Dame lacrosse came on, and they were playing in Notre Dame, and it was it was snowing. So I'm like, okay, this is a little. It's a replay. It's old. They had Marcus Freeman in the booth at a Notre Dame lacrosse game talking, and I texted him. I saw him at the Derby for a while, and I was like, man, I know this is like on a delay, but do you ever get a second to breathe? Like no matter what, if you're the yeah. head coach of Notre Dame, you're. And he was at the Derby. He was there working because NBC does it. Oh, so he's yeah. like doing all the. He's Interviews. all over the place. Well, he's too. finally got a quarterback. So that's yeah. I know that's what I hear. He's right? Probably mm-hmm. jacked Who is up. It? Uh, transfer from Wake. Why can I not think of his name? Hart Hartwell. Hart, Hart? Sam Hartman. So Hartman. Yeah. Sam Hartman. Yeah. And like I. Well, Notre Dame lacrosse is huge as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they were ranked like good. one and three in the, in the country, I believe, at the time. Yeah, and they go from February till Memorial Day weekend, so it really is kind it of a long snowing. season. It was snowing. It looked brutal. Yeah, well, that, and the problem, like you just said, people aren't going to watch it because think about when it's coming on. Like, they just had their draft during the NBA and NHL finals. Like, if they want a chance, they have to do their season in July and maybe <laughs> – yeah. Till halfway through August, when they're just competing against baseball, because then maybe people will watch. Yeah, against baseball, I would see. But you know, we've gone 54 minutes, Con. I did this on purpose. Why is that? Why is that? There's a couple. There's basketball last night, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. There was basketball Con? last night. I I happened to watch. <laughs> did you watch? Watch the games. Yes. So all it says on here that this sheet that you put together, which I give you credit, even though you put it way down the list, yeah. it's down at J. 
which is a bit shocking. I put it after all of the football. Okay. All right. I believe you. But it says <laughs> Sixers dominate Celtics, mm -hmm. which you didn't even put a score. Why not? Uh, it was 115 to 102. Yeah, Joel Embiid put on a clinic, didn't he? Hustle. He gets the hustle the signature play, makes a swat. But how? Oh, yeah. Watching James Harden play too for me, it's I don't know why it's so fun to watch that dude like mosey about the court. Just how he, it, what is it? It's so, it just I looks guess, easy. Like, it's you like can't effortless. He just so like start, stop, start. He knows oh. how to get to his yeah. spots. Yeah, and like he knows how to use his body. He's not scared to take impossible shots well, either. Like these can, fadeaways and different shots these dudes take back, I, they're so good. He's and, and this series, he's been really good. You know, we was talking early on. During the year, he was playing really unselfish, passing the ball a lot. Um, but he's had to score um, these last couple of series to get over the hump. But they look real good right now. MB looked like shit the last game. I mean, the game before this one, mm -hmm. he looked like MB, back then MB, getting over, getting the MVP for the um, NBA. But yeah, um, is it over with? Mm. What do you think? Uh, no. uh, so this What's is what up? I, Sixers I, up three two, right? I personally do think that there is a very small chance that the Celtics can push. This Celtics to just seven. can't shoot, right? This series. Is that, that what's yeah, going on? Yesterday was probably the worst game I've seen them yeah. play in the last three years. Not even being like having an exaggeration. They've been so good. I mean, two years ago, conference finals. Last year, finals. Uh, yet yesterday was terrible. It was really just a poor shooting night. Poor or, or shooting. In poor general. defense. I watched a good amount, but man, I feel like they just. The Sixers just out hustle people. Almost, exactly, it seems they, like right. They just beat the fuck out of the yeah. Celtics. They really did, and the score doesn't reflect how much of a blood it was because our bench players came in, they hit like three threes. But Embiid, he did his thing. Tyrese Maxey yeah. had thirty yes. points. He could not miss. There was one time <laughs> I think we were down by nine, kind of making a run, get a few stops, Maxey three. Yeah, like, it, yeah he, he, he made one with like eight and a half minutes left or something. Mm -hmm. that yeah. felt like the a crowd. dagger almost. Yeah, yeah it was shush huge. the crowd, did the entire thing. Uh, the other thing, kind of storyline that we're not talking about, Doc Rivers, he's the last coach to win a championship Ooh. with the Celtics. He's the coach of the Sixers. He kind of he, – he's unbelievable, and he kind of might understand how to beat us finally because we, we have had their number, and this series has just been different. Like James Harden, as you guys said, that game one he had was unbelievable. And then Embiid, yesterday it, it got to the point last night where every single time Embiid touched the ball, I was like, okay, they're going to score. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter what – he's either going to get fouled or he's going to score. And then they he had, I don't know, six offensive rebounds. Like – they beat the absolute <laughs> shit out of the Celtics, but there is a small chance because this is what happened last year in the Eastern semis. We lost the Bucks game five at home, mm -hmm. go on the road and win game six, win game seven back at home. And to Grant Hill's point, this is what Grant Hill said. Your stars kind of have to win you the road games. And that's what MB did last night. Mm -hmm. Last year in game six against the Bucks, I think Jason Tatum had 44 points. He won that road game for the Celtics. So it really just boils down to if our, our, our star is going to be our stars. And Tatum had 36 last night, played unbelievable. Just slow start, hasn't he been having? Yeah. Had a slow start. Wait, he, he had really, 36, though. You're, that's all right. He, he had no he recovered help. well. Yeah, he, he had no help. Al, Al Horford, who claimed he – or didn't claim he has been an elite shooter the entire year. He shoots in the 40% from three. He was 0 for 8 last night. Mm, like yeah, they, no. they just really haven't clicked. And Jalen Brown had 24 points. It's not like he played bad. But they both probably have to go and do like what Booker and Duran are doing. They both have to go and score 35 points if we want to win. The thing about it, to win. Only ah. thing, Con, the 76ers, they choked and did the same shit last year. Oh, yeah, exactly. Losing. So yeah. it's a possibility. Yeah, I don't. It feels different right now for them. Get them to a game seven. Yeah, it does. It, but one one bad loss could change the narrative for Philly, though. Yeah, it just has a different. This Celtics team just has a different vibe. Like, there's been a lot of drama with Jalen Brown all year about how the Celtics don't want him. Mm -hmm. And if the Celtics do lose to Philly in six games, seven games, there is a massive chance they blow this up. That's how the Warriors feel, too. Well, yeah, now, yeah now, that era is over with. Now everyone's it, saying it, it, it'll too. be over with tonight. Like all year, you know, Joe, Joe Mazzella was the coach of the year. Yeah. And then now they, you know, they get down and everyone's like, Jesus, this guy is so far in over his head. He doesn't know how to coach against Doc Rivers. So it's like, it, it will be interesting if they do lose. Like you really could see them kind of not really hitting the restart button, but, but a lot of shit is going to change. Yeah. Like which is crazy because they're so young. Yeah. And, the, and they'll get a great return for Jalen Brown. Like they were talking about the Nets wanting to do a trade with the Celtics for Durant for Jalen Brown. Or not just those two, but. Jalen and picks, but 
Uh, in the end, I really just think whether Joe, whether Coach, you know, is being out coached by Doc, he can't put the fucking ball in the hoop. The the biggest <laughs> thing with him was at the end of game three of overtime, there was like 12 seconds left. We're down by one. Instead of calling timeout, you let him go. Just yeah. let him play. And then the clock runs out. They don't even get a shot up before the buzzer. Yeah. What so. was the bigger, speaking of putting the ball in the net, what yeah. was the bigger loss last night? The Celtics or the River Hounds beating the fucking New England Revolution? Uh, yeah, the Isn't Pittsburgh, that, uh, the Pittsburgh River Hounds. River Hounds beating the New England Revolution in the MLS America's Cup, I believe. MLS America's Cup midseason tournament. Was, oh, they get a midseason tournament too? Did yeah. They, the NBA is copying off of them? It was, yeah, yeah it, it was absolutely devastating. But then, you know, score 10 nothing? 1 0. Uh, oh, it's a real barn burner. Yeah. yeah. Well, guess KG what? KG 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 I was saved, however, because the uh, Plum Boys high school baseball team won the yeah, sectional championship eight. last night. Go wow. Yeah, go roll stank, baby. Us. Good for uh, Unbelievable. <laughs> I've never been more proud to be an alumni roll from that school. Stangs. Roll stain. That's like our 15th, 20th straight section title. It's not big no big deal. No big deal. deal. That's all. You get the home run record, don't you, Diggs? Nah, no. Plum? No. No, yeah, I, I do. I have oh, the record, yeah, I have the record for fastest yeah. pop time. Yeah. Yeah. Fastest what? Pop, pop time. Pop time. Pop time is in what? Dick should have won Jason states. Kendall. They were almost undefeated. And what? Pop time. In baseball. You play third? No, catcher. catcher. Pop, pop time, pal. Ca- pop time. Tell me pop time again. It's okay. As a catcher. From the Benito time. Benito Sandiago is my favorite players ever. Tony, why don't you show him? From the time you fucking catch it, pops your mitt, oh. to the time it pops the glove at second base, the and guy's trying to run. You got the record. Yeah, fastest, fastest, fastest pop time. Fast pop Wait, time in state. One, fastest one five six In PA. But is it accurate though? Yeah. What do you mean? How far away the base? I don't know. You're stopwatch. You tell me. No, no, I mean, your throw accurate. Yeah, oh, I don't yeah. care about your pop. Be on you the don't fucking put it right bag. there. Okay, yeah. the throw has to be on, be on the corner the of the bag. Okay, as long are you as questioning Coach Diggs's is this stop your time? There's one thing I I am proud of in my life, and it's the fucking pop time. I bet your pop time is even faster right now. Could have been. Wait, was your dad the coach? No, no, he's coach of all things. No, but he grew up watching Jason Kendo at the fastest exactly. pop time in the big. <laughs> no, so. Benito Santiago, that's not the fastest pop time. We all know. Changed the game. He threw people out from his knees. No one did that. Never even heard of him. Yeah, I know you have. Jason Veritek might have not had the fastest pop time, but he had the fastest pop to FaceTime. Fucking oh, is that with A Rod? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Pushed him in the face, and then boom. Yeah, yeah, because A Rod was is talking that, when that trash. Went down? No, 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 that was before that. A Rod was not on the Yankees when uh, Zim. When did Zim go down? Plunge. What year was that? Two thousand three. Yeah, it might have been like two thousand three. Oh three, oh four. Okay. Yeah, and what are you doing charging Pedro Martinez? I mean, the guy's the biggest dog in the history of the MLB. I'm not charging him. Also. Jokic, another triple double, huh? But yeah, he's the absurd. Suns. He yeah, he's a third, three, two the before the game. Yep. D- did you see something where they? Well, that, was, that was pretty cool. I thought it was yeah. funny. Yeah, oh, it was great. They got you twenty five thousand. Yeah, here it is. It's hilarious. Yeah, and he goes in there during. Mount Tucker hug. next to him. Yeah. Oh wow, that is. Awesome. Oh yeah, he's KK. Yeah, Ishbo bought and brought Mel Tucker, head football coach from Michigan State. Right, go green, heavy. Yep, go white. Oh, I can't say that. Boy, oh boy. Oh, yeah, uh, we were talking to. I was overpaid. talking to Tony about this before the show. It would be awesome if we had Sixers Nuggets in the finals, and it was the two Giants going up yeah. against each other, Jokic yeah. and Embiid. That'd be old school. Yeah, because both because be. both sides. If it if the Nuggets go on to win, the Lakers really don't have a center that can guard. Mm. You know, the Nicole. Lakers are winning. But again, but winning one. Uh, I agree. Hold on, Pac Man. Uh, the, the the Lakers don't have a center that can guard Jokic, and the Heat don't have a center that can guard what, Embiid. Can oh, anybody so guard Jokic? Anthony guard Davis Jokic? is the best yeah. defensive player in the NBA, right? At least through the fucking playoffs. Right? Okay, absolutely. Nikola Jokic is averaging like 35, 15, and 10. So I, whether AD is good or not, Jokic is going to get his. I mean, we can pull up his numbers from the playoffs. It is absurd if you look at his Pac, game. I'm starting log. to worry that you can't think clearly when we talk about the Lakers. I'm, what do you mean? Have y'all He's not emotionally been watching? You're saying? It, I am very, very emotional. We're gonna invested. win this game tonight. I, I just need oh, Lenny Walker to attack. Yep. Attack. What they, give, they give the Warriors? Set, they're seven point favorites though. Because they're playing at home. Everyone everybody. assumes because they, Diggs assumed earlier too. And because said we lost, Lakers are resting stars. We lost mm-hmm. to Memphis. What by fifty? Shit. Yeah, but game five. Yeah, game five points or something. You think? But like I was telling Khan, like. This is not one of them those series. Once you got these guys down, you got to go and put these guys down. Yes, they yeah, do. This is not a team where you is not let them get hot tonight. Yeah, are there Lakers sitting LeBron tonight for Game Five? Or yeah, that's what I'm, that's what Greeny is calling for. Yeah, Didn't they? Greeny is Greeny is thinking not as an athlete, as a fan. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Ab- absolutely, and that's just foolish. I'll um, tell you who doesn't want uh, 76ers Nuggets, and that's the NBA because those ratings would absolutely oh, yeah. stink. That's what I was going to mm-hmm. Is that the – what possible matchups could we get? What they want Lakers. They, want the, yeah. they need Celtics. Lakers, Lakers, Celtics, I mean, they're going <clears> to <throat> – 
And they I think, can't manipulate exactly what to do with that no. is their dream. They, no, need, oh, yeah. they need Celtics. Actually, probably <laughs> best case scenario from the East for the NBA is Celtics. Sixers. If it was uh, Sixers, Denver in the finals, would cool Honestly, like we're saying, but anyone they from they the West, but they're, they're, anyone from the West, but but Denver. Denver. Which they're is probably, crazy because he's a two-time MVP there. True. Like, yeah. yeah. Which is weird. No, but, it doesn't make sense. No, I mean, and to your question, can anyone stop uh, Jokic? We'll see who gets out of the East. There's one guy to call, and he currently is not on an NBA roster. Bill Lambeer? Hold on. Well, that'd be sick, but uh, Luca Garza is the one oh, man who. Yeah, Iowa stud. He's right. well, he is the one. Is he yeah. eligible? He's the G League guy, right? No, I don't know. He's an Iowa athlete, so he's probably cooking the books. He was not doing that. Whoa. A lot of guys are, but he was not doing Did that. They, you might want to. Did you send an email or something and tell him to he sign knows. this guy up? He knows. Luca Garza. Luca yeah. Garza. Okay. One of the greatest players in the he's history. He's averaging 30, 30, and 30 in the G League. I is that want to get the call up if you're averaging 30, 30, 30. 30. 30. Well, he does, but he goes up, and then they're like, actually, you know what? Sit your ass on the bench. Carl Anthony Towns is going to play even though he's got four fouls in the first quarter. Okay? It's it's ridiculous. Both. It's all part of the path, though. It's all part of his journey, right? Mm-hmm. I hope so. How many years has he been out of college? Uh, two. Okay. That's he's, not still got time. he's got plenty of time. He's yeah. just This is part all part of the journey, man. Yeah, is it? Because if he doesn't fucking get a chance somewhere, he's going to be playing in fucking Lithuania in yeah, a couple so? years. Okay. Beautiful over there, I hear. What's wrong with that, though? The, uh, there's make nothing, 500 there's K nothing wrong with that other than this guy will be fucking first team all NBA if someone gives him a shot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. you like to watch his games and not to stream him at 4 a.m. Exactly, yeah, and I will. Good. I'll have to. We I won't know. have a choice. You have been. Didn't you get that G League package Duh. on your YouTube TV? Yeah. yeah. I, I, you know how many fucking uh, Iowa Wolves games I went to? What sport is that? That's AJ. G League. That's the fucking team he plays oh, on, pal. Wait, I, wait, does he really play in the Iowa G League <laughs> yeah, team? Yeah. yeah. I didn't know Iowa had That's the Minnesota Yeah, the team. Iowa Wolves, dude. Formerly the I fucking Iowa Energy. Attention. You were oh confused them with the Barnstormers. I was yeah. confused there, too, Ty. I mean, yeah, I thought confused. Ty said that he played with the Lakers G League. Yeah, that's what I thought. No, 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 no. I'm saying whoever makes it to the finals will we'll call. We'll get a call. Yeah. Secret weapon is mm-hmm. hiding in the G League. Exactly. Like they used to try to hide people like on practice squad. Maybe. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. IR. Precisely. In maybe football. he can stop Jokic. That, that's mm-hmm. the only right. I'm, I'm looking see. forward to see us. If that happens, mm-hmm. it'll be fun. We're going to call him we'll this clip from the G League. Exactly. Yeah, Lakers should use him. They should. That, that's what they need. No way in hell. Kind of like Zubak. They should have never got rid of him. Boom. If Rob Palenka has a brain. Is that from the Adam Sandler movie? Zubak? No. What's that big guy's name in the Adam Sandler? Zvakaitis? No. No, that's from... Uh, I haven't seen oh, that. You're Cruz. Don't mess with the Zohan? No. <laughs> oh, maybe, actually. Yeah, I don't think that's the one, but there's a talking about basketball Bo Cruz. movie. Right? Yeah, Bo right. Cruz. Bo Cruz. Bo Cruz. Okay, I didn't watch the movie. Is it good? Uh, okay, that's all yeah. I need to hear. That's all I need I'm to a big fan of the movie. I now, love the Sandman. I, thought, you, I, don't like, I don't care about... I don't... I'm not seeking Sandman doing serious roles, though. No, no. It is it is a serious ro- ro- role for sure. Uh, Bo Cruz, I thought you were going to ask, is he a good basketball player? The movie's great. <laughs> He's Bo- not a great player? Unfortunately, Bo Cruz was acting in it. He's like nine feet tall, right? Due to the fact. No, I think he's only like 6'9". I mean, that's pretty tall. There's not many actors 6'9", so you, no. you had a small group you could choose from. Couldn't People you? weren't yeah. watching Hustle to see fucking <laughs> Bo Cruz, okay? They yeah. came to watch the Sandman and Queen Latifah's chemistry on screen. Yeah. Which Wait, was, is that his wife? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And He's married to Queen Latifah? In the movie. Yeah, I didn't know. No, no. <laughs> Did you know that, movie. Pack? In the movie? The yeah, Sandman's married movie. to Queen Latifah? Yeah, yeah. Movie. Good for her. And I'm Kermit Willis. People were also there to see Kermit Willis, right. who was... Which one is that? He, Anthony Edwards. <laughs> oh, he, that's he, his name. In the, yeah. He, it, I hear he's great, though. He's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, but they he's have... A player. Yeah, they have a lot of soft people on their team, apparently, is what they say about the Timberwolves. Not oh, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. say that. Mm. With that being said, guys, we're going to take a quick five here. You know we have Rupper coming up at 120. Oh, that's right now. About 12 minutes, Mike Rupper will be here at 205, guys. Guys, Jack Carr. Oh, let's oh, go. Yeah. What? Don't get caught down range, Diggs. No, I never Jack would. Carr will be here promoting another book that I put out somewhere. Right here. Only the ABC. dead, baby. Only, Only the, the dead. dead. Oh, Can't you wait. see it. Look at that. Perfect framing right there for you, Zeke. All right, we'll, we'll come back here with Mike Rupp here at 120. There's plenty of other stuff going on, too. I know what? Devin Booker's killing it. Yep. Georgia football. I don't know. They're not going to the White House. Who knows? Kirby Smart hadn't said much cool. about it. Thank we'll you. talk about that here in a little bit. Come on back. Hell yeah, Red yes. Panda. It is yes. time to go on up to the unicycle yes. that has captivated people all over this planet Earth. Oh, my yes. God. Ladies oh, and God. gentlemen, Red Panda is explosive. You will never see someone with this kind of stability and balance in all your life. Been an absolute game changer for the last 30 plus years. 
brings her A game every single time she comes on the court or multi-purpose field. And two simple. And look at her go. Completion to Red Panda. He's in the trenches. He's got his eyes on the prize. The okay. ball is going on the head okay. of Red Panda. Two oh, balls go, completed AQ. from AQ Shipley. <laughs> this is nuts. Are you serious? Fuck. This is AQ a can hold more than two players. Two balls. No way. I absolutely love this song. Oh my god! There we go, Red Panda! One for one! If Red Panda goes perfect on a day, we'll give away $50,000. One person who retweets this video and says something nice to somebody. Red Panda, the legend, performing during the first round at the Thunderdome. She's one for one on both tosses from her right foot to her head. Come on. Oh my god. No way. Two? No. Red Panda Two? stacking Slide. two bowls on top of each other and... Oh, oh, she, did it! she did it! Red Panda! Oh. She's batting and pitching a perfect game! There's no way this should be humanly possible. Nope. No. But what is impossible? It's I'm possible. Yes. Whoa. And whenever you're talking about Red Panda, you're talking about the biggest I'm in the history of I'm possible. Yes. What Hell she yeah. does every single night is not supposed to happen. Uh -uh. There's no way you're supposed to be able to accomplish this. No feat. way. No. AJ Hawk, what you say? How many people can do this? None. Just Red Panda. Five bowls. <laughs> Red Panda take a bow. Hell yeah. Wow. That was awesome. Hey, well. How'd you choose college coaching? I was coaching on the backside of the desert for a long time. I started off with youth football. We have one of the biggest uh, programs in the country with ages five all the way to 14 and several teams of each age group. Name was Truth. Trust in God, respect myself and others. Understand I have unlimited possibilities. Try my best, never give up, and honor the truth in his creed at all times. Oh, that that's a good one. And we took the whole state of Texas and we went and played all around the country. That's what I was doing for a decade. Then I got into high school football. Then after high school, I'm just sitting there, all the kids about to go, you know, Shiloh, Bucky had graduated from SMU, Shiloh was at uh, South Carolina, and Shador was getting ready to go play for Coach Taggart. You know, I started getting the call, so I'm sorry, right? You know, let me really consider that. So I interviewed on a couple of interviews and knocked him out of the park, but it wasn't the time. <laughs> And I accepted the, the Jackson State challenge. It's a tremendous challenge. It's a tremendous challenge because I had never been to Jackson. I'm like, HBCU, I don't really know a lot about it. Let me do my homework. And I accepted the challenge. Then Shador said, you know what, Daddy, I'm riding with you. And Shallow like, Daddy, I'm riding with you. So now I got both my sons there and the mother son doing all those social media. And it just became a, a wonderful thing. And being able to grab those guys, you know, when the Bible says you're riding that staff, they come from me. Without the guys around you, you're not going to be confident. So I learned to put some pretty good guys around me, just like when I returned part. If I didn't have 10 dogs in front of me blocking their butts off. I wasn't going to be proud. So I've learned to always keep some dogs around me to make sure I can go do what I'm blessed to do. And that's the formula of coaching, man. Just having some good coaches around you. That, and we're not friends of the kids. You know, everybody talking about these kids are different. The kids ain't no different. Their coaches have changed. Kids ain't no different. They the same old kids. Coaches have changed. Quit pacifying these kids and they want discipline, man. They want structure. They want to be told what to do and where to go and how to do it. Colorado was the biggest job, biggest offer. Why? No, 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 no. Colorado was the best job and the perfect job for me because of Rick George, because of the AD, because of his spirit and, and, and what he spoke to me. He touched me, man. I was offered more money, of course, but money don't move me. Connectivity and the spirit and, and being in the right place and doing the right thing, that's what moves me and motivates me. If money was it, Shoot, I, I, I'd have lost this a long time. You don't come to work because of the money. You come to work because you love doing what you're doing and the money seems to follow you. That's been my formula. I've sat in all three seats. I've been the kid on the couch. I've been the parent right next to the kid on the couch. Now I'm on the other side and the coach that you're talking to. So it's not nothing that I don't understand about this process. You want it prime, you, that's what you're going to get. I don't know how to dress it up and flip it no other way. i got to be me. i got to be me un unapologetically. I'm going to be me. Hey, we have issues with that with some companies because of that. I see You've run yes. into that case as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right back out of the door. They should have Googled me, did your homework, and asked a few questions because I'm going to be me. Hey. Why? Let's go. This
show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Fuck, fuck, then fuck. We are back, the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk, sitting in for Pat today as he continues to take care of his beautiful little baby girl, Mackenzie, with his wife, Sam. Mr. Ohio! Okay, there we go, here we go. I'm trying to get my ears all situated, too, during that break, guys. It's good It's good hanging out in between the break. I don't, I don't get to see you guys enough. Man. I know, it's I crazy. I hear about what's going on in your guys' lives. We've got Rupper coming up here in, what, five minutes. What happened in hockey so far that I don't know about? Con, fill me in. Uh, if right, I'm a so casual hockey guy. Carolina game. beat the dog shit out of the Devils. They are up 3-1. to one. Yep. The Dallas Stars beat the dog shit out of the Kraken. They're what? tied 2-2. Two, what was two. the score? I think it was 6-2. to two. Yes, uh, that's a big score. Yeah, and I think yeah. it was five to one or six to one Carolina over the Devils last night. I mean, it, it, it was a absolute shit. Couple blowouts. Yeah, huge blowouts couple, tonight. We got blowouts. Panthers who are up. Is that how we say blowout now? Well, if you're yeah. from Canada, you'd say Con- blowout. Blowout. If we're talking hockey, we'll ask Grupper. Yeah, he, well, he has, he's from Ohio, but it's still kind of his Canadian accent. It he, gets in there. He misses. He mixes in Russian too when he's drinking vodka. But yep. uh, Panthers are up three zero on Toronto. That series, uh, a lot of people are thinking it's all but done. We'll see what kind of gourds the Maple Leafs are working with okay. over there. And then okay. tonight at nine thirty, tie the, the game. game. The game of the night, Stoner? the game of the week. Yeah, Stoner, Jackie Aces, and all the boys. Traveled to fucking Edmonton to take on the Oilers after an absolute piss pounding two nights ago. <laughs> it was ridiculous. It Beat was. the shit out of Jackie Ace. Jackie Ace was flying pounding. around. Yeah. Wait, Jackie, who had the crazy back injury? That is, is that Stoner? That's Stoner. 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 Yeah. Back was a I mean, slinky. That, is he the toughest guy on the planet? Yeah. Uh, like, from to, what it sounds like, and I, I see his answer history. answer your question kind of just very efficiently, yes. Okay. He okay. is. Yeah. And he came back and had a big impact, didn't he? From that yeah, back? I'd say, I don't know, or fucking three points. Is that pretty good? Oh, um, oh. Couple apples. Me. Couple apples. Apples, maybe. I don't know. Goal here or there. Blah, blah. It yeah, was, it blow, was an absolute blow. 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 I, can't, blow. I, I can't say that. <laughs> yeah, it was a blow. And the Golden Knights are absolutely rolling. But once again, we cannot forget there's a man named McJesus who plays mm-hmm. for the other team who is possibly the greatest hockey Connor player McDavid. ever. Connor McDavid. Yeah. Hot take Edmonton's alert. A- he might not even be the fucking best guy on his team. Ooh. Who? Who, would you, who on his fucking team is Dreisaitl. Fucking Leon Dreisaitl. Uh, God, that guy's name is amazing. Every time I hear his name. He is I'm unbelievable. Impressed. It's very hard to get a grip on this series because every fucking game has been a blowout. Yeah. So, um, it's tough. Basically, you know? who, whichever boys show up to play, they're going to blow out the opponents big time. Yeah. And, um, That's we'll crop. Just, Why aren't they close? It's major it's, crop. It is crop. Uh, the whole second round. Don't really. these guys love eating like peanut butter and jam sandwiches, though? Usually peanut butter pre-game? and jam. Well, Intermission. It, it, jam, guys. It, Nick Nick knows, um, you know, in the hockey world, like you, know, you, lot, you have to have a little bit of grit, a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of jam to well uh, to kind of show that you're a team that can go on What's and What's the sandpaper for? Is that just like it? It's grit. For it's grit. Grit. For grit. Sandpaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's jam. It's tough. All, it's hard. It's, yeah. it's, you know, a lot Glass of friction. Uh-huh. Launch pail. How it's, mad do you think actual Canadians get if they watch this show? No, no, and no. They hear these no, accents. Gumpy told me he loves this, and he said they that love it. Ed- Edmonton's one of the toughest barns uh, in, in Canada and probably the most beautiful city in Canada. Yeah, and Ty has said multiple times that plenty of people from Saskatoon or Manitoba, <laughs> yep. they've reached out and said, hey, thank you for yeah. kind Why of is it so funny to hear you guys do it? <laughs> Why is it funny to do the accent, you think? I don't know. Probably just because it's one of the greater accents of all time, and when we talk hockey, that's the only time we do it. So we can yeah. do it. So yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you can use like, the lingo and stuff yeah right it, it, and stoner is canadian so it's it's from a place of love i'm not shitting on canadians you know unless like, he plays like a fucking boot yeah if he then, plays like a boot you know then that's then one thing but it's a boot time he leaves and then it's a boot time he leaves is right so much to learn for people that don't watch hockey that much rupp will yeah. tell you you go in the locker room you know how many oats and a boats you're getting <laughs> oats, yeah. in the nhl <laughs> so many is oats good or boat? No, it's just like, hey, you need to oats. get out of here like, right now. Yeah. For the word out. Listen, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Like, this, yeah. that kind Bingo. of stuff. What was the clip we, that was in the in the group uh, chat where um, the coach, who was mic'd up? Yes, the, the coach of the Panthers. What was his name again? Paul Maurice. I love that there guy. I, I should know more about him. I love his style of coaching. His yeah, guys yeah. have to love. He seems genuinely juiced for his dudes. Oh, yeah. 
Is that how Nick? Is he like one of the? Where do? You, what's his history? So he used to be a coach of the Leafs way back in the day. So oh. this is a nice bit of revenge for him. And then uh, he's coached oh. Winnipeg for the past couple seasons. Uh, got out of there and then took over the Florida squad, who, as we know, won the President's Trophy last year. They kind of remade their team in the off season with grit, sandpaper, jam. Made some trades much harder to play against, much more physical. Uh -huh. So yeah. now Paul has him running around. Uh, banging into the boards and you know tough four check. They really get on the puck. They hunt pucks. You know they're a good squad. Yeah. I I love the dude. Just from the little clip I have seen of him coaching during a game, he seemed like a mix of a guy that can hold dudes accountable, like old school tough guy, but also like I fuck with their players. Yeah, a little like bit. mess with them. Like yeah. very good in a game situation. Do you watch that clip at all, yeah, Pat? Yeah. Didn't he seem like I don't know more more coaches? He seemed very confident in himself, which is all I care about. <laughs> yeah. It, he looked like a player coach, but he give you that. He make you want to run through a glass wall. Yeah, I, yeah. I say that. Hell like he can probably lead you to think that water you can walk. Yeah, on. you can do anything. Yeah. And hockey's the only sport. And I mean, out of all the sports in the United States, lacrosse included, hockey is the only one where the bottom seed can go on and actually win the whole thing. Like it happened with the Kings. They just play out of their mind. Yeah, they just get hot. Get and hot. That's hot. Hot. The goalie's goal got to stand on his head. Right? That's true. That, that's he true. does that. We're good. But if they get hoot at the right time. If they get hoot. Speaking hoot. of that, speaking of hoot, here's somebody hoot. that I think, I'm sure females have been calling him hoot his whole life. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. This guy's like six foot eight, yep. 245 what? pounds. What? Absolutely About jocked. Food is the right. Right. Properly uh -huh. jocked. Yeah. Loves Very job. shredded. Loves Jom. Full of Jom. Stanley favorite, Cup written. champion, Stanley Cup hero, Mr. Mike Rupp. Yay, yeah, hey, Rupp! Hey. Rupp, what's That's happening, nice man? Action there, AJ. Hey, Thank you. I, I appreciate Thank it. Um, I, I'm just wondering with this whole hockey situation, everything going on right now, just tell me who's going to win the cup. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I know Ty Schmidt tells me Vegas and Stoner, and they're all, you know, they don't have ice or cement in their skates anymore. What do you think is going to happen? I mean, I, dude, it's wide open. I mean, I, I thought the Dallas Stars and the Toronto Maple Leafs would be the two teams that have got the kind of the uh, inside track, but Toronto's down fucking 0-3. Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they've got uh, an elimina elimination game tonight. So uh, Dallas had a good game last night, but, um, geez, when you're looking at it, man, it's, I mean, for a hot team, a wild card team, a team that got in in game 81 of 82, the Florida Panthers right now, the way they play and the tempo they play at, I mean, they could get that. It's wide open, dude. I don't know. I can't answer that, AJ, because I have no idea. You might have the lowest seed team um, or one of the lowest seed teams making it to the finals. Rob, I, I, I watched some of the draft lottery the other night. Was it two nights ago? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First off, okay. Why, okay. With the, with the lottery. So how many teams get put in the lottery? Do you know? So the, the, all, uh, so the 16 teams that don't make the playoffs, so 16 in, 16 out. And then they they changed the rules a little bit because, um, you know, well, they changed it for various reasons. They don't want tanking to happen. Mm -hmm. So they didn't just make it uh, a, a few years back. Like, they didn't make it where if you had the worst record, you automatically got the first pick. No. And we're going to have the lottery process, right? And also, uh, the New York Rangers a few years ago – you know, we're a pretty good team, well on their way in their rebuild, and they won the draft lottery because the old 16 that didn't make it were all in the draft lottery. Now they're like, no, 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 we're not going to do that anymore. I'm pretty sure, I might be wrong here, uh, I think there's 12 teams that are in, uh, maybe even less than that, that are actually in the lottery, but the maximum, uh, no, wait, so that'd be 11 mm -hmm. teams that, you're, that are in the lottery. You're, the maximum amount of spaces to move forward is 10. Right. So then where you finish is where your percentage is. So it'll go anywhere from, you know, whatever it is. Uh, it's like 20 percent of, you know, 18, uh, 15 percent and so on and so forth. And then some teams will have one point five percent chance of winning that first overall pick. But a huge, huge thing. Uh, I think a lot of teams did not actually position themselves uh, as far as tanking like we thought they would. But the Chicago Blackhawks are going to get a really special. Was there player. a doubt? Was there ever? It's Connor Bedard. You're right. It seems like he was the consensus number one. It was. It came down at the end between Chicago and Anaheim. And what's weird is they don't do like the grab the ball out of the spinny thing like the NBA does. They already had the pick. Yeah. They already knew it, and they just present us on TV of who the pick is. So how do we trust who that is, and how do they, <laughs> how do they make that Impossible. happen? Well, a lot of people don't trust it. Not a lot of people. The conspiracy theories uh, come out. You know, I mean, so we had a few years back where they had. They were actually giving the footage and doing the footage live of the ping pong balls. Mm -hmm. And then, geez, I, 
one of them was like dropped on the floor and then put back like and ever it threw everybody for a fucking tizzy oh here we go they greased up that ball or they did something you know like it, it just becomes this total side story of a of a conspiracy theory so you know they, they started doing this they have an outside party a third party you know this lottery firm that comes in and does this thing so it's done legit right that's what these people do okay um there was a little bit of a misread there's a little bit of mishap in production the other day and that all of a sudden everyone just starts going oh this is set up the league won in chicago to win it it's it's uh, kind of crazy that whole process, but um, oh, yeah. you know Stick I don't know. I think it's... <laughs> hey, I heard those. I, saw, I heard those Canadian accents earlier. Those are pretty. Yeah, what do you think That's of that, lot. Ruffer? Would, I, would the Canadian hockey players uh, in the locker room would they be upset at all the Canadian accents being thrown around this stage? Um, no, not at all. I think they're proud of it. I, I have a funny story. Um, Please. I have a funny story with a, a fellow Canadian, and, and God rest his soul, Steve Monador. Um, you know, a former teammate of mine, he, uh, he passed away a number of years ago. Great teammate. Um, I played with him in juniors and I remember we were playing. So in junior hockey, the maximum age you can be is 20 years old. Right. And that's like the equivalent of college basketball or college football. Like you can get drafted from college in hockey, or you can draft it pretty much, you know, junior hockey or, or whatever. So, uh, we're playing in, in Erie, Pennsylvania for the Erie Otters of the Ontario Hockey League. And that's the league in Canada, right? So uh, we're only one of the only two American cities. And so everyone, in, you know, a lot of these guys on the team that are 19, they could drink. They could drink up in Canada and Ontario because they're 19 years old. And that was the drinking yeah. age. Windsor. But in Erie, oh, yeah. like if we traded for a guy, he came to Erie to play. It's 21 because you're in the States now, right? Yeah. So we, we found a spot where we can get in and we can go and we can drink on the weekends or on our off days. And so we are there. And I remember this one time we're at the bar and Steve Monador was like, he was hilarious. But when he, you know, he's one of those guys when he drinks, he gets like very focused and he'll just like, he gets this intense stare and he just kind of like stumbling around like, dude, Mons, you got to chill out, dude. He looks like he's going to either fight somebody or he's like just scanning the whole whatever. Those are scary. Bobby Carver. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so Bob's dancing. these guys... <laughs> these guys are sitting there. These guys at the bar, these guys at the bar, they're sitting by us, and they're all Canadians. There's probably one or two Americans there. And these guys start fucking making fun of how everybody's talking. So these guys oh, are just, no. you know, they're drunk. It's closing time pretty much at the bar. And these guys are like real loud. It's a nice day, eh? Oh, what are you doing tomorrow, eh? Oh. Like and talking like they're making fun of Canadians. So we're sitting there, and Steve Monador turns to me. He goes, are you hear these fucking guys? I'm like, yeah, dude, whatever, dude. Let's just go. Like, you know, whatever. It's the end of the night. So we end up going outside, and these guys are following us outside now. And they're like, they're like, oh, what are you doing now, eh? And so Steve Monador turns around and just hammer drunk. He goes, he goes, he goes, I'll give you 10 seconds to apologize to me and my country and beats on his chest and i'm like what what the fuck was that next thing you know he starts this brawl in the bar and these canadian hockey players all just jump in there and start this big melee because they felt like their country was offended they're proud oh. proud citizens up there in canada and they're intense about uh, making fun of anything especially the way they talk but uh wow. you know i think they're used to it but man it's uh, it's a different if it's a, it's different slang you guys called me out on it last week when i was in saying i sounded canadian i i didn't know i did I mean, first off, whoever these guys are that followed the professional hockey players outside and continued, are, are they the dumbest humans alive? Like, yep. they, they, I'm sure they got pounded. That, that's, I don't, oh, that's like, got, got pounded. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it doesn't take much awareness to glance at you guys. Like, yeah, we probably should probably just back off right now. And if he told you to apologize, you should pro that guy probably should have turned and sprinted as fast as he possibly could. Rupper's got a light situation on there. Oh. Go. Hey, Boston Connors oh, yeah. got something for you, Rupper. Yeah, Rob, yeah. obviously we know everyone up in Manitoba would appreciate the fact that we were kind of spreading the Canadian accent. Yeah. But I know there's a city up there right now that might be on the brink of burning down. Uh, if the Maple Leafs lose tonight and get swept after mm. that whole entire, you know, break the curse of the 17 years not winning a playoff series, are we looking yeah. at a serious rebuild here in Toronto, similar to what, you know, we might have in a couple other places? Or is Toronto, are they trusting the process if they get swept in, you know, round two, which they probably will? Maybe next year they'll go back, not get swept, then the year after that, maybe make it to the conference finals? Or is Toronto actually in some trouble here as far as breaking up the team? Oh, they got it. I think they've got to change things. they got to change things immensely. I think it starts with the um, 
I think it starts with management. I think it starts with the GM, Ugh. potentially the coach, uh, the core. They got the core four there in Austin Matthews, John Tavares, uh, Mitch Marner, and Willie Nylander. And it's they're it's super talented, unable to get over the hump. And they don't have that – they don't they, – they just simply – they don't have that dog mentality where they're just going to find a way to get it done. Like, they can't will themselves. Like, they're very talented. Very talented group. Rupp, but why? They just They've don't... been trying for a while, right? Haven't that? Haven't we known I, that? I just don't. I just don't think it's in the in their blood, AJ. Like you know what I mean. Like, oh. it, it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, there's there, there's plenty of players that are solid. Like uh, Austin Matthews, for example. Austin Matthews is our league's best goal scorer, I believe. Uh, he may not win the scoring title every year. Ovi's getting older. Um, he's Ovechkin is the all time goal scorer. He will be when it's all said and done. He'll yeah, be Wayne Gretzky. The all time. Yeah, goal Pasta leader. must just have fallen off a cliff, eh, Rube? <laughs> pasta, hey, you know what? Pasta's pasta's right there too. But Austin Matthews is the most all natural goal scorer in what he can do. Okay. But with that being said, we don't see another level for him. You know what I'm saying? Like you've got to find another level. And, and if the puck's not going in and you're scoring goals, what are you doing to contribute to your team? Wow. And some of these guys that we see, and and I, I always use this as an example, because I played with Sidney Crosby, and he's a superstar, right? People don't understand. This guy, you might see him in Tim Hortons commercials. You might see him smiling with his nasty-ass salted hat that he sweats in 900 days in a row before he gets a new one. Like All the things that you see from Sid, he will rip your limbs off. He will scratch your face off in the playoffs to get a loose puck. He'll do it in practice. I've seen it. And when your superstars have that mentality – now you're cooking with gas. When they don't have that, you better be damn sure you got to compliment the entire team of a bunch of junkyard dogs to make sure they they cover up for that. Toronto doesn't have that in their superstars, and they don't have the roster to back that up. Mm. Pac's mm. got something. What's up, bro? Last time we was here, what? Stoner was barely walking around. Yeah. And everybody yeah. was talking about his skates is dead. And then I so. told you about this good thing that's called tore it off. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> when we were sitting here, I want to ask you this one question because I think the Tordoff had something to do with the way he came back and played. What do you think Stoner have to do to get past this series, or can they get past this series? They absolutely can, Pac. I mean, this is a team, like, when you talk about Mark Stone, we don't know the full Earth, truth because, you know, in sports, Stoner, <laughs> uh, that they uh, – they, they keep everything top secret, right? We know that he's had back surgery. He's had back issues for a couple of years. And it's like he'll play, you know, Ty and I were talking about it. He'll play some stretches and he's awesome, man. He's awesome on both sides of the puck. And he's, you know, he's the captain of their team, but he's the heartbeat. Like when he scores goals, he's fucking passionate. He's animated. He's yelling, screaming. And it gets, I think it's contagious, right? But he's missed a lot of time the last couple of years because of that back. And I thought when the playoffs started, it was like, I don't know if Mark Stone's ever going to be the same. Maybe it's even a start uh, of him starting the playoffs because he hasn't played for much of the season where it was just going to be like, oh, we hope this is going to be an emotional boost. Have him around the team. He's our leader. Um, you see him going off the ice there. That's when he he, he, yeah. he uh, kind of torqued his back in practice mm. there. And it doesn't look good. He looks a little a little stiffy yeah. right there. But uh, yeah, anyways, uh, but he's come back and he's been good, man. He's been <laughs> so battling. Good. Yeah, I mean, they've been targeting him, too. They're cross-checking his back every play, every whistle, and he's going. And, and, and yeah, they Pac, they can get by They can get by Edmonton. And this Vegas team, the way they play, they give themselves a chance to win every night. They don't have the big, giant superstar. Uh, you know, they've got Jackie Aces, who, who's been playing very well. and uh, well, But they're Bill. a team that just... They yeah, Wild Bill. They come at you in waves. They come at you in waves. Their structure of their game gives them a chance to win. They don't get generally speaking. Um, you don't see a big drop off from their wins and their losses. Like those games look. If you erase the scoreboard in all their games and you just watch the game, they look very similar. Like when they lose, it doesn't look much different than when they win. That to me gives. That's a team that gives themselves a chance to hang in every game. Nick Morado. Uh co-host of yours on That's Hockey Talk. He had something for you, Rupper. Uh, thank you, AJ. Uh, tonight at 8 p.m. live on YouTube. Uh, yeah. YouTube.com forward slash That's Hockey Talk. Yeah. Uh, 
Ruppy, what do we think about Paul Maurice? I don't know if you got a chance to uh, play with anybody who played for him, but we watched a clip that the NHL put on Instagram last night of him being mic'd up behind the bench and kind of firing the boys up and everything. And right before you came on, AJ and, and Pac were asking him about, about him a little bit. And he's kind of a veteran coach who's never – I don't think he's ever won a cup, but he's been around a little bit. And he seems like a player's coach, but he also seems like he has a good pulse on the team and that, that discipline side of things too. He seems like he's got it all. He just hasn't been able to put it all together yet. Yeah, so um, I, I might be wrong on some of the, the stats here, but so Carolina won the cup in 2006, and that was Peter Laviolette, right? And I think right around that time is when is that when Paul Maurice, I think, was in Carolina. He was the youngest hired. You know, Jim Rutherford hired him, and we know Jimmy Rutherford from Pittsburgh winning those cups in 16, 17, and he's now out in Vancouver. Um, with that club, and uh, mm-hmm. they, 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 he hired a young, robust kind of guy that was going to learn on the job, and he was that bright future of coaching. A little bit different. I think you can see that in that video. I saw that video as well. Mm-hmm. Just the way, I mean, I don't know. He just kind of feels like he's in it with you. And and hold on a second, he ain't doing that every shift of every game. You know what I mean? Because that would get old. Like I'd be like, all right, dude, that's enough. Like, come on. Like, we don't need you narrating what's going on out there. But in the moment, like, just to stay on task, be focused, and, and carry out what's what's being done. I like that stuff. It gives me goosebumps. I, I want a coach that's in the battle with me. Um, you know, and Paul Maurice is that guy. He's always very calculated, very intelligent, smooth talker, Dream motivational better. speaker. Um, you know, those things go a long way, I think. And, and not everybody can have it because you can have guys – you know, I think the misconception is that in a, in a professional locker room, and I'm sure you guys can speak to it from football or from hockey, people are like, someone's got to stand up and say – no, they nope. don't. If someone stands <laughs> up and says something, I'm like, sit down. Like, you don't think we know, you know what I'm saying? So people think this is all going to be a Disney movie all the time. Uh, sometimes you just need to be in the trenches, and I think Paul Maurice is in the trenches with them. Nice. Uh, big fan of Disney. Tone Diggs, what do you got, buddy? <laughs> yeah, Rupper, um, been a great – second round here but it feels like there's been a lot of blue outs what's that all about like they'll go back and forth teams winning the games but there's like it feels like every game is almost a blowout what is that about uh, i don't uh, sorry about that i mean sorry i don't know why sorry. um it is like that so uh it's been a sorry second round but uh <laughs> you know it's the goal the goal spans the goal stretches yeah i agree with you, man it's been it's been weird every goalie is getting, getting pulled it seems like every game we're seeing goalie changes um it's a weird second round i don't want to say it's not good because i think it's building and we'll see some of these series going longer but we want to see some uh, I want to see some overtimes. I want to see a double, triple overtime. Yeah. I want to see yeah, these teams go. kind of comeback wins. It seems like right now, whenever a team scores, it's like they'll run off four, four unanswered, right? And I think that's the biggest thing in the playoffs is you've got to set your mind. When you're in a seven-game series and you've got four rounds to win the cup, you've got to, you've got to be prepared to – you're going to – Dude, you're gonna get fucking punched in the mouth, literally and fi- figuratively. Like you're, you're, you're going to that other team is gonna have a momentum push. Just accept, you just know it's coming. Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised. Don't try to change everything. Don't try to win the game on the next shift. Just, just stick to the process, right? And I think that's where some of the inexperience, New Jersey last night, that gets the best of them. Like they go down in that game last night, three games to one, and their best player, Jack Hughes, who I love. I think he's fantastic. He's got balls on him and the way he plays. But he tried to erase that two-goal deficit in one shift. But there's half a game left. And by taking the chances that he took, you know, Carolina gets that fourth goal. We're seeing some kind of sloppy game management, I think, in round two. Uh, I would expect it to get better. But uh, we're seeing a lot of goals. So I think a lot of fans are happy about that. Rupert Ty Schmidt has one last one for you uh, before we, we take off. But I want to ask you quick, are there, is there any chance we can get you guys to go back and get the old sweaters on that don't strap it underneath so we can get some dudes' jerseys slash sweaters pulled over their head for the fights again? And I yeah. love the dudes. Like, when, Did you ever have one of those fights where your, your jersey's oh. completely ripped off and you get to skate and yell at the crowd and pump them up as you're going to the box shirtless? So we uh, So first off, when you're fighting a guy who gets out of his gear – and he's wearing 
a lot of guys don't wear anything. They're bare chested or some even have like now compression shirts, you know, so there's nothing to grab onto. And hockey fighting is all about, it's, it's grappling and punching is what it is. So when you don't, when a guy doesn't have anything on, it's like you're, you're, you're wrestling a, a greased pig, you know, it's fucking <laughs> terrible. And these are dangerous dudes. Like I've had it before where I get it. I get a guy's, I'm trying to get his Jersey over his head. Cause that's a bad spot too. Cause you'll get their hands over their head like this. And their jerseys tying them up, and you can just feed them uppers and get them the whole time. And but you know when they get out of it, it's like oh fuck! So now I got to bear hug you and not allow you to uh, yeah. to do anything. But uh, you know it's funny when I my introduction to that to that OHL I was talking about earlier, um, that was my first introduction to fighting. And from there to the minor leagues to the NHL, early on it's changed since then. There was guys that we had that were strictly fighters, right? Like, that's what they did. And guys would sit there before games, I remember, and even the NHL when I was uh, um, in preseason, getting some preseason games on or in, but I was in the minors. They would sit there beforehand, and everything they'd have, they'd take their gear to the, the equipment managers. They'd be like, I need you to sew this on or loosen this up or make this strap, whatever. And these guys would sit there, and I'd see guys. I wish I could stand up and show you guys this. They sit there before they go on. So guys are sitting there on the, you know, in, in the locker room, you know, getting ready to go out for the first period. These guys are standing there and they go, and they duck their heads down and drop their hands over their head. And they're working on some of these guys would like almost like lift their body up like this. So their gear comes up and they would just like a fucking turtle, just <laughs> right out of the shell. And they'd be like, Damn. I'm like, I, I watch these motherfuckers in the locker room. I'm getting ready. I'm like, I'm like thinking about, all right, let's, let's go have a game here. I'm going to get a goal. These dudes are over there getting out of their gear as fast as they can. And then they go out there in a fight. And as soon as someone grabs on, they do the old <laughs> duck out, bare chested. The other guy's fucked. And you just start throwing haymakers. Like it was a different world. And, uh, you know, it's probably changed for the better in some regards. But some of those things, man, uh, when, when guys got bare chested, skate around, getting the fans oh, all fired up. That nothing. Gets, uh, There's nothing that gives the crowd more juice than that. If you were at home, you you rip your you're bare chested, you just want to fight. What? No matter what the score is, you're gonna come back and win that game. I imagine, yeah. don't you think? Now, there's a there's a great there's a great story. Cam Jansen, who uh, was a fighter in the NHL, five eight. Cam Johnson. Uh, geez, Tom probably two hundred and he's five eight, probably two hundred and fifteen pounds. Solid, solid. Uh, his head was a goddamn cinder block. Uh, his arms were longer than mine. He was five eight, and we went shoulder to to to, uh, to fingertips, and his arm was almost arms were almost as long as mine. So he had long reach. So it was very deceiving. But um, he would sit there in juniors in that same league. So everybody is anywhere from sixteen to twenty. This is one of those kids that you had in high school that hit puberty way before everybody else. Mm -hmm. He was okay. bigger than everybody else, and he was like big chest giant arms everything was like he was situated at fucking 17 years old where i'm just like a skinny rail like trying to work to put weight on or whatever he would go out before warm-ups in the o ohl and he would like just stand on the bench no shirt on after he just probably worked out and you just tape his stick so guys would sit there and got a lot of guys would go out to their their bench and tape a stick and you'd look across and you'd see this fucking meatball over there just <laughs> he's doing his he's doing his chest bumps back and forth and it's just like holy shit that we got to play against this guy you know we got guys on our team that you know need a nice little run of proactive and it just everyone's getting to have zits all over their face you know this guy's like a man you know what I'm saying so yeah. it's yeah it's a different world but it gets the crowd fired up. It is proactive. That's a throwback to the infomercials Seriously. for growing up. The proactive. They always got the famous celebrities. I bet they got paid millions of dollars to do that. But Ty Schmidt has the last question for you, Rupper. Yeah, Rupper, the uh, New York Rangers recently fired Jerry Gallant. Um, and it seems like in the NHL, it's kind of like the same in the NFL, where it's like the the coaching carousel just kind of goes in circles, and it'll probably be some guy that we've, we've already heard of before. Are we ever going to get to a point where, I don't know, like a guy like P.K. O'Hanley, uh, head coach and GM of the Waterloo Blackhawks of the USHL. Like, well, a guy like that who no one's ever really heard of ever I get a shot to, uh, to to go coach like in in the bigs or no? Like, are, are the are the Rangers just going to go rehire Torts or something? They have something against Iowa people. Hey, Why we got it? We got we got to have uh, we got to have Joe Pavelski, your boy Pavs, give him some ups. Yeah, and yeah. He, you know, Taught him right. everything he knows. Pavs, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, so. It, it, it's a there's a fine line like i know a lot of people are like oh there's just a bunch of retreads here like these coaches get rehired I, and i think it's true to some degree but at the same rate too i, I think a lot of that comes into play because all right 
when your coaches get fired generally in sports is when your team underachieves, right? And where is the expectation lie uh, for the most part? It's when your roster is good. It's when your roster is supposed to be good and they they underachieve, right? And so in that case, if this roster is meant to win now and they did not win now and did not take that next step and they want to fire their coach, just think about it for a second. Like, why the fuck would I want to hire somebody who's never coached in this league? You know what I mean? So I think that's yeah. where the retreading happens. It's like, we need to win now. We need a coach that understands coaching at this level, can fill out his staff appropriately, and he can do the right thing. So I, I get it. I understand it. Um, does that mean there's not some fantastic coaches outside the NHL coaching in minors and overseas? No, I mean, there is. And there's guys that probably deserve an opportunity. But um, I understand some of them. Gerard Gallant. He took a, a Vegas Golden Knights, uh, uh, you know, f- uh, franchise in, in year one to the Stanley Cup Finals. He Beast. did really well. Yeah, he did yeah. really well in Florida with the Panthers when he was there. That was a, kind of a out of the blue uh, firing, and he took a team that wasn't supposed to be that good last year. Was a team that maybe wouldn't even make the playoffs last year, uh, in the New York Rangers, two games away from a Stanley Cup Finals. So, I think those are deserved hires. I think he should get hired somewhere else as well. Nice. Rupert, tell us, uh, tell everybody where they can find you tonight at 8 p.m. Yeah, so we got uh, we got tonight, 8 p.m., youtube.com slash that's hockey talk, and we'll be uh, just oh, yeah. ranting and raving. Gumps, uh, Nick, and I will be talking about the playoffs, and uh, yeah, man, it's going to be uh, going to be a good time. We'll have a, a huge game, a couple games on tonight, but a huge Toronto elimination game yeah. against the Panthers. Let's go. Absolutely. Oh. Rupper, really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. We'll be thinking of you when we watch these playoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Rupp. Hey, 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 Thanks, Rupper. Hell yeah, Rupp. Good, good dude. How tall? I haven't seen him in person. Rupper's like six, six, eight. Six, eight. Six, eight. six what? Six, six eight, seven while with skates on. Yeah. Yeah. So did he play basketball too growing up yeah. or just tall? I assume. So he's taller than uh, Chara? Yeah. He he, I think he's a hair under Chara, but what's he listed at without skates? Six on? five, six five. Jeez, but, he's with, so giant. with skates, he's. So you saw him at the wedding. Yeah, I here seen, I've seen him here. Last he week. is he's about six six. He's he is huge. like six five, but it it honestly feels like he's like six eight. Yeah, for he, some he, reason I mean, he feels he's bigger a wide. than he, He's a wide. So that's six, gigantic five. for hockey because a lot of people are always shocked when they see hockey players and they they're not nearly as big as they think they are. Yeah, because on skates he's probably what six seven, Nick six eight. That's, yeah. That's oh, yeah. Good. What a scary presence. That yeah. Would be. Chara is actually seven feet on skates. Is he? Is he? What is he at normal? Six, six seven? nine. I think he's six nine. He yeah. just ran the Boston Marathon. He did. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. How long? Do you know how long it took him? I like think he did an hour, it in like two hours. hours. Yeah, he took like five steps. Hour twenty two. Yeah. yeah, like that. What is the fastest marathon time? <laughs> uh, uh, hour nineteen. He almost broke it. I think. I think. Can you break the, that down. How many? What was the minute miles? Uh, twenty. Minute. Uh, one minute and three minute, minute miles. Like three minute miles. They yeah. did that for 26.2? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Anyone here run a marathon ever? No. No. What do I look like? Pac-Man, I'm surprised you have it. No. Nah. Because you're actually fast. Can you run distance? You, you run a distance I guy? can run distance, but I, I've never ran a marathon. But you run a mile in like six minutes off the couch. Yeah, I do do that. Smoke. I ran a 5K. Right off, right off the couch. I like to give me like a mile and a half up on the like I got a treadmill or you like running minutes. outside or what? I like both. It don't matter. What's um, a 5K? Three miles? Yeah. Two and a half. Three point something, I think, right? Uh, three point one, maybe? I did. I did when I was like in sixth grade, seventh grade. Really? How, how, fa- how fast did you do it? Probably one of the slowest. I'm terrible, horrendous at um, distance running. I think oh. I told you when I was in high school, I started. We had to run the mile my first couple of years in our summer before our workouts. Sure. Very first time we ran it, my brother's two years older than me. We're we're pulling down. To, we're behind the D lineman sprinting the last hundred yards, <laughs> trying to beat each other. We're so terrible at the the mile, and I got worse. Every, I ran that like. Two or three days a week, all summer long, I got worse every single time. Never got better. You had to do it that often? Yeah. Why do you think that every is? Every week. Uh, I don't know. I'm not built for distance. I, I'm definitely not now with zero cartilage anywhere in my knees or ankles. Well, no, but, yeah, now I get But it. even then, I don't know because my brother, too, same thing. It's like a duck foot thing? or Definitely not duck foot because it's pigeon foot, pigeon toed. I would uh, never walk duck foot like that. Mm-hmm. But what it's I'm saying. It's the same for everybody, though. <laughs> yeah, I guess I always just said, I'm all quick week twitch. Cake? I don't have any of those. I don't have that slow twitch. It's, that's for slow twitch people. Did you see the. Uh, oh, yeah, my God. Someone 201. ran 201. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. someone's going to beat the two hour mar- marathon then. Yeah, they, never uh, been done. Eventually, I don't know if they could. I mean, four thirty-seven miles absurd. Two oh one oh nine. If you just cut a tiny bit off, no, each, yeah, yep. you just cut. Yeah, I mean, those guys are. That's an absolute sprint for twenty-six miles. Yes. Yeah, it's absurd what they can do. That's so fast. Yeah, it's, a, it's an unbelievable. That's why when we were watching the uh, marathon and that lady from Minnesota almost won it, mm-hmm. that was crazy. 
Oh yeah. They the, say that Berlin that? is typically a fast track too, yeah. though. Is it? Uh, yeah. 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 That's why there's two of the top times. Yeah, now you Berlin. said. Now oh. Diggs did let us know. Kelvin kipped him in second. Yeah, that was wind aided. That was yes. wind aided okay. to a one. There was a yeah, heavy wind that heavy day. Wind behind wind the entire time. The whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah. weird. So it never changed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a completely. All right, Kelvin. Get Kelvin off the list then. He shouldn't be second. Put Kinesio. Kinesio. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, you mentioned the no cartilage. Yeah. What did about? you did you see the hockey player who has to get a cartilage transplant? He's out all of next year. Is that okay? So I saw they said he's out the rest of this year and next year. Yeah, mm-hmm. Landis Yeah, yes. the entire. What are year they doing? Year. What kind of? I don't know. I honestly was wondering they if you car- ever heard. Well, of they've it. always they've tried all this stuff like where they can, grow, they can take to put cartilage stuff in the cartilage, like squeeze it in there. I mean, they've I've, I know I've had plenty of shots of that stuff that's supposed to lube up your joints, but I know they've tried experimental where they take some stuff out of your knee, grow it somewhere, help make it get it whatever, and then put it back in. I know. Uh, I know, yeah, a guy that played in the league that has a completely garbage knee. He's yeah. been he's been non weight bearing for like the last seven months because he had something like that done. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean league. he's the captain of the team. No, he's not in the league anymore. He's done. Sick. He's he's done, but it, recently done. But he had a horrible messed up knee, and it's almost like experimental though. Yeah, it's so definitely not like run of the mill yet. They might not even know if he can play hockey well, again. Or maybe or? he's getting microfracture. Mm. Microfractures where they go and they drill hole, drill holes in the bone to try to stimulate cartilage growth. I was lucky I had a doctor that didn't do that. I, he thought it was going to when he went in. He yeah. didn't. Greg Oden yeah, Greg, had that exactly. on both knees. Think about that. And, uh, Amari Stoudemire actually had it too. Mm-hmm. So, like, that's a nasty surgery. You're trying to stimulate cartilage growth, but they drill holes into it, and then you're non-weight bearing for months. It'd be awful. Well, I, think I, think I think it's happened to Lonzo Ball right now too. Lonzo Ball. Yeah, Lonzo yeah, Ball. Yeah, that. Here's yeah, a, it's like his third real. surgery. Like, yeah, they can't figure out what is wrong with his knee. They, the doctors that have actually said we don't know what is wrong with his knee. He's had like three surgeries, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, and he's been is out. He for the two best years. one out of all the brothers. Yes. No, the, well, we won't never find one. out. Oh uh, yeah, Lamelo, the youngest one. Is. Where's he at? He's Charlotte. in Charlotte. Charlotte, and he's doing well. Yeah, he won Rookie of the Year, and then he got hurt. He won Rookie of the Year when? Two years ago. Okay, yeah, that's what I say. And then last year he got hurt for a little bit, but. I mean, Charlotte's just never going to be good at basketball, unfortunately. You don't think? Is Jordan still there? Yep. Jordan's still the owner? Yeah. He's looking to sell, though. Uh, yeah, allegedly he's trying to get out because. Because Ostalopoulos was looking at buying it. Excuse yep. me? Who? The- Albert Ostalopoulos, the guy who was almost was bought the buy Oh, we talked about him on the, on the show, right? That's how Wendy knew about the Commanders thing because Wendy, NBA World, doubted it with Ostalopoulos. Yes. Okay. Does anyone know? How did Wendy, I guess, build up his. Network of people he knows and his team, like he is the guy in basketball. He and Shams, right? Yeah, I yeah. remember. I will in Woj, but uh, Woj, yeah. Ty mentioned this, uh, I think last month, two months ago. Wendy's the second all time winning scorer in Akron, yeah. high school history. Oh, I'd say, okay. Yeah. What high school in Akron do you know? I just, I'm St. Mary. St. Mary, what are you talking about? Same he, as LeBron. He was, oh, he went to St. Vincent, he was point guard yeah. for LeBron Saint Saint before, maybe so before close. LeBron. No, I think I he's think a little bit here. younger. Um, yeah. Or he might be your age because I'm pretty sure he was on Ohio State's basketball team when you were there. So <laughs> Wendy was, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think he played, o- he played overseas for like seven yep. years or so. So obviously. That's why he's always his Point backdrop. Guard? His backdrop is that's his gym that he's always Did you know this track? <laughs> no, I didn't know. Wendy com- Windhorse? Yeah, combo guard. What's his first name exactly? Brian. Brian Windhorse. Don't a little fucking respect. I okay? am. That's why I'm trying to get his name out there, Ty. And then he yeah. could have went. You should know his name. He led the country in scoring in high school. Yes. It when could, he was on LeBron James's no, team. No, LeBron was older than him. Do you listen? LeBron was already in the in the NBA. <laughs> yeah. And Wendy could have went pro, but he loved writing and journalism so much more that he joined the Akron Plain Dealer. Yeah. Stuck uh, to his morals. I and then character, high character guy. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. He had a dream and he said, I don't and care. LeBron was like, the number one pick. LeBron I was like, write. prove it to me for like a year or two that you do love journalism that much. And then I'll take you on this wonderful ride with me. And he yeah. did. And boom. What a wonderful ride it's been. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, right. man. And now Rich Paul's with Adele. That is That's right. Are they still together? They are still together. They're at the Lakers game. I didn't, I didn't know, but I found this the other day. Rich Paul, also very good at basketball. Yeah, he at, was yeah. LeBron's point guard, right? I think was Rich he? Paul well, was LeBron's point guard. I know. Guard. I played with she, actually, she on Cotton played with LeBron. He right? actually so he was. First shoot. Yeah, yes. Rich Paul was LeBron's was point guard. What do you mean actually at, was? At Saint Mary. For real? You know what I mean. No, he, no, he means actually just because... It, you know, AJ thought because that Wendy, Wendy did not play basketball and all that stuff was <laughs> not mean? true. Okay. What, what are you why are they saying that? Why are, they oh, why are you lying to me? Are you spreading all this? Fake I'm not news? lying. Oh, Foxy's mad. Because he has, he has another insider that played basketball that wasn't as good as Wendy. Is that why? No, Someone Wendy is famous because he followed LeBron throughout his whole. That's career. what I said. Oh. Yeah. What the. Yeah. A- Wait, was Wendy really at the same Beacon Journal? Boom. Boom. Yeah. yeah, boom! Uh, told you. Proof's in the pudding, AJ. <laughs> yeah. I watched. Told it in. I watched LeBron play twice in high school, and I don't. I don't remember seeing Wendy, especially like 
He's got a weird tan, like yeah, his tone. I don't remember that either. I've seen, I've seen him play a couple times too. I, See I, there. I, I think yeah. I would have noticed when. And unfortunately, I think you put Wendy's face on my old teammate Sheon Cotton's body, who went to Ohio State. <laughs> no, no, no. That might be. No, that, that's those Wendy. tattoos look eerily familiar. Right there. <laughs> no, that's Wendy. He he went to the Bahamas for a break too. Oh, did he? Yeah, played football. Wait, so which one's Rich Paul then? If this is Rich Paul's in the middle, is that him? Twelve? Yeah. yeah. Man, his dad was the coach of this team. Was that Rich Paul? Okay, I remember yeah. that whole. So that was his dad. Yeah. So is his dad an agent now? This who no. know, who knows if anything is real that we're talking about? Is no, no, there, there. That's real. I forget if there's a documentary. That, for some reason, I remember watching like the entire story around this entire team because they went. Maybe it was a Carmelo LeBron documentary because they went and did the. Oak he Hill. played. They played Oak Hill in high school against yep. each other, and then that's why last year was a massive deal because Bron yeah. James played. Sheon Cotton. That is Sheon. <laughs> yeah. Old teammate yeah. right there. That you guys put Wendy's head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sheon's rapping now. I know LeBron's been. Uh, he's pumped up a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stuff I mean, he's doing the LeBron with the, all his childhood friends, like they're all in that crew and everything. Good guy. It's pretty awesome. I want to see yeah. that house LeBron built in Akron, that giant monstrosity. You ever been there, Pat? No, I've never been there. Monstrosity, you monstrosity, said. huh? What is that? Is that's that not a good. That's word. what you're going to say. Yeah, Pat, right, do you know LeBron? Yeah, monstrosity means like terrible. Oh, does it? Yeah. If I'm describing the yeah. size of something, big yes. and ugly. Yeah. Like that's what they said about why you know, did you guys Stark like, Towers? You guys all jumped on me. What is that from? Why you all instantly hit on monstrosity? Well, because you were describing it as if it was a terrible. It's build, a part build. of the English language. But, oh, but the fact that all like three of you said it at the same time, it has to be for some toxic, stupid video or something nope. happened where someone. No, no, we, we saw an uh, opening where we could. Uh, <laughs> we saw an opening where you could try to kill me. You said for something. Using that word. <laughs> yeah, frame you as yeah. a bad guy. Okay, this enormous. That w- house he built. There you go. That's, That's how I take When better. I say monstrosity, it means enormous. Okay, you just say like something, especially a building that is very areas. large and considered unsightly. Yeah, right. ugly. That's it's, cut the last part off. I didn't something no that, that is outrageously or offensively wrong. Monstrosity. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you I. Knew believe, I don't know if I agree with all this. You should have said he built a beautiful big home. Yeah. Just say your truth. If you want to use it positively, then just do it. Yeah, I did use it positively. I would like to see this house. I th- I believe he has like a whole. He's like a whole street, right? He's got houses Probably. all over the place. He's got right? a school there too. Yeah, doing great. Oh things. yeah, that school's killing it. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Jack Carr's coming on a little bit, guys. We're gonna we're gonna get to a quick break because we have Jack Carr come on. Ta- or, uh, Diggs, I don't know if sure. you can ask him about confirmed kills and everything like you were talking about. Prince Harry was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. I don't know what you can do. You can try if you want. You could. Yeah, yeah. you could ask. You just have to give the seal salute if you're. What is to. what is that? You're gonna have to Google it on can the. Can you show uh, it on the? Is that, that do, like, the human centipede stuff Diggs has been talking about? What, what do you think? When was that? Oh, when we were talking were about that? how Rap Sheed's mouth was looking when he was on that crew boat. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was he doing? Oh, what are you doing? We talked His about lips possible. were sewn shut, yeah. yeah. Still, that's not Rap Sheet Rowan. No, it's not. You're no, right. It's Ben Roth. Yeah. That guy was absolutely jacked. For anyone that saw the program yesterday, <laughs> Ian Rappaport was on the crew team in high school, and his wife sent in a picture. And I'm still not sure. No, crew team was in college. Yeah, Columbia, crew team was yeah. in college. My bad. Yeah. High school. Wait, was that the rest 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 But he had to. He had yeah. to. No, he had to row in high school nope, too. Just picked though. up no. crew in college. Hey, when you go to when you go to those. Did he? Oh yeah, when you go to those schools that have like crew programs, they they damn near send a Wait, test. Is there high school crew? Does people ho- row in high school? I don't think yeah, so. some some places do. Maybe maybe on the east maybe, coast. Maybe Boston. Yeah, yeah. Maybe no, Boston. No, no. Yeah, maybe. East Coast they have. North, I guess. Those yeah. Coastal elitists, maybe. Yeah, uh, actually, bingo. And I mean, Ivy League school. What do you expect? But you damn near get a text from if you go to school in the Northeast, they will text you. I, I bet this happened to Bruce. This happened to me at uh, my college. You get like a text. Hey. Would love to see if you want to come out for the crew team this year. Really? Yeah, because they like need to recruit people to do it because it fucking sucks to do. But don't they give scholarships for it too? The really really good people. Oh, like okay. there was like uh, the Winklevi. So they're just yeah, trying bingo. to get enough people to to field a squad. Is all they're doing? Yes, exactly. Man. Yeah. And all so the like, shenanigans in the boathouse, like you talked about. A bingo. <laughs> And that's what the kids but, go for. Is that a known thing? The boathouse is weird. Oh, Things happen. Yeah. Oh boy! You don't even want to know what a is boat the bong like is. A, wait, a boat bong? Yep. What is it? I, I just said up. you don't want to know. So a boathouse <laughs> is where they store their boats, but then they also have parties and stuff. You're oh, saying yeah. you just yeah. hang out and fellowship. Oh, yeah, just boating yeah. around the boathouse. We'll Cup explore that in the third hour. Yeah, yes, we'll, absolutely. We'll make sure we explore that. But it, we have Jack Carr coming up. We're gonna take a quick break. Reset everything. Five minutes, guys. We're going to take a quick five. 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 Jack Carr will be here. Come on back. Well, nonetheless, as of February 1st, uh, Pat McAfee is officially a contributor with WWE. Pat McAfee tonight. 
I've been preparing for this my entire life. It's time to toast the boys and toast the brand. McAfee's wanted to drink beer with Stone Cold forever. Stutter! Stutter! There's a point in my life, all I can think about doing is professional wrestling. McAfee closing in on another WrestleMania victory. Oh! First, we're going to have to get the OKs, obviously. And we did from people high up. They were the only people that knew for a while. There was like three people that knew in the whole world that that was going to potentially be a situation for a little bit. City of Stars, Boston Connors here. We will be there tonight. Nobody's supposed to know we're here. It's going to be tough. And if you're a man that's only known for wearing tank times, you kind of got to cover it up. There's some bunk beds there. You know, there's a shit on a shower here in the back. He sat in that bus six, seven, eight hours, no, nine, yeah. ten hours. I'm coming down, I think. Holy fuck, what a view that's gonna be. Hell yeah. Look at all those fucking people are gonna be there. Just waiting, you know, for an opportunity to potentially have a WrestleMania moment. It's ridiculous. This is awesome. WWE is just like the best at operating. They take care of the non-obvious. So we're very thankful to be here. And tonight should be welcome. Hell yeah. I think there's like three people I know I'm here. Are we not supposed to come in here? No. Yeah. All right. Four now. Four Look now. at you. I want to say a word. I'll see you at uh, SoFi. You're going to be in LA? I don't know. George is, uh, you know. It's maybe, a loaded question. George, we don't know, George. You don't know. Maybe. Okay. What's up, Stan? Oh, nice. <laughs> As soon as I saw George showcase that yeah. tight end university tank top, I knew there was a chance old George about to do something special. Yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me, boys? Welcome to WrestleMania! You know, the night was getting late. We weren't sure. Yeah, we, we didn't know if a moment was going to pop up where maybe my services could be utilized. I haven't been in a ring since SummerSlam. Okay, like, not even in one. All I wanted was the Miz to have an opportunity to have a match. Just a WrestleMania match. match. Yeah, yeah, good guy stand there. And then the Miz mentions, I sent out an open challenge, and we go, Oh my God. There it is. And I put out an open challenge, and no one responded. Why? Because I'm the Miz, and I'm awesome! Hey. Let's go! I have walked out into a stadium as a WWE superstar probably a million times in my head. WrestleMania was missing Pat McAfee in the Pat McAfee show. And I'm thankful to the WWE Universe that said hello whenever I came out on that massive fucking stage. By the way, there's only two announcers undefeated in WrestleMania history, me and Pat. I can't believe McAfee's here. You're a legend, dog. You're the oh, best, dog. Hello, Miz. None of us saw this alleged open challenge that you said. But good news. This is my WrestleMania tank top. If you still would like a match, why don't you let me beat your ass right here, right now? You all want to see the Miz versus Pat McAfee right here, right now! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! I'm the host of WrestleMania, and I cannot make matches official. Miz, I do believe your tiny balls are showing. Tiny balls. Tiny balls. Baby meat as well. There's 80,400 and... No, 
97. People here, somebody has to be able to make a match official somewhere. I am the dog father and the host of WrestleMania, so I feel like I could make that match happen. Right now, we got a ref. We got you. We got you. Let's get cranking. I'm out. I'm so thankful to the people at the WWE. It was a super cool night, a super cool moment, and I'm very thankful for it all. 5.30 a.m. Sunday. This day started 6.30 a.m. Saturday. So much cool shit happened in between now and then. Joke of an existence. I'm very thankful for everything. Let's go take a nap. Hey. Why? Let's go. This show fucking stinks. And the fact that you listen, we are very, very thankful for it. AJ, you never cease to amaze me with your toxicity, pal. You got a couple of these? God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Austin, oh! Oh! <laughs> Hello, welcome to Hour 3. This is the Pat McAfee Show. I'm AJ Hawk sitting in for Pat once again. It's a great day here. We have a great guest on the other side. Mr. Ohio! There we go. Guys, I mentioned the guest before we the beat drop that you guys like to do this because this guy, we can't keep him around. No, we can't keep no him way. waiting around. As Ty likes to say, we don't want to beat around the bush, right? No. We need to bring this guy in Bingo. and we need to get some info right away. So anyone that uh, follows anything going on in the world definitely understands, has heard who this guy is, has read some of his books. Mm -hmm. yep. Navy SEAL, obviously all around just unbelievable American patriot hero writer, yeah. Mr. Jack Carver. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, thank you guys for having me. I man. love that intro too, it gets me fired up. Hey, seeing your unbelievable husky beard, just the act of a like, ruggedly <laughs> handsome Let's dude, go. and your energy gets me fired up, man. Your sixth book right here, we have this thing, Only the Dead, Jack. Okay, how does this differ from anything else? This Is, is this your seventh or sixth book? Because I hear both. Yeah, this is the sixth book, and working you, on Bill. the seventh now. Also working on a nonfiction book on the 1983 Beirut barracks bombing to uh, keep that history alive and some oh. of those lessons alive so we can hopefully apply them going forward as wisdom in the future. But uh, a lot of, lot of uh, irons in the fire right now, but I feel extremely <laughs> fortunate. Well, that Beirut one, geez, that'll be uh, interesting, especially nonfiction. But this one, Only the Dead, how did this thing, uh, I guess, 
when you're writing these things, you obviously there's process. I know you've talked to us on the show about everything that you do. When you, when you write this, it seems completely overwhelming to even think about writing a book, let alone many books, especially something like this that's so good. I guess, how did this one differ from anything in the past? And did you have to, have you had to change up anything over the, the course of, of writing these books? Well, I changed where I write uh, just because we've moved around a little bit. That first one, I was still in my last year in the SEAL teams. My job then was to get out of the military because it's a gigantic bureaucracy and you have to uh, go to medical and dental and get read out of secret programs and turn in gear and do all this stuff. But because it's the military, you also have to stand in line just to make the appointments to do that. Yeah. So I started writing really in the office off our bedroom in a little rental in Coronado, California, which is one of the SEAL team uh -huh. hubs. And uh, so I got to do that there. And then I, we moved up here to Park City, Utah, and I started going to the local library and using one of those study rooms that they have. And you can use those for as long as you want until somebody else starts waiting and then it's like a two hour time limit and I as soon as high school got out I'd have to get bumped out for some high school kid working on a history project last one I started renting little cabins around Park City up here and uh, and that was very helpful just quiet uninterrupted time and uh, this last one I went to do that again but then I felt bad that I wasn't with my family so I felt mm. guilty so I just said ah, you know what I'm just gonna do this again between like 10 at night and like three or four in the morning so uh, when I'm not being interrupted by children that are wonderful by the way but <laughs> they tend to, well, yes uh, they, they, yeah when you close the door to your office for anybody that works at home you know that that acts as a magnet for all your children <laughs> and the dog for some reason like I don't know what that what's in that door that just draws them all to it but uh, but process wise that's really the only thing that's uh, that's changed is the location is me searching for a place to write but the process itself coming up with a title and a theme and a one page executive summary and an outline and then the narrative that has stayed the same and this one ended up being the longest to date and I didn't start out thinking that I'm going to write the longest book. It also ended up being the most brutal, and I didn't start out yeah. thinking it's going to be the most brutal either. It just naturally evolved that way. Yeah. But it is 139,000 words, my longest to date, and that's just what it took to get the story the best it could possibly be. Uh, but it can also be used as a blunt impact weapon or as mm. a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> Dual-use technology. Multi-use. I, I love that. Now, do you? is it true? Do you have to get this stuff still signed off from the government, even though it is fiction? Do they still go through your whole book and, and maybe, you know, redline some stuff? I did it for the first three because I was so close to still being in the SEAL teams, and those ones were more tactically oriented. So I just wanted to make sure there was nothing in there. And what they did take out was pretty ridiculous but uh but anyway i did for the first three books the fourth one called the devil's hand i really went deep down the rabbit hole into bioweapons research and bio defense is what how they term it uh and i didn't want the government to be censoring things that i didn't learn in the military that i learned on the outside essentially doing the job of an investigative mm. journalist mm. so i didn't submit that one the last one in the blood i went deep down the rabbit hole into artificial intelligence oh. and quantum computing specifically nice. with the military and intelligence Jeez. aspect of those two uh entities and i didn't want to turn that in either because i didn't learn any of that in the military and i didn't want the government to start uh xing out things that uh, they were nervous about just because i had them in a book but not having got them from the military, I didn't. So, um, so now I don't do it anymore. I feel like I've uh, there's enough time between when I served and now. Uh, also, what we do in the military, specifically in the SEAL teams, I should say, in special operations, isn't that secret. Every big city SWAT team is going to serve a warrant tonight somewhere in their city, and that's essentially what we're doing. We're just doing it in like Baghdad or Kabul where we have an AC-130 gunship overhead and a Reaper drone and a bunch of other assets at our disposal. But essentially, it's the same thing. It's going to kick somebody's door in the middle of the night, grab them out of their bed, and bring them back for interrogation, and then go prosecute some follow-on targets. I love it. Now, I, I got one more quick question before some of the boys have some stuff for you. So Chris Pratt, obviously, you, you're very tight with Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt's father-in-law. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. Are you tight with Arnold? Have you met Arnold? Have you got to lift with him over Ooh. there in Venice Beach? What's the deal there? So I have not gotten to beat Arnold yet. I had a, a, an invite from Patrick. So Patrick Schwarzenegger was in the oh. show as well. He's uh, He plays a SEAL in the show, and he was absolutely That fantastic. dude's like a male model guy. too as well, right? Yeah, yeah. He's a, yeah, he's a, yeah. I've, I've seen yeah, him. He's, He's got it going on. And uh, so he did invite me over, and I need to take advantage of that at some point. So, Patrick, if you're watching, I want to come over to that barbecue. Uh, but I haven't met Arnold yet, but that'd be, you know, I don't get starstruck too often, but I, w I think that I would 
with Arnold, just having grown up uh, with him and all those movies and had so impactful as a kid growing up in the 80s. Um, I did get to have a great call with Sylvester Stallone, though. We were talking, he wanted to talk to me about a project. Ooh. And uh, so I was like trying to like not, you know, get too overly excited. I was trying to play it cool. Yeah. Uh, but I took a little picture of the screen just so I could, <laughs> you know. I could memorialize it for myself because growing up with Rocky and Rambo, I mean, how cool is that? So, uh, so it's been really interesting to have conversations with a lot of these people who I grew up idolizing, whether they were authors or they were people in, uh, in Hollywood and now to sit down with them and have conversations and realize that they're just normal people like anybody else. And Chris Pratt is amazing. He's just somebody you'd want to have a beer with, want to have a whiskey with, coffee with, um, just a solid human being and a solid dude. Nice. Boston Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Jack, you just kind of mentioned the AI kind of in one of your books. And right now it is exploding, at least on the Internet, with people making, you know, fake songs, making movies, commercials, all this stuff, strictly using AI. How do you think AI is going to affect the military in general? Well, I think it's been around for a little bit. And if my research into that last novel is any indication, uh, it has been around for uh, for a little bit of time. And we're in a race with China over who can have the more powerful quantum computer, the more powerful artificial intelligence entity. Um, Who's and if my at, um, at that time we were, uh, you know, this is just based on my research. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. But at uh, la a year ago, when that book came out, the previous months that I put into doing that research, we were still ahead. Don't know if we're still ahead don't know if we'll always be ahead but we certainly were after my research for that last novel things could have definitely changed um but uh it's gonna affect every industry in some way shape or form and the question isn't now whether we could or whether we should it's already there and now it's about management and what we're seeing with this writer strike is one of the first time that a union's coming together to protect jobs to put manage to put things in place that are going to protect some of those jobs that can be taken by ai maybe not today but certainly in five ten years mm. of course mm. so uh, i think we're going to see that in other industries with other unions here down the line and it's just uh it's just inevitable so now it's here and it's now it's just figuring out how to how to live with it Pac-Man jones has something for you Hey, Jack, I read um, they're toning down the famous Navy SEAL difficult test um, regiment because due to safety. What is your concerns on that, and what do you think about that? Yeah, I don't have any insider information on that, but it would not shock me if they are changing some of the requirements uh, in order to get more people in. It's just when you have a recruiting issue when you're not bringing in the number of bodies that you need to, uh, it's just natural for those standards to drop or to be adjusted or the language around them to be adjusted, meaning we're going to give you not one try, not two tries, not three tries. We're going to give you as many tries as it takes to get you through this part of the program because we need these bodies. And 10 years ago, that person would never have made it into the SEAL teams or into any special operations unit. Yeah. But maybe today they are because of dropping those standards to get the bodies because they have a recruiting process uh, crisis, because people are looking at our withdrawal from Afghanistan and a few other things and saying, wait a sec, these people had 20 years to plan for this withdrawal, and that's how it turned out. As a parent, are you going to encourage, actively encourage your child to go into an organization that uh, has 20 years to plan for something, and that's their best foot forward? Uh, maybe not. So, uh, so yeah, I do have concerns about the future of our military, particularly when it comes to standards. And uh, unfortunately, only time will tell. Jack, that's that's surprising that they may be having issues getting people. Like I understand it's military in general, all the branches, but for special forces, I feel like yeah. it's never been a better time for young people that want to be you. They want to do what you did. They they hear they see about it later. So I would imagine what, it's just because they have a smaller pool to choose from because we have less people entering. I think so. I think it's a, it's a very small percentage of people that even attempt to try out. And then those that try out, even smaller percentage of those make it through training. And then a percentage of those get to their team and even get weeded out there once they're amongst their peers that they're going to be going. Oh, here we go. We got him. Hold on. What do you think? You're going to recall him back? Is it you going to call him back? Yep. Do you think maybe he was in the middle of something good? Hopefully, yeah. did, was that the government that shut him down? I could have been. Just think. What did I ask about recruitment? Poor, poor AI. AI. It was AI. Oh no. No, I, I, I Sweet don't want to do that. Is that Sweet Blake? Could have no. been. Chat GPT. If he's writing about AI, but that is crazy. Five ten years probably changing the game. See you later. Five ten. I thought it'd be shorter.
I think, it, but no, they're gonna. It's gonna integrate with us. You just gotta find a way to. Well, it was good to hear that we find were your place. Right? Yeah, yeah. Does it integrate with people that which jobs it takes though? You know, uh, can kinda. we use it with your job? Make you more Definitely. efficient right. at your job. Oh, That's how we gotta figure it out. Absolutely, but I, like for the movie and TV industry, like people who do, I, I don't know, animation. Would that be something that AI oh, would yeah. just kind oh, of wipe yeah, out? They? Oh yeah. Yeah, I would assume so. Because there's been what videos. about writing Especially papers in school? Hey, I want to write a paper. Right. I know now you, can, you can go they look at write a whole song. We know they can write. Yeah, yeah. someone paper. actually. I've seen uh, teachers on on Twitter post a like first page of uh, entire essay, ten page essay yeah. that was written by AI, but oh. the person you know accidentally left in the first <laughs> paragraph where it, it it's just the AI telling them, "I don't know everything about this book, oh. but based on what you have typed in, I this." This is what I have deciphered uh, regarding your theme and everything. And so, the, obviously, F, Jeez. whatever. But, yeah, it, it can do anything. It's nuts. The fact that I can mimic people is incredibly dangerous. I wonder how many times, like, when he came up, how many times they got to take the test. Because I think that was a big part of what he was saying. Like, hey, these fucking kids ain't prepared these days. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's the old school, versus, your old school yeah. versus young school. I believe we have him back. Jack, we have you back. There we go. AI got I'm you, here. huh? Oh, AI man, look get at, you? See, that AI, in fact, <laughs> computer, and they didn't want us talking about this stuff. They shut it down. <laughs> <laughs> they can't hold us back, Jack. I know Ty Schmidt has a good one for you. Yeah, Jack, speaking of the writer's strike, I know with season one of the Terminal List, I know you're a consultant. I can't remember if you actually picked Pend any of the scripts for the show, but I know you're on set and everything. Uh, I'm just curious: has season two already been written for the terminal list, uh, and has the writers' strike affected like production for it in any way, shape, or form? Or no? So it hasn't yet, um, and we'll see how long this writer's strike goes on. It certainly has the potential to delay production, but we're doing a spinoff series first, uh, starring Taylor Kitsch, and yes. Chris Pratt will be in three of those yes. episodes, oh, but yeah, it's a really prequel is. origin series to kind of show how that character, Ben Edwards, kind of how he turns bad, how he goes from the yeah. SEAL teams to the CIA. It's more of an international espionage thriller rather than a conspiracy revenge action thriller like The Terminal List was, and it is Awesome. So it's all outlined. We have about, I think, five scripts were in the can before the writer's strike hit. Um, and I'll be writing one of those scripts. I'll be writing the finale. But uh, we're supposed to start uh, production here, you know, a few months. But uh, writer's strike goes on for a few months. It'll push it to the right. That's just how, how these things go. But we're going to roll, or we're supposed to, and things can, Hollywood can go off the rails at any time. But we're supposed to roll right from that into season two called True Believer, which is based on my second novel, and that's starring Chris Pratt. So it's, uh, it's greenlit, and it's, uh, it's, it's in the production phase, the writing phase, but... You know, we'll see what happens. Tone Diggs? Yeah, I obviously Terminal List is awesome. Also on Amazon, Jack Ryan. So if you're doing a spinoff CIA, have you thought about maybe seeing if we could bring Jack Ryan in with that spinoff show with CIA? And my other, my real question is, is there is there an, a most accurate or one of your like favorite military movies that, that you think is most accurate that you also think is a great movie? Or show there, yeah, yes. Um, and uh, on the the Jack Ryan thing, I saw they announced yesterday that this season coming uh -huh. up, fourth season, is the last season. And I said the final season on the uh, on the graphic. So, um, so I think, uh, yeah, I think that's that's moving on. But as far as movies, you know, there's I try to enjoy them for what they are, knowing that there are going to be uh, mistakes in there and technical mistakes and that stuff. I try to enjoy them for what they are. But uh, usually, you know, there's one 13 hours for whatever reason. Yes. Mm. That one really stands out to me as a modern film that uh, captures some of what it feels like to be in a very uh, dynamic situation. Uh, and for whatever reason, that one, I saw that one. And I see movies these days, and they don't make me want to go back into the SEAL teams or want to get back into a paramilitary side of an intelligence agency. But I saw that one, and I was, for a second, maybe two, I wanted to get back in. And then I came to my senses. That movie's awesome. But uh, that, that movie, they did a fantastic job uh, with 13 Hours. Jack, a huge fan of yours. Bill McComas has come out from his, his coding dungeon back there, and he has a question He's for all you. all his waxes. Hi, Jack. Uh, do you have any, like, plans on tracking down someone or maybe, like, a dream casting for Rafe for uh, Season 2 Ooh. or any of the future seasons? So I do, and I get this question quite a bit, but I never say who my person is because if it's not, then – for the rest of the time, people will be thinking that you didn't get the person that you wanted. Uh, so uh, I got Chris Pratt. He was the person I thought of as I was writing The Terminal List, even before he'd been in Guardians of the Galaxy, but before he'd been in Jurassic World. And he was just in uh, Parks why? and Rec. What made you think of him? Small. Why? That seems like a unique choice, yeah. especially when he used to be like a comedic guy that wasn't as built like he is now, I feel like, too. Exactly. Exactly. He was Parks and Rec, a little overweight, jovial.
jovial, fun. <laughs> and then I saw him have this very small role in Zero Dark Thirty about the Bin Laden yeah. raid. Oh, yeah. And I saw his transformation mm-hmm. physically, and I saw that acting ability, and I said, this is the guy. And, of course, I have no connections in Hollywood, no connections in publishing, nothing. And I'm choosing him to play my main character back in December of 2014. Uh, and I chose him, and I chose Antoine Fuqua to direct because I was choosing my main actor. I might as well choose my director as well. And we all ended up coming together to do it uh, later on, which is a- absolutely incredible. But uh, I got the exact actor I wanted to play my main character, the exact director that I wanted. We're all executive producers on this thing. And then when it comes to the other characters, then uh, I never say exactly who I envision playing them. Uh, but we'll see with Rafe. That's going to be an interesting one because he is a fan favorite. And uh, there's a, there's definitely a short list. I think I'll, I can say that. Okay. Shortly. Well, you can't mention any names on that list though, right? Any wish list? No. Nope. Can't do it. Nope. Paul Giamatti, maybe? Paul Ooh. Giamatti. Okay. Paul Walter Hauser. That was that's who I was thinking. <laughs> Jack, Jack Stains. Jack, is there, is, there, is there such thing as confirmed kills? We hear this stuff talking. We were reading a book earlier. There, someone was talking about their confirmed kills. Like, it's not as that clean, pilot. is it? Are, it has always happened? Uh, you know, we discussed it going into, into Najaf in the summer of 2004 because it was a uh, multi-day campaign. For us, it was a sniper team, 11 days. I think the total campaign to retake that city from the Jay Shalmati militia was two weeks, but our part in it was 11 days. Um, and we knew we were going to be in this fight day, night. It was like, uh, like the World War II movies I saw growing up as a kid, because we weren't choosing the time and place of the engagement like we usually did. Uh, we were just in this com- this crazy situation with big army, with 2-7 cavalry. We're moving tanks forward, Abrams tanks, Bradley fighting vehicles. We have air coming in. We're doing our sniper thing. We're doing our close air support thing. We're running through the streets, pushing them back uh, by to another set of buildings, taking some high ground, bringing the tanks up, bringing some water up because it's summer yeah. in Iraq, and, uh, and you need that water, you need that food, you need those bullets to continue that logistics train uh, to keep pushing you forward. So we did talk about it in that respect, knowing that it was going to be a target rich environment and it was going to come up when we got home. So uh, what we put in place was that you couldn't just be in a corner of a room and say, oh, I got a guy, uh, whether you did or not. And then because we didn't want anything, we didn't want that to to overshadow some of the things that we were we were doing as a team so you had to have somebody else and it sounds weird it sounds like you're talking about stats you're talking about lives Um, but still we didn't want to come back and have anyone question what we did Um, so with big army they did keep track of those things whether it was from air or was it was from our sniper rifles or was from uh, going through essentially uh, uh, pushing through buildings in a cqc type format with your m4s and then taking that high ground Um, so we were very careful about that because we didn't want to ever run into someone saying hey so-and-so was in this corner of this building and said they got three no one saw it and then that upset that there's a shadow over that person for the rest of their time in the military so Mm -hmm. as uh, we were very cognizant of the fact that if if you were going to chalk somebody up for lack of a better term okay. that uh someone else was going to have to see that as well oh okay have you seen any I, I would imagine you've seen some of these videos coming out there's one where they're dropping a bomb into an open little tank turret in U- the ukraine and they hit it right in there and i'm thinking okay the guys in the tank know there's a drone up there it could possibly drop why don't you close that turret first off but that was that going on back in the day were they already that advanced because that seems crazy to me that we can do that yeah, I haven't seen that exact video that you're talking about, but it uh, it doesn't surprise me. If you look at technology from, like, say, the first Gulf War, when we first saw those videos of uh, smart bombs hitting their targets, and then we have another 10 years to September 11th-ish, uh, and then the technology that just leapt forward with 20 years, essentially, at war uh, in an industry that's now making money and also wanting to support your troops on the ground with technological advances, with lessons learned from the battlefield for 20 years being incorporated, not just a flashpoint here or there and then relying on that flashpoint let's say like a mogadishu and taking those lessons and that having having that be your only thing to use as a real world example no you had 20 years of every day essentially engagement uh to incorporate into technology to advance technology when we're talking about weapon systems so that doesn't shock me there uh back in uh let's say 2004, the time frame I was just talking about, I mean, you're hitting buildings, you can hit cars, you can hit that sort of a thing. Uh, but I can only imagine how much better the technology is today. Uh, I'm sure it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's sure it's next level. That's, yeah, that's a great point. 20 years of testing it real time on the battlefield, 
downrange, as yeah. guys like to say. Yeah. Boston Connor, you have something. Yeah, range. Jack, on that <laughs> point there, do you think war is changing now because of technology? Like, do you think it is much more, I mean, you just mentioned drones, where it's people, you know, in Arizona or Nevada flying drones and kind of fighting wars that way versus how, you know, it used to be back in the day, even when you were, you know, in Iraq. And also, do you think that the idea of, like, the, you know, drone dogs with guns on their backs that we've seen <laughs> on the internet, like, stuff like that will be implemented into war as well? Oh, I think that uh, game, war is a, and I, I hate to say the word game, but it's a constant game of adaptation. Um, and usually the person coming out on top is the one who adapts faster than the enemy. You're always looking for gaps in the enemy's defenses, looking to capitalize on momentum, looking to exploit new technological advances, knowing that the enemy is going to adapt to those advances and you're going to have to continue to push that forward. So um, war is ever changing in one respect in that you have to adapt. But in one another respect, it does come down to that man uh, on the battlefield with a rifle, putting a bullet, putting something into another human being. Um, so it comes down to that at its base level. So at that base level, uh, it stays the same. But as you move up and look at technology and incorporate that technology into warfare, then that's an ever changing environment. So, uh, so that's, there's, there's two levels to it, I think. Jack, last thing here from uh, Pac-Man has one more question for you. Jack, I was reading the thing about uh, the prince's son that just moved here about a lot of things that he's done. Do you think there's any truth into the <laughs> shit that he's put out? Prince Harry you're talking just, about, right? Yeah, Prince Harry. I just don't I don't understand how he got all of these and all of that. And like you said, it had to be someone to witness it. And um, I don't think no more that witnessed his story <laughs> that was in the story. Yeah, you know, I've tried not to pay too much attention to that. It's very difficult <laughs> to do, obviously, so mm -hmm. I am aware of it. Um, but I think, yeah, he talked about, uh, he was a helicopter, was he? Yeah, he's a pilot. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, so I think he talked about it there. But no, you can certainly uh, chalk up some uh, some people. There's not just your helicopter, there's ISR, so uh, like a, a Reaper drone or a Predator drone overhead or an AC-130. So there's other video feeds that are showing what you're doing on that battlefield and you are keeping track of enemy combatants down and that sort of a thing. And you really can see it even at, at night with these uh, these ISR platforms. So I think he put that in the book. Is that what he did? Yeah, and then he yeah. talked about how they were inoculated against it or something, yep. something along those lines. I don't know. I try not to pay too much attention to that. I wish them well, of course. <laughs> and, uh, so you thought maybe it was they bullshit. need a uh, okay. maybe they need a new PR person though. I'm thinking they need to reevaluate their uh, their yeah. PR yeah. 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 It's, it's a, do? But you know what, Jack? You you don't need new PR people. You have no. great PR people. We appreciate you coming on. Right here, Only the Dead comes out May 16th, correct? That cuts it. May 16th in ebook, hardcover, and in audio. Hell yeah. Oh, man. I know you have some. You're you're doing uh, some book signings, I believe. Cuyahoga County Public Library, Monday, May 22nd. Johnson County Public Library in Franklin, Indiana, 7 p.m. Nice. Whoa. May 23rd. How do you, do you think these fun for you? You enjoy these? Oh, things? they're so much fun. So much fun because I get to thank people that took a risk on me as an author and then told a friend, told a family member, put it out on their social media to their five followers or their 5,000 oh, yeah. or their 5 million, whatever it is. Uh, so I get to shake their hands, take a picture, say thank you because I wouldn't get to do what I love, which is writing without them having taken that risk and then telling a friend and really building this grassroots. So I absolutely love book tour. I try to do it as much as I can on social media, but this is where I get to actually shake hands and say thank you in person so it means a ton to me that people come out to these and uh, i'm looking forward to it thank you Jack. awesome thank you very much for it. not only everything your service everything you've done your books and coming on this show yeah. ladies and gentlemen oh. jack carr yeah. 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 Cut him off. i didn't mean to cut him off there if i did or no, no. you okay. sure did nah. my bad sir yeah, you better Go lock ahead, your doors tonight i don't want to be downrange anywhere near him no, 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 no. What a dog. i want to be on side on his side though and be uh -huh. downrange yeah i mean how about In that the, conversation how about that recall right there i mean oh ridiculous. how his brain works he's just going comes yeah. on juiced excited he's also like you know how hard it is to write one decent book let alone six really it, good books and then have a tv show made about him yeah. yeah made about them i should say so terminal list awesome show really but he good. doesn't write all the scripts for each episode no, no. She's an executive, executive producer. producer. Which is the best. You just collect right. a check, Bang hang up. out, get to go on set, and yeah. make sure everything's make sure legit. Everything, he yeah. trained, He helped train Jack, or um, old buddy, right? Chris, Chris Pratt. Pratt. Chris Pratt. Yeah. Chris Pratt's movement, his technique, everything looks yes. great. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I didn't know Patrick Schwarzenegger's in there. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's one of the, the seals in the uh, like very opening scene oh. yeah, when they're down in the sewers. Oh. I didn't know who Rafe is. 
Yeah, yeah Bill. Bill. Which Bill one knows. was Rafe in the show? He, he's he's in the second season. Not in season, season one, I don't yeah. think. Oh. But, I don't know what he looks like either. I don't know how he's described, so throwing Paul Giamatti out there might have been just kind of a shot in the dark. But well, I think he can maybe. pull off a seal. Giamatti can do anything. Is that Pig Vomit? Paul Giamatti from Howard Stern's movie? Uh, Big oh, Fat what, Liar was, with Frankie. Was uh, he in Private Parts? I don't remember. Who, who was Pig Vomit? Was that Paul Giamatti? Remember how he's calling? He called a guy Pig Vomit. His boss, Howard Stern, did in that movie. I believe yeah, it was I Paul Giamatti. I haven't seen. It private, might not be. I haven't seen Private Parts in probably that would have been a young twenty Giamatti. something years. Yeah, though, exactly. I am correct. Zito, to let me know in my ear. It was Paul Giamatti. Boy, Hell yeah. So you know. I know. Believe me, that guy's in billions. Obviously, yeah. Car, Car and his buddies is talking about the uh, protocols for how they are counting kills. Oh, is yes. is awesome. Oh man. Oh here we go. Yeah. Yeah. His first garnered, he first garnered attention to his breakout role in private parts known as Kenny Pig New Vomit Rushton. I didn't know that was one of his first roles. Boom. I there thought he was already a star by then. I mean, him and. Well, he was a. What was he doing in Saving Private Ryan? He's like, just like, he was like a colonel or Great something. Role. Man on the Moon? Yeah. That's Jim Carrey? Yep. That big Mama's big House. Big Mama's House, house obviously. Martin Who's Morris. Big Fat Liar. <laughs> banger. Which one was that? Where he turns blue. Yeah, Frankie Munez. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, Frankie I'm, Munez in that? He drives race cars. Yeah, he's I've seen him at a few golf events. I'm excited. Yes. Riggins is getting a spinoff. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, well, Taylor that's Kitch. son of a that bitch. Dude's, that dude's a special actor. He is good. Yeah, he's a big hockey guy. He's a Canadian, eh? He's from Canada? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's about? What part? He might be what Sask province? Uh, what province, Sask eh? Saskatoon. I was gonna say Calgary, but Cal I Calgary. People do say hair falls like that in Calgary, like Tim Riggins. Mm -hmm. Just wait for Pack to jump in on the Canadian accent. Out. He loves it. Out, out. <laughs> there it is. Boom. <laughs> out, out. So okay, what hockey games are on tonight, though? Speaking of Canadians, it is. It starts with yeah. There it is. The Maple Leafs at Florida. In Toronto. For anyone that doesn't know, from okay, as a casual fan, yes, it sounds like. Toronto, ultra talented team. Yeah, Toronto Great team just doesn't get it done in the playoffs. Every yeah, single not. year, this is the first time they've won a playoff series since for 17 years, yeah. I believe. They're down 3-0, uh, and I believe Nick, you might know this better than me. I believe they were the favorites to win it all after all the first round yeah. games concluded. Oh, yeah, after the first round, they became the odds on favorite to win the cup. Yeah. Because the Bruins, people got to be pissed in Toronto. Well, people say they are the Cowboys of the NHL. Yeah. Okay. So this is kind of they're always quote. talented. They always have stars. You're telling Expect me that? to win the Stanley Cup every year. And Toronto is always like, choking. The Toronto playoffs. is like another New York City. Toronto is big old players. Yeah, yeah there's they, especially in Canada, they get talked about a lot. There's always the hype machine Sometimes around it's them. The New York so. City of Canada. Mm -hmm. Well, they film a lot of movies. They film a lot of movies in Toronto. Play in New York City. And it's Boston. cheaper, much mm -hmm. cheaper to film in Boston too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. a lot in Boston now. That's they don't film in Boston, do they? Yeah. Oh, they do. So they give them tax breaks. I mean, that's what gets them there to yeah. film. Yeah. When mm -hmm. you get, the government gives them tax. Last breaks. time I was home, they were filming movies. Tax break gets a lot of movies because of the tax break too. Mm -hmm. Smart. Bring Jack them in. Ryan, is crazy. anything going to be Speaking filmed in, in LA Ryan. anymore? No. Well, that's the thing. Is anything going to be need to be filmed? TV shows do though, because then they can the stars can live at home and still have a nice schedule. Well, sure. and that's where all the like sets are. Yeah, but yeah. those are building up. Wow. Have you seen Tyler Perry has a whole Ooh. army barracks yeah. he bought up that is like. I don't know how many thousands of acres that has multiple gigantic studios and sound stages. Zeke or yeah, he bought the Zeke, whole Zeke, yeah, big Zeke. If you can look it up, you big see that? Zeke. Yeah, he bought the whole South Side. Like that's the area I grew up in around Greenbrier Mall. He literally bought everything, everything yeah. except the mall. Um, His house has a runway in the back too. It looked like yeah, mm -hmm. really. He, he got yes, a, a big boy crib. I think it's sitting on like he, a hundred and some acres. I saw when he had that studio. Open. He has his own studio that has these gigantic like hangar looking buildings. That is this it? He bought and redid. I think this is he what made, he bought. Yeah, this is what he redid. Right? Yeah, I think he redid all this and put huge sound studios in or sound stages. Because I saw something like opening night. He had Will Smith. I think he named him like after actors. Will Smith's on oh, one nice. of the things. Mm -hmm. Pre slap of what's his name? Right. Of, course. Chris of course. Chris Rock. So, wait, that used to be a neighborhood, you're saying? All, all that used to be the projects. And he oh, just okay. knocked all them all down. This area right here used to be the projects. He, he knocked all that Do shit. Do we have any new one, updated and made, ones? Basically, of what, he what made? they got in Cali. I don't want to put you guys in the spot. But yeah, the, I mean, Tyler Perry's got some real estate, man. Yeah. They were having, they were showing too, there was different, because they were filming there during COVID, because on they had different houses that were sets. Like, oh, this house was like a. Set like a 1950s house. You could, back in the day, it's set up. This house is like from the 80s. Like they had different themes that people would come film and COVID would go down there and you could create your own little bubble and make your show still. Atlanta also big for play, uh, filming down there because of oh, the tax breaks. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Atlanta's baby Hollywood right now.
mm -hmm. when it comes to famine. They're doing a lot of famine down there. Um, is either Cali or Atlanta right now? Mm -hmm. You get direct flights from anywhere in the world pretty much to Atlanta. Oh, yeah. That yeah, helps. Massive. That definitely helps. Massive airport. And it, no matter what, like California, they're they're always going to have those. People are always going to use oh, yeah. the LA oh, studios yeah. and yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why isn't Georgia going to the White House? Good you tell I, me. Georgia, thought, their football team turned down the invite. Oh, I thought they said it was because they're class good. There was like a there was like a little asterisk at the bottom that said, "Does not jive well with student athlete schedule." And it didn't say jive, but whatever word they used, yeah. doesn't like mesh. it's hard. It doesn't mesh well with our student athletes. And do you, do you guys believe that's the full truth? Not feasible. Uh, it says I believe it. Not, not feasible. feasible with a student athlete schedule. Yeah, I it, agree. It's tough. Uh, believe me, like it's. It, your teachers aren't going to let you miss class. Mine wouldn't. Yeah, you know, they got physical Wednesdays down at Georgia's. That's right. Bloody Tuesdays. Bloody mm -hmm. Tuesdays. I mean, maybe maybe it was on a Tuesday. I think this kind of just jumped the shark, too. Like, going to the White House. Who the fuck want to go to the White House? It's just not, it's not what it used to You know, no. like, it used to be a, bit, a big deal, and then for whatever reason, whether it's politically driven or not, like, it's just not a big deal anymore. Well, and don't, like, don't a majority of these guys take – almost all if not most of their classes in the spring and summer so like their schedules are probably a lot of them yeah. more so packed so that they don't have to obviously during football season they don't have to be doing they want like the lightest load to have in the fall exactly yeah they say. so wouldn't they take all the difficult yeah. classes or it would be hard now? to get everyone together they would all be missing yeah. multiple classes multiple tests yeah. everything the only time to do it would be like if it's they invited you during camp and you got to skip a day of practice, then everyone wants to go. <laughs> yeah. I promise you that. That'd but be different. I'm sure the White House is not available at that time. Yeah, and there's some good internet. I mean, I saw some people say, you know, the the jerseys aren't the only thing that's red in Georgia. I mean, there, Whoa. There, there are a few Whoa. of those. There. But, <laughs> You're I mean, saying it's a political situation. That, yeah. That's not what Nothing I'm turns, saying. Not many things turn that way these days. I'm really? saying that was some of the internet oh. fodder jokes that turned out to Honestly, be Honestly, Georgia's so good, they're probably like, we're good, man. Like, we're all right. Like, they, they just won well, last year. Yeah, we'll, co we'll come back next year. I say, did yeah. they go last year? That's probably yeah, the reason, Yeah, they probably too. went. I think they did. So, they, what, everybody on the team has been? Pretty, Pretty much. much. Yeah. yeah. True, so a true like, freshman, I guess. Yeah. AJ, you've been. Was it cool? Yeah, we went twice. I went with Ohio State and then with Green Bay. And uh -huh. you almost didn't go with Green Bay, right? Because you were pissed Obama was in uh, office. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. You said you almost sleep on Barry Oak. Someone clips that, and then it's on, that's on me. <laughs> but that's true. You said you almost weren't allowed at Thanksgiving dinner because you went. <laughs> First off, this is complete blasphemy. <laughs> what? First time George Dubs. George Dubs was the president when I went in college. Yeah, and you went in Great. fatigues. He was. I went. <laughs> <laughs> but then we went with Obama. He he was like a comedian. He was funny, man. They I, he came out. He had his prompter, and then he had a binder with everything that was on the prompter. It's like uh -huh. a backup. How you doing, AJ? But I was watching because I'm standing right there. I'm paying attention. It was 800 degrees. We've been standing there a long time. I was very sweaty, and I'm sitting there looking at his teleprompter. He went off script the whole time. Like he well, started it maybe, beast. and then he would, but he would go come off script, throw a jab at Aaron, boom, throw a jab at the head oh, coach, yeah. throw a jab at somebody. That's and he's, sick. He's, he's a Chicago, Chicago guy, guy, so he yeah. makes a Bears joke about oh, how they're going to beat us. And I was like, man, this guy's really good. He's not. He doesn't care about any of what they gave him. He's Showman. doing his own thing. Exactly. He he felt like he read the room. He's got great stage presence. Here we go. Yeah, not, and you've mentioned too how difficult it is to like talk in front of football teams because you really do. It's a, it's an unbelievable group of people, and if you don't grab them right away, yeah. then you're gonna lose them quick. So that is actually awesome that he just didn't read the yeah. teleprompter at all. No. Did you do the Forrest Gump thing and drink like seventy five Dr Peppers? Oh, and like <laughs> I did not. Pants? But I definitely know a couple of people that were like, "Man, I'm taking a dump in the White House." Yeah, yeah, well, that's said that. Then they're trying to steal the, like the napkins that have the White House logo on yeah, it. I you, took a dump in the Pentagon. Did you? Yeah. Why? Really? My buddy worked there, and we were just walking around near there. And uh, what'd your buddy do? For you? Uh, he auditing. could tell you, but he have to kill you. Auditing? <laughs> no, uh -oh. nothing exciting. Numbers? Oh. Uh -huh. So you just said I'm gonna dump in here? Yeah, we were just around there, so we. Yeah. Did you do it? Was it like a, a thing you meant to do, or just kind of come up organic? Kind of came up organic. And you're like, oh, this is cool. Taco Bell for lunch, and you what do you know? Joe, Joe Biden know any Georgia player night? Who? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Probably knows the whole rock. Whoa, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down. How back. much does he watch? Does he watch college football? I don't know. All right, time oh, yeah. to move on. What other team is this? <laughs> I don't know how much college football Joe Biden watches. He's, talking about he's a former Blue Hen. He's a big time supporter of Joe Flacco. Delaware. He, Joe Flacco. Oh, yeah. He watched him when he was, you know, running through the one double A playoffs. Yeah. I mean, Biden is second all time in passing. From Delaware? Yeah. Really? We may get some of his footage up. Yeah, you should see him throw a post. It's like a young Fran Tarkin. There we go. There I am. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at eyes open eyes. wide, oh, yeah. looking good. Who is the, everyone looks like they are not sweating at all? Oh, Who boy. is the guy that had to stay on the bus? <laughs> oh man, I feel bad for him. My linebacker buddy Desmond Bishop. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, you had to have 
he didn't have his ID on him. He got oh. uh, we're on the bus about to all go in, and I'm like, Beastie Bish. That's what we call him. I'm like, Beastie, what's up, man? You coming? He's like, Oh man, he's super dripping sweat. Yeah. Ah, oh. Through, couldn't buy his ID. So he sat in the bus for like five hours. Oh my <laughs> God. Didn't let him in. Nope. Didn't let him in. But it turned out great for him because I think the following year Obama came in to campaign or something, and he got to go meet him one on one somewhere. Oh, talk nice. to I, him. Like I think he yeah, they met up. He, Beastie Bish may have even like introed him at a at a rally or something. So it worked oh, out. That's for, sweet. It worked out, but we felt terrible. We're like, man, they gotta let you in. What are you talking like the, come on now? No, the White House didn't care. Oh, no way. Playing yeah, no game. Security. Can't be doing that. Yeah, oh, when we ID. went when, in college, we went though. There was like six teams there. There was all the different rooms, and we were all like, "We're in this room. Girls volleyball is in that room. Lacrosse is in that room. All like different all national the champs, champs were out, and then George Dubs would come in, say, to tell a few jokes to each, and then just be on his way. It was fun. That's, That's wild. So they all do that all on the same day, like for the, that one, not the Packers. We didn't. Okay, no, but for college, like when the LSU. I don't know if it's like that every year because remember they have all Smart. the spread mixed. They had all yeah. like the food for them and stuff. Oh, yeah. We didn't get fed. We had nothing like that. There's no way they fed five teams. I'm sure that was to, one. Going to basketball gym and stuff. And no, we didn't get to see one anything. room. I want to see everything. I didn't see anything. So you just go up there to sit in one room and then they. Yeah, I don't know what the room would have been where we kind of hung out and waited for a while, and I just bugged the uh, Secret Service guys, asking them nice. a bunch of questions you, about presents at parties. What do you do? All you this, said you all saw that. all the rooms though when you went on your birthday a couple years ago. Uh, when when was that? Your birthday's on when? My birthday's January 6th, Tony. I understand what you're trying to get at. I was not part of the insurrection. I, I, I had nothing to do with it. No, you said you got Although to go my see birthday all. is the same day. You said you followed some guy wearing a big moose head and you got to see all the room. Mm -hmm. Got to see everything, right? Real up close and personal. Yeah. Remember Gonzo? We had Gonzo oh, here. Oh, yeah. He said he was in his office and he put his running shoes on because he was ready to take off. Yeah, and he would not have been the slowest. But no, he would not have. I they, mean, he would run circles around that place. Yeah, they didn't let you in the Oval Office when you guys went to the White House? You think they're going to let like 120 no, college no, football but players I, in there? No, no, no. When you were at the Packers, I figured they would have maybe like. Honestly, I need to ask Aaron if he like got pulled aside for like a special tour. Tour, or like if him and McCarthy got like a special. I would imagine they did. Mike. They? Obama was probably like, "Hey, bring him in the Oval Office. I want to mm -hmm. see him." Come on, bring him on in now. That'd there we go. Sweet. I love it. I always love getting a good Barry O from Zeke. That'd be awesome if they were allowed to go in there. Yeah, some people work in the the White House every single day, and I bet they don't get to see anything. Oh, oh yeah, no sure. chance! Right? People work. I bet the you phones, Trump right? let them in. I bet you Trump showed them everything. By the boy, he also yeah. has Come McDonald's. Here, I love that. Yeah, oh, that who was there? Who did he? That was LSU, right? That was you, Joe Burrow. And he yeah. had all that. He had every fast food possible. Didn't first kid there. Was there ever yeah. food for? Do you, have you ever seen food for any other team there? I haven't. Uh, what did y'all eat when y'all was sure. there? Psh, we didn't get. There wasn't even an option for I food. Remember some? I read some. They were feeding the kids McDonald's in the White House. Yeah, yeah that was yeah, the LSU right? team. Yeah, uh, that was you. They fed them that. Burrow Chase, and then there's that video of them dancing. I think yeah. that happened in oh, first kid yeah. too. In what? First kid. For, first kid. Or I could be thinking of Richie Rich. The karate. That was Richie Rich. Rich. Richie, Richie Rich, Rich had a uh, McDonald's in his house. house with the sniffer. No, uh, first kid is where Sinbad is the Secret Service agent and the president's son. You know, has the python. A movie. Mm -hmm. Such yep. a good movie. Unbelievable. Unbelievable Sinbad movie. has your cousin's serious. in it. ZTB. Yeah. yeah. Zachary Ty Bryan's in that. Yes, yeah. he is. Not He's, exactly he, my cousin, but yeah. He, well, you're yeah, kind of related in to the him. family. Yeah. At the wedding. At our wedding. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. He bullies the first kid actually. Oh, I need to go back and watch. Yeah, Sinbad shoots like a huge spitball at ask him. Ask him at July Fourth awesome. Memorial Day when you see him. Why? No, no. Ask him about the movie. Sinbad or ZTV? ZTV. Oh, Sinbad's gonna be your Memorial what, Day. What party? was the movie? Richard Pryor was in a movie with a young kid. What was that when he was kind of oh, raising that young rich kid? Pretty Remember well. that? Pack. That's our. That's, that's Richard our, Greer. That's my oh, age Greer. demo. I think. <laughs> What'd you say about Richard Greer? <laughs> no, he, he, said, Richard, he said Richard Greer. He said, he said Pretty Woman. I said that's Richard Greer. Richard Greer. Yep. <laughs> yep. That hit that on all fronts. Nailed yep. G R E E R E, right? Something? I don't know. Yeah. I've never seen Pretty G -E -R -E. Woman. I've seen a couple scenes. Yeah, I've never seen Pretty Woman either. I've seen a couple Pretty clips. Woman's a banger. Is it? Yeah. Absolute Are you kidding me? Classic. Yeah. What's her name in there? Julia Roberts in her prime. <laughs> what about Richard Greer? Is that is he in his prime too? I don't know. Is that his prime? She was a classy, I'd but she was, primal fear, maybe. She was a classy escort, right? Yes. 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 Lady and then the he night. then she became they got married. They got married? I didn't know they got married. Yeah, they, they just getting like, married. I, Remember in the office, Dwight Schrute does the pretty woman? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's I never knew they from. got married, though. Yeah, they get married at I the I thought end. he just like, hey, she was professional. Now she's yeah. professional for me. That little fat bowling ball from <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> Whoa. He tries to. He tries George to, Costanza? Yeah, he tries to get with her at the end. And then gear. I didn't Greer. know George Costanza's in that. He is. He's the, he's the bad guy in it. Can I ask you a football question? Please. Not to get off of this. Yeah, I was going to say, are we sure? Whatever you need. 
I was just looking at the list while we were talking there. Is it a do less situation that Anthony Richardson and Josh Downs are in the parking lot of their hotel running routes for, oh, right now? What do you mean? You think it's like a try hard situation that they told us about it or that it, ha- it happened? Oh, could you mm. want to play the clip there, Evie? I don't, Evie? Evie has a clip here. We, let's let everybody judge in real time. Here we go. This mm-hmm. is who again? Josh, Josh Downs. Downs. Josh Downs. Here we go. Me and Anthony Richardson, we actually went outside last night at the hotel, threw the ball for about 30 minutes, chopped it up. So uh, just getting to know him more, too. So uh, I feel like it's going to be a good, uh, just a good few years here. I think we had just finished like meeting or something. And he texted me, he's like, when we get to the hotel, you want to throw? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm down for it. So uh, threw the ball with him you know, for like 30 minutes. We chopped it up, got to know him a little bit. But you know, he's a dog. He's always ready to work. What's your problem, Diggs? My problem is I didn't know that Anthony Richardson always looked this cool. He does look cool. He's but also Anthony, shocked. They asked Anthony Richardson about it, I think, after they talked to Josh. So yes. he was just – it wasn't like he brought up, hey, guys, in case you're wondering, I'm doing extra work. That didn't happen, did it? No. Well, he he was the second one to be asked about it. I am more worried about the fact that a rookie wide receiver says it's going to be a good few years here. Most people say it's going to be a good – I want to have a good career wow. at so this what's place. what's he saying? What do you mean? He said it's going to be a good few Connor, years. How here. do you Nick pick that one? I'm just saying. <laughs> so, I'm just saying. As, you, a, as a rookie. Jesus, as probably sorry. his first time as, talking to the media as an NFL player. As, right. Definitely not true. Definitely not, not true. He's a rookie. Josh. But what I'm saying is he said – at what point, when you're a rookie, do you say, I'm looking forward to having a good few years here? Or you, do you say, I'm looking forward to having a great career with the Indianapolis Colts? That's usually what it said. I'm not nitpicking, but in the past five I years, paying attention, that's usually what players say. I'm he looking probably forward. didn't want people to assume. He probably was trying to be humble and be like, hey, I'm not going to claim that we're going to win 30 Super Bowls and that I'm going to be here 15 years. He's probably like, hey, I'm about today. Yeah, it sounds like he's about the next four years, and then he's fucking hightailing. Well, you're nitpicking. I'm just talking about it. These words. guys' you're dream just nitpicking. came talking true. talking about the words that he said. Where's the hotel? It'd be cool to kind of cruise around and watch how watch these guys slanging the ball a little well, bit outside the hotel. Tony implied that uh, Josh Downs was running routes in the parking lot, which is what I assumed <laughs> they were doing. It sounds like these guys <laughs> just got <laughs> were just bored and didn't want to sit in their hotel rooms yeah. and just huck the pigskin Pat, around. You want to go play bit, some? Like, you want to go play some corner? No, nah, I don't want to play no corner, but to the young guys, y'all stay y'all ass out the parking lot because if you get hurt, they're not going to pay you. Yep. Yeah, and Only play catch definitely in the don't facility. tell us. If you do get hurt, right. limp into the facility and say you got hurt, hurt in the facility. In the facility. Mm-hmm. Do not middle. get hurt outside the facility. So they just the have all the rookies at like a hotel door. Can you rookies? imagine that? Oh. Fucking them running routes in the Bro. parking lot and the fucking car is coming by. Yeah. Happened to Jimmy Graham. Flips you up. You you do you do three flips. Oh, but he did catch the ball. But he is Jeez. dead. Yeah. Uh oh. He can't help <laughs> us this year. He like, went out doing his job though. Because your muscles catch. lock up when you die. Maybe. Rigor mortis. Well, no, you can't. Why are you gonna blame a dead guy? He just made the catch. Not rigor mortis. No, I'm you're trying to say how, like you're trying was, to say rigor mortis was a crutch. No, he just caught it and then he died. Okay, whatever. And he kept great catch it after death. And all, all right. people will talk about is that he, no matter what happened, he'd catch that. He caught that ball. I would take the ball. Oh my god. Just like that. He's sweet. Yeah, just like that. When Pac, I die, see, look, got you guys, look at, will you guys the bury ball. me with Boom. football Boom. in my hand? Oh, wait, here we go. This is what they're doing. Boom! Boom. Right in the back window. He broke that. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, hey, buddy. Can you run that back real quick? <laughs> I just want to see his face first. Shattered it. Did he catch it? Boom! Did he catch the ball? Yeah. Oh, he caught it. Oh, oh he, he, got he, the ball. he got his right hand. See? Is that the best catch of all time? If Josh Downs <laughs> does that... <laughs> For give, real. Give that, that guy dude, a lifetime. That dude jammed him off the line and was on his hip. That was a good D. Well, it was also a great break on the route to get to the sideline. Uh, yeah. No, that was him. Perfect ball, too. Man, the guy in the orange has just got to – he's got to undercut that a little bit. Go right underneath him. He get a pick here. Slide there. Slide right underneath Good ball, by him. He got a little bit of jersey there, though. Great ball. Good uh, ball. Just a great – You know pass. how hard a car back window is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's hard to like break that. with a baseball bat. That, yeah, that guy has a concussion. By far. Best yeah. case scenario, he just has a concussion. Best case scenario. Exactly. Nah, whole face cut up and everything. His face he probably might got be, seven yeah. stitches. Broke a few ribs, probably. Yeah. Yeah. His face might be broken in half. Completely broke. Wait, so, the, okay. G here, con man. Yeah. I need to ask you. Yeah. Hendon Hooker, what is MCDC saying about Hendon Hooker? He, he took said, him in the third round, correct? Yeah, yeah. He took and him in the third round. He quoted as saying he, he's not going to play for a long time, right? Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a long quote uh, from, I believe, the green light pod. Red shirt year for him, he says. Chris he's got to get this leg right first, and then he'll learn under Jared Goff, and then let's see what happens. If he can eventually become your two or maybe down the road later on, it's more than that, but it's going to be a long time. Yeah, he means it's more than that. Like It's more than him being like the two. Like he would be a starter. And yeah. I think also he is – 
pumping up his starter in Jared Goff and yeah. saying, hey, we didn't draft sure. this guy to replace Jared Goff right now. Yeah, and he and Jared Goff was unbelievable yeah. last year in comparison to what people thought that he was going to turn into after the Rams. And, like, there is no reason for Hendon, for there even to be a quarterback competition because right. of the success they had. Uh, but, I I mean, it's foolish to think that after this contract with Jared Goff that they want to give Hendon Hooker, who's going to be on a rookie contract for four years, an opportunity, you know, especially with how accurate he was and what people people thought he was going to be a first-round pick going into the draft. And maybe that was just all bullshit, but if he comes out and he's just slinging that pill, who knows? Jared Goff gets hurt maybe too. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think Hooker is for the future for them. There's no no reason for Detroit to rush in and, uh-huh. and put him in there. They, they finished pretty strong last year yeah. also. But um, this guy is a project. He coming off a, a torn ACL. Why rush him out there? It don't make sense. Yeah, and he's twenty five. He was impressive yeah. at the. We talked to him at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Baked beans made like, that fucking Bush's baked dude. beans can look like a thimble. That's right. He was <laughs> he was pumping the baked beans, but he was like uh, he seemed very mature. Very much. Seemed so. to love football. I was like, man, you don't sound like a college kid. He's like, moving around good too. It didn't look mm-hmm. like he had any hitch or anything like that. I mean, November great. though, it's not that long ago for yeah. an ACL. Yeah. And the, talk about a perfect place for a you know a quarterback. That offensive line's absurd. Jameer, yeah. they just got Jameer Gibbs, who's who's <laughs> ridiculous. Their yeah. defense. He can hang out for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Perfect for situation, sure. really. The real question will be if we extend Jared Goff, which is, there's rumors saying that a bunch of talks are happening with that, and they're saying that it's going to be a lot of money. So we'll really? see. Yeah, like forty. It's going to have 45. to be like they're going to have to have an out wow. after two or three years max, though. Yeah. They're also probably yes. going to have a new offensive coordinator next year. Exactly. They said if they do well again this year, then. Ben Johnson is definitely going to get a head coaching job. Yep. Yeah. All right, MCD, so he can call the plays. I wouldn't worry about that. Yeah, one. he can call plays, right? True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah. He almost yeah, had he the play call control last year, but he allowed Ben Johnson to do it, and Ben Johnson essentially won the he's job. He's a great head coach. Yeah, yeah. smart head exactly. coach. Exactly. Will Levis is at Top Golf mm-hmm. right yeah. now. Also, Ed, who's down at the Derby with me, he has Will Levis. Oh, is that Levis? right. Who is that? Awesome. Who, yeah. who is Ed? Ed is. He works for CAA as like an agent slash marketing. Is he Aaron's agent? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's yet. No, so he had. He was with Will Levis. He was getting TV oh, time. No. Mm-hmm. I mean, did is he? he is I this what he did when he played with? Uh, who did he play golf with? Steichen. Was he the one who told Will to go to the draft? I don't think. I don't know how much pull Ed had over any of that. Okay. Because he had Bryce Young as well, so he, Ed was going to be there no matter what. But yeah, swing very hard there. Yeah, what's uh, wrong with that? Did Ed say anything it's about how sweet. it was to like sit in a room with him? Yeah, oh yeah, he said the dude is a grinder, works harder than anybody. He said he's awesome. Like grinds milk every day. day. Yeah, he might. He that, might be drinking milk. How that, old is he? Uh, Twenty three. He's jacked. He's, he's jacked. very properly jacked. Properly, properly jacked. jacked. Do you have an issue with that? Him being that jacked? No, I do. Yeah. Yeah. What quarterbacks like? If you're not a running quarterback, I want my quarterback. To be miniature dad bods. Yeah, I want you to Rogers. have a beer, not a beer belly, but I don't need you to come in there. Yeah, trying to. Have you don't need to have a ton belly. of like excess muscle tone. I bet yeah. you. I bet like, you Anthony Richardson's properly jocked. He yeah, is properly, properly jocked. jocked. Won't that happen eventually though? Like he's in the best shape of his life right now. Like as he goes through his first yeah. NFL season and like starts to kind of get more comfortable, like in a new city and stuff. Like he's not gonna have an a eight pack and be properly jocked forever. Yeah, because Anthony Richardson, at least he's a running quarterback. Like, we'll let, to your guys' point about the bodies, like Rodgers and Brady, to have Big Ben, like these guys, who, they, it's not as if they, they're they yoked up. Big with Ben lost backs. a bunch of weight after that motorcycle wreck. Like, yeah, he when was he, a different looking human, I feel like. At Luke, Combs, at Luke Combs, he's lost a lot of weight, it feels like, since he's retired, too. Oh, yeah, he is really? in yeah. prime shape. I think he might have an eight pack, Ben. Oh, yeah, he you guys don't good. listen to footballing? Yeah, oh, Bill Cowher was on this week with footballing with Ben. Bill Carr. Bill Carr. Bill Carr. Oh, How'd it go? Good. Great conversation. Who's so? Who's Ben's co-host? That's a great show for. Like, I know Spence. he's talked about having Pat on. Pat should absolutely be on. That would be a very fun episode. You know, Pat's a little busy right now, AJ. Yeah, like, I know that. I know that, call, man. <laughs> I was saying eventually. Oh, of, course, of course, when he can. I bet Big Ben would come here. I think, think he would. That'd be awesome. Ben. So is Ben in Pittsburgh for good now? Yeah. That's one of those teams where it's like if you play for the Steelers mm-hmm. and you do anything, you have any kind of success, you can. Have a nice life living there. The rest he of stayed year. there. I think a lot of like Keisel look at James there. Harrison's arms. Yeah, dude. He's are we Casey, serious? Casey Hampton looks good. He does. Wait, what is this from? Joey Porter. That's looks from good. James Harrison's. Instagram. So this is all is that recent? Mikey Dogs look, in, they're, the, they're, in the front. That's for Paul Mall. We're cutting trees down. Why do we have chainsaws? What are we doing? This is awesome. Just playing around. Is Ben on a ranch? Just dudes being dudes. Joey Porter Senior. Yeah, just light ranching. Just light ranching. Some light ranching. Man, it does look like Big Mikey Ben dogs. looks good. <laughs> 
He does look good. I mean, where he might is play this? next year? You think what team? This is either San Fran. San Fran this yeah. is either at Ben's or I believe that's Kiesel's Ranch, probably. Kiesel. Is, it, is that Kiesel in the middle? Yeah. And who are the rest of them? Who's everybody else? Yeah, who's Case, top left? Casey, Casey Hampton. Hampton. Casey Hampton looks great. Jeez. James Harrison, senior. That's Troy. Yep. I don't Aaron, know if that's Aaron Smith. That's Aaron or Heath. Smith. Okay. What about top Heath? left? Top left. Uh, is that Ben's co host, maybe? No, that's not Spence. That might no. be Sean Morey. I don't oh, know. Maybe. Might be. Oh, really? Top okay. left, I'm not exactly 100% sure. Okay. Could be Sean Morey, who was Sweezum? special team stud. Not uh, the other kicker. Who's the other kicker? Was Spiky Sean Morey was not a kicker. Spiky okay. here, I know. Jeff Reed. I'm, Jeff Reed, I'm thinking. Why isn't he here? Beast. I don't know. He had stuff to do. Did he? Yeah. They must have been just chopping trees down, just dudes being dudes. Yeah, huh? I mean, he's, uh, is that a chainsaw, James Yeah, Harrison? they both oh, look, yeah. There's two chainsaws in that picture. Uh, and Troy's putting so antlers on happy. his head. Troy looks yeah. very happy. They're just, they're just having fun. Yeah, just Steelers just being guys Steelers. being dudes. Steelers guys being, being dudes having fun at, you know, Kiesel's getaway resort. His cabin. There's some guys in the NFL. Pack, have you ever done that? You ever go hunting? I'm not a big hunter. Me either, but I know there's guys that have the big, like, uh, the high fence farms where they yeah. have the fencing and it's thousands of acres, and, you know, you shoot an albino buck, and it costs $125,000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's stuff like that oh, people yeah. do. Yeah. Record, it's like a big deal. Record-breaking ranch, record-setting ranch, yeah. Vinatieri. That's Vinny's ranch. Oh, he has a ranch like yeah. that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. My brother-in-law shot, like, a big old elk at one of those ranches from some old lineman he played with back in the day, and I had the elk in my basement for years because it was too big to fit in his house. Like, he lived in Florida and didn't have enough wall space. And now someone has it, but it's about the size of that thing, probably. Damn, yeah. the buffalo? Yeah. I got a question. It's gigantic. About brothers and hunting and stuff like that? Sure. Huh. If you're, like, with a group of guys going to the derby, how— I love the pace of your question, Tone. <laughs> the pacing and, like, the, the just the pacing of your tempo. It, it, like the tempo is awesome. How it do keeps you, me intrigued. I really am. I really how do you get know, your brothers so inc- to be involved in that group, but no other brothers are involved in that group? So what do you— you, you know what he you means. You know what he's getting at. How do I get? How do you do not get the brothers to go hunt? The brothers. <laughs> no, my I, brother. You're talking about my brother-in-law, Brady. I Quinn? just saw a lot of Takataris at the Derby yeah, and no the Derby besides yourself. Yes. Oh, why are my brothers not at the Derby? Yeah, but oh, Takataris no. are. Oh, Takataris are. They are a tight clan that is always together. They all live in Nashville now together. Okay. So, like parents, they have a sister too. The youngest, Andrew, has a twin sister. She used to dip. She doesn't anymore. I don't know if I'm, I hope she's okay with that, but she's married. Her husband's the man. She's <laughs> great. Legend. She's not pissed. She was very open about it. It's sitting's It's awesome. But, um, city. I'm trying to think. Oh, well, yeah. Like my brother, Ryan, my oldest brother, he's met Aaron, been around him, but like, uh, we don't like, we're not always around. They have families, they have kids, okay. they have everything mm-hmm. going on. I just didn't know. But yeah, like my brother, Ryan, knows Aaron very well, but yeah, he's not going to come to the Derby. He comes to Tahoe. Yeah. Yeah. Caddies. Yeah. Great caddy. Instagram was lit though. AJ was in all of the Instagram. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Mm. So some of them. Did you repost any of them? Or? I did. I think. Yeah, you reposted the Watch Flames. I thought. Yeah. The watch uh, I did, no, I didn't repost that. How come? Did you wear that today? What? Oh, the watch? No, it's back at home. I might bring it tomorrow. We bring. Can you? Yeah. I might bring one tomorrow. Yeah. yeah I, just you gotta read. I mean, I had to read. The people liked most of all of all like, so it's a nice normal watch or whatever. But then there's a little area where you got to put more butane in yeah, when yeah, it runs out. Sure. And that thing, it's a watch. It doesn't hold much butane, so, <laughs> sure. you know, one or two party trick lights. Here we go. Look at this. <laughs> oh, oh. And I actually would use it to light my cigar. I'd have to keep refilling it, and I was spraying butane directly in my face. That's oh. why people were wanting, because you have to jam it in. If you don't get it Those just right, silver cans? you don't get the old nipple directly into the uh-huh. receiver. I know. It's spraying everywhere, all over me. And so everyone was just waiting for me to light, off, uh, light, light myself face on fire. On fire. Yeah. <laughs> Is it weird not smoking a cigar here in studio today? I might bring some tomorrow. Hell yeah. No, you guys think cigar smoke, like, it's stuck to the walls and stuff. No, well, it does, but I like cigar smoke, but, yeah, you can't smoke it. What about a pipe? I I love, I have, like, this cherry Cavendish uh, That smells delicious. It smells amazing. I can, I smoke it throughout my house. Call Pat. Yeah. I will. I'll send him a text. Why don't you just, like, get some American spirits and fucking smoke them outside on the brakes like a real man? And and I'll be, I'll stand right there with you. Will you? Absolutely. You're not smoking cigs anymore, are you? Not at the moment. Come on. What does that mean? <laughs> it means you never you mean say not never. Right now, not in this exact <laughs> not moment. Exactly. But I, maybe I, in three or four minutes. Can you bring it back in the summer? I haven't smoked a pack of cigarettes in a while. Come on. When's the hardest time to not smoke then? Tell the hard, uh, when a new season of Peaky Blinders comes out. Mm. Oh. Or anytime I rewatch True Detective. Do what about a indoors? bachelor? Do you smoke cigs indoors? In your, uh, in your place? No, no. I would never do that. Oh, okay. But my favorite cigarette is the cigarette inside. For oh, sure. is it? Yeah. Like when uh, the Patriots on the Super Bowl in Atlanta, we went to a bar specifically that you were allowed to smoke cigarettes inside of. Mm-hmm. It was one of the highlights of my life. You can smoke in uh, Vegas still, right? 
Uh, right. yeah. Certain sections, yeah. Certain certain places. Only in certain sections. Mm-hmm. In casinos, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, they have like uh, sliding glass doors mm-hmm. blocked off. For Are them. there any bars left where you can smoke cigs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Really? Mm-hmm. Like in the whole bar? If yes. you don't serve food, I know. Yeah, they do not serve food. I mean, I know, like, but I'm from the area where every time you go out in college, you can't wear your stuff. You got to make sure you wash everything because you smell like a remember a whole uh, pack of cigarettes every time you go anywhere. Correct. You remember Those smoking sections days. back in the yeah, day? Yeah, that, that makes zero. There was like a little wall. Bro, there were smoking sections in airplanes back in the day. Mm-hmm. Like in Love the that. 70s, I think, the even into days. the 80s, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, thanks a lot, Bin Line. <laughs> <laughs> Did he take that away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's actually from. Is that from Ted Lasso? No, is that from it, Ted the oh, movie? Oh, Whatever it is, it, no. it, works, it works. I guess. No? I forget what that's Take from. Oh, it's freedom. from The Hangover. <laughs> it's it from is from The Hangover. Zach 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 I think it's when Galifianakis was with uh, Robert Downey Jr. That movie. Oh, due date. Oh, yeah, due date. It due date. It's a Galifianakis line. I stole it. It's pretty good. But yeah, think about it. Hey, um, make sure you get me in the back in the smoking section on my flight to California, my five-hour flight, because that <laughs> yeah. smoke's not going to travel up to the front. I mean, yeah. they have them in airports still. Like I went, Oh, I went the glass to, cage? Yeah. yeah, I walked yeah. by them. When I went to Montana and Denver, I had to sleep overnight in the Denver airport, cool. and I was smoking darts till midnight till they closed it, actually. Really? Yeah. You, oh, well, can you smoke anything in there or just cigarettes? I don't know. I assume you can smoke weed. No. What do you think, Pat? Yeah, because they have vents in there. It's like the vent you have in your attic. Maybe if it's a legal state, if it's a recreational state. Th- that's what legal I mean. State. Right. Yeah, strictly Denver. Vegas. Can't bring weed into an airport. Yeah. Well, they, they say that, but obviously people have weed in airports. <laughs> sure. I don't Very think so. True. I don't think so. Oh, oh you're right. It's pretty loud if you find up a joint in the middle of the Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And not every air, most airports don't have, like Massachusetts, legal state for weed. They don't have a smoking section in the airport. Yeah, I mean, the, the glass cage. That'd be. T- I'm glad I never smoked cigs because that'd be tough to like. You feel like every flight you ever went on, are you just calm in? You could tell me back when you were really going. Yeah. Was it tough to take a flight or to think, hey, I got I to think out where am I planned out when I'm going to smoke my cigs? Um. So it depends. Like, I it's not. I always had a massive fear of flying. Okay. So in general, I, I didn't like doing it. So the cigarette was almost something that you look <laughs> forward to instead of worrying about crashing and dying in a plane. Got it. Uh. But no, it's not something where it's like, I need to get off this fucking plane right now and smoke a cigarette. No, it's never anything like that. A lot of people are like that. Yeah. Oh, a- absolutely. My mom is like that. Yeah. yeah. We go to the gas station, she'll jump out the car. <laughs> like, bro, we are three minutes from the fucking house. Yeah. You just wait till we get to the house. Get back in the car, the fucking whole car smells like Reeks. cigarettes. They got to roll the windows down yeah. to go a mile up the street. Yeah, I never had it like that where I, I needed. I mean, it's just fucking awesome. That's it. He just like it. He just enjoy it. Right? Yeah. It's just well, I mean, my grandfather smoked till he was like seventy five. It's just it's just in You my don't blood. you love it after a night of drinking? That's why I've heard some people like they sound like poets. A couple of coaches that I've different coaches different positions, they would talk about, Oh man, you go out, you come back like in your way home or like say you're hanging out at the very end of the night, like you have one or two cigs. It's just the greatest. They would explain it, it to me like they thought you were doing ecstasy. It is. <laughs> there are some euphoric moments with cigarettes. Really? No doubt about it. I don't know. But you smoke cigs, Pat? Nah, I never had. Never. When did you start dipping? Uh, College. Yeah. West Coast Virginia. Baby got me stuck on this mm. shit. What, what about the first time you tried? How'd it go? Uh, threw up everywhere. Got okay, a little yeah. dizzy. But then it got. But it, that's the thing. I've that never done everybody. it. But then it brought you back. Yeah. That's why I wonder how you came back after that. Well, yeah, I could never. Do I that. did it to stay up in meetings. I would fall asleep yeah. in all of the meetings in college. My coach would made me sit beside his desk. He's like, put this fucking dip in. You won't fall asleep. <laughs> and shit, I ain't fall asleep since I put the dip in. But I was throw, thrown yeah. up two, three times from putting this shit in. But as far as getting fine for the meetings, going to sleep, it worked out pretty good. Yeah, did you uh, did you play with it in? I've played with it. A lot of people play like that was AP. When I got to Ohio yeah. State, they talked about the old school, the real guys that would play with a dip in. Yeah, I work out with a dip, run a couple miles with a dip, you know, hit a bag with a dip, I think hit Edelman. a golf ball with a dip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so, Edelman's played with it before. I mean, he's been on the sideline packing dips, no doubt about it. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, the guys might zen now during games. They might. Yeah, that makes sense. That's much easier to hide. Yeah. Easier to hide, but is, does it give you what yeah. you need, though? Have you ever right. zinned? No, I never zinned. No, it's much different. It's just nicotine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it gives you that whatever, the addiction thing, but it doesn't give you probably the taste and the feel of dip. No. No way. But it's little pouches. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. That's Similar I'm, to, not, I'm not dipping. Oh, I, no, I, no chance. I'm I don't need start. to dip. I don't want to start ever because I think I would love it. And it seems like 40. it's too easy to do where I would could just dip all day long. Yeah, you could do it at any time. Exactly. Don't start. Yeah, oh, yeah. Believe me. It seems 
You got your cigars. Yeah, you got right. your cigars. I got, right. I got you have tobacco your covered. You have your vice. Yeah, I have tobacco covered. You're right. You're right. And because that, I'm going to put some in your car for the ride home so you'll fall dip? asleep. Yeah. That might help me. If it helped me stay up, that'd be good. It's can, great for a road trip. Yeah, you can pack coffee beans. So. Yeah, um, egg. Coffee, coffee. Gr- coffee mm-hmm. grounds, yeah. Yep. They used to have beef jerky that was ground up when I was yep. a kid. People oh, would try yeah. that. Uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Candy off. cigarettes. Yeah. Hot sauce oh. in your eyes. Oh, yeah. Oh, there that we go. also helps. <laughs> and definitely driving? wreck your fucking car. And I'm driving too, right? Z? That about. will keep me awake. Oh, yeah. yeah. When in doubt, that'll you, keep or me Or you do Carson Palmer's balm. Yeah. Have you ever beaten with CBD? Have I what? Have you ever beezed before? I don't know what that is. No, Burt's Bees. Oh, what yeah, about? put that Chad, on your Burt's eyes. Burt's Bees chapstick. If you, yeah, if you do it under your eyes. That'll keep you up. Why would you do it? Under, <laughs> oh, to like burn? No, it doesn't really burn. No, it doesn't really burn. It just kind of wakes you up. Like, I'll yeah. let you know in about 30 that minutes. That mental in your fucking eyes. Perfect. Hell yeah, brother. Anyone know who we have coming on the show tomorrow? I know we have a lot of good guests. We don't uh, want to give it away. Great guests. We won't give it away, but you guys are excited, right? Massive yeah, everybody? show. Yeah, it's Super a huge excited. show. Massive. Huge. Thursday. Yeah. Huge. Fucking massive. May 11th it'll be. Man, it is May 10th. Our kids are almost out of school. Yeah, crazy. it's crazy. Summer is upon us. Memorial Day, two weeks away. Is it finally going to get hot and stay hot? I think so. I think yeah, we're I think we're into it. Are yeah. we out of it? Yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. We're out of the cough. Last week. get out of school. My kids, when they get out of school, they're very excited to have fun at our house, around me and my wife and our other their brothers and sisters. <laughs> That's nice. That's not nice. well, cool. You know, <laughs> yours too, right? Back in the cool. Yeah. You guys, sound so you happy about it. Time in with them, you yeah. know. They've been in school. Yeah. You know, you got some day camps. The they need a break. You know. Yeah, might go to like, hey, we want to go uh, to Ohio State basketball camp yeah, for a couple of days. Exactly. Here, but you'll be home by three. Yeah. 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 You're not gonna be. You have all their <laughs> camps lined up. Ready? See August twentieth. For all your kids, for both of you guys. Yeah, we have to. The stuff my kids, the camps my kids are doing sells out. Yeah. Yeah, you had to. Months in advance for a lot Are of they doing things. lacrosse camps? Uh, I think my son, my oldest son's going to do one. My, my daughter goes to Ohio State basketball camp, and they like last year they're coached by all the girls on the team. Like they're mm-hmm. oh yeah oh yeah. Their stud girl on their team is from Dublin, Ohio. Went to Dublin, call from where we live, and she's their best player. And she coached my daughter. Like they just randomly got to coach. That's her. So sweet. For my twelve year old daughter, it's like yeah. Michael Jordan's coach. Yeah, right. yeah, it's awesome. Oh yeah. That's how the whole camp is, too. So yeah. I would watch them play on TV. She's like, oh, there she is. Those college camps are awesome. Mm-hmm. Like when they, oh. when they have the players do everything because, oh, yeah. yeah. you know, the players, the, the, they get paid for that, right? That is. Oh, like, yeah, they're allowed yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Did you get paid? Did you work camps in college and get paid? I've never worked a camp in college. Did I? I worked I think that was camp. before the camps. Now the coaches, the coaches rely on that for part of their money. When they have these kids' camps coming, they have yeah. like – Two weeks of camps at Ohio State. I know that's how the assistants get like huge bonuses. Did you go to the Bo Schembechler, Schembechler, Woody yeah. Hayes uh, camp? Not the Bo Schembechler, but his his son is actually lives in Columbus. I run into him sometimes. No yeah. kid. I thought Bo and Woody Bo's did. A, I thought Bo and Woody did a camp together. Well, they both are deceased. In case you're wondering. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying when you were young. Oh, used to. Oh, when I was young, no, I never went to. Ohio. I went to Ohio State camp one time. My going into my senior year to try to earn a scholarship, and yeah. you did. And yeah. Got it. Stay got in it. dorms. Oh. I went, to a Walt, I went to a Walt Harris football camp. It was good. Walt, I think I might, my brother was getting recruited by Pitt. I was around Pitt a lot. Walt Harris was great. Right. Is he still around? I was coached. I don't even know who that is. He was a he coached Pitt great back football in the day. coach. Yeah. He was a great coach. We'll talk about him more tomorrow, all right, Don't come, <laughs> Hell yeah. Keep that in mind. Pac-Man, you'll be back tomorrow, right? Yes, sir. Can't wait. I'll be here tomorrow as well. Everyone else, thank you, boys. Everyone behind the glass. I didn't get to mention everybody. I always forget somebody. Bruce, I know I forgot your name, I think. Last Night time when I was hosting from the attic. Don't worry. I'm sorry, Bruce. I forgot about you. It's because your golf swing is so sweet. Every once in a while, yeah. I blank on it when mm-hmm. I'm trying to get your name. Mm-hmm. I do want to see Bruce play golf again because the swing I saw earlier was asinine. But we'll bring your clubs tomorrow. It was ridiculous. Yeah. We'll hit the sim for, for a minute. I could just use those. I don't need mine. Oh, okay. Perfect. Like if I'm traveling, I don't need to travel with my club. Yeah, if uh, you leave a half hour uh, early. Then I'll try. Yeah, we'll we'll get. We'll you get can cancel time. my kid's school. I can leave a half hour. <laughs> just do, just call men sick. <laughs> just cancel. Call men sick. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I will. They'd be happy for that. Thursday, I'm, give them a long weekend. Thursday, Friday, give everybody. General Bob Carpenter drive them in. Okay. Maybe I will. Well. No. 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 What? <laughs> just can't cancel them. Cancel school, or you know, send them to their grandmother's house. Okay. We'll we'll see what we can do. Either way, I'll be back tomorrow. Though. <laughs> Hell okay. Yeah. So. Boys, appreciate you guys. Everyone behind the glass. Bill, thank you for with a uh, great Jack Carr question as great well. Jack you keep Carr us question. up on that. We know you guys probably talked offline about different kills and different ways you go about mm-hmm. doing what yeah, you do. Yeah. The art that you yeah, like to, axes. you know, participate in. But everybody else, stay there tomorrow. We'll be back. Huge show, huge, huge guest. Massive. Cannot wait. Come on back tomorrow. See ya.